to paraphrase the great Clint Eastwood, in this world there are two kinds of people, those with loaded guns and those who dig. Today, on the fourth and final day of the Merit Poker <laughs> Western series, we are going to find out who has the loaded guns and who has the shovels as 24 return for what is sure to be an engrossing clash of styles and temperaments. I'm David Lappin alongside James Dempsey. We will be joined a little bit later on by GPI award-nominated broadcaster, no less, Alina Jad. Uh, James, there is two, 300, in fact, four, $342,000 on the line today. Can you give us a little preview? Who are the contenders? Well, it's much like we've seen uh, obviously through last night, there were some big stacks building. Although, as we discussed after the stream, there are some big stacks, but there's no overwhelming stack, right? There was, there was no one kind of running away with this one just yet, but I mean, the likes of uh, Giuliano Bolis, Philippe Ketzer, and Amano de Nicola are all between 5.5 and 5.8 million. They're the three chip leaders. Pretty then close down as well to Shagralin, Mokrani, those kind of guys. Uh, mixing in here just around the five minute chip mark. So yeah, certainly a chance for someone to break out. Certainly a chance for one of these big stacks to get nowhere near the final table as well. Wouldn't be that surprising. Remind me of a much talked about hand. I believe it's gone viral already from last night involving a very unfortunate Mr. Davenport, but a man who's also still in the mix. Yeah, as, um, I'm glad you brought that up because obviously we saw kind of a hand last night that Ali Najad said that you know, he's commented on ten, tens of thousands of hands and said it might be the craziest hand he's seen and certainly one he will never, ever forget. And he was just blown away by it. Obviously, Yomaz ended up making a very audacious bluff against Matt Davenport. That time to go through the exact mechanics of it now. But he ended up check raising flop, betting turn, betting river. He rivered a three with his king three. Absolutely no use on the board. Davenport was calling him down with king jack high. So sick. Got out drawn, called the bluff. Yomaz went, ah, just a three, tossed <laughs> it on the table. Davenport shook his head. He busted out shortly after, but of course, Yomaz has brought a decent stack through here to the final day of play in this Western series. And that's very much some cowboy poker going on, if you'll excuse the pun. Oh, no, the puns are very welcome in this room. <laughs> the uh, power of the dog. And As well. we take it down to the floor, we see here none of those mentioned five million stacks on our featured table. We'll have to wait to see those guys a little later on. But a couple of names standing out here, Christoforu especially, who really brings a sort of speech play and talkative uh, okay. game to the tables. Very much enjoy watching him play. I remember Tula Bergenoff from last night's coverage as well. Obviously, Hasbani. Corchidi. These Come are on. all familiar names. Habib, Musa. Come on. The most important name here. Vedat Yilmaz, the one who was in there with the King 3. In there fighting. <laughs> Obviously, a little harder to pull those moves with 20 bigs. And this table, a little on the shallower side, I guess. We see, you know, most of the players sub-25 blinds. But, of course, our long levels, we're starting 40-80. We expect things to crawl a little bit. Then maybe explode into an action. When we get down to our final 18, again, slow down again as the tables become full of hand and then obviously speed up as we get to the final. Yeah, clearly our production team want to bring you blood because they brought us the table with the shortest right. stacks, the most likely table to see bust outs in the room. Yeah, average stack 2.8 million. This point of proceedings. Rukadian, my first look at him. Obviously, by now we've seen everyone pretty much on stream, but obviously as we tag in and out, there's still be the odd player that maybe you or I haven't come across just yet. Of course, you're the consummate professional, so when you're not in the stream, you're in your room just studying watching, the stream, just watching, you know, picking yeah. up tips. Mostly criticizing, <laughs> just why didn't they say that then? <laughs> Musa. Why does Ali have his jumper on his head? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, because <laughs> your mouth made him do it. <laughs> it was more sympathy pain for mm -hmm. Davenport. Of course, it wasn't the only crazy hand we saw last night. The penultimate hand of the last hand, penultimate hand, pardon me, last night might actually have been crazier. In the we saw Roman Rabbits donk a flop into a pre-flop raise, tiny. Bet the turn tiny when he paired his deuce, board reading deuce three five six. Then bet one blind on the river and called a million chip raise with a bottom pair of deuces. It was shown a straight, but a straight was unlikely to be part of that range that would raise so big. There were three hearts on board. Very, very fascinating hand. He then busted out the next hand, the final hand of the evening. 
That's getting us down to the 24 we have now. Yeah, the demise of Hrabec, a little unexpected, obviously, at this stage in the tournament. He had been flying so high for so long. It's funny, you say it unexpected, and I don't mean this in a mean way to him, but I think th with the play style he exhibited, kind of always is kind of expected. He, he definitely is flying high. It, it, it could go at any moment. It's incredible to watch. We can look at Ilmaz, the <laughs> scallywaggery of last he night. Must woke, he must have woken up this morning and the first thought he thought about was Davenport's face. <laughs> <laughs> Davenport, meanwhile, must probably didn't sleep. I'd say he's on a plane already. I'd say he, he probably booked the 6 a.m. flight. <laughs> yeah, just get me out of town. Yeah, get out of Dodge after that. Of course, there are other things going on today. I think the final day of the Merit Western Series, not just our main event, but the very ever-popular Mix Max <laughs> final day going on today. Of course, there is day one C of it. Started at 11 a.m., turbo flight. Late Rage is closing about three minutes ago, so, you know, you're a bit late. Yeah, thanks for that. No, well, you know, it might start five minutes late. If you're upstairs, run down. I'm That's sure they'll true. get you in. That is true. That is true. Yeah, so many tournaments. Uh, I guess it, we are getting to that stage, always final day of a festival, where maybe a few people have gone home and it does seem a little bit quieter, but yeah, it's not too much quieter. I saw some suitcases in the lobby of some of the players we've been covering. You know, everyone probably books their flight today and then they think, well, I'll make <laughs> the final day. I'll, I'll extend. But yeah, it's not just that Mix Max. We have... Deep stack bounty. What I love is that because Merit Poker Festivals generally span 11 days and only one weekend, you go home to a weekend. Oh. You justify not working. Like that. How do you structure your work days? Do you have weekends? You don't have weekends. Do, do you really want me to get into the weeds? No. My, my, my we'll get into the weeds of this hand instead. You has has opened up the ace nine from plus one. A little fruity. Just trying to get one through. It's busier than yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Habib, flatting off a shorter stack from plus two. I can understand this. A little bit nervous against that early position mm -hmm. open. The Panetti calling from the button. It's a bit it's optimistic. Yeah, it's, it's tough, especially when Habib's called. Well, Chris foru has got <laughs> the bottom end of this deck all to himself, really. Yeah. <coughs> and in, in great shape against those three hands. You can see 33% equity, of course. You can't know that. And he can't love that flop. Does give him a gut shot. Yumaz Panetti finding an iron. Habib, the man who started with the best hand, perhaps the least interested. Yeah, definitely a board you might consider betting into one person, but I think when you have three opponents, it's a little dicey, especially on that 9 10 texture. I was say he's sizing quite large here. Is this sort of just bet one and be done with it? Remove any further tough decisions? Like, it makes. Playing very awkward for Panetti. <coughs> we, we did highlight the loose passiveness of this play. It's very hard to navigate a hand like Ace Nine with a betting lead. Calling. Okay, he's got position. That's the one thing going for it, but it's, it's not going to be easy here. Maybe he, he's also one and done. Call one bet and hang on for grim life. Habib, I don't think there's really any move here. Before he used one time bank, you didn't take it. You take it. Oh, time bank police. After the uh, after oh, when the finish. I love uh, that. Finish yeah, well, the hand's, hand's still on. <laughs> he will. Looks like Panetti will know, Panetti. make the call here, and oh, stacked pot ratio is. Yeah, this is just this is grim for so both. Shallow. Both of them are just probably wondering how have I got in this situation <laughs> where I've got a nine, mm -hmm. ten nine three board in a full way pot, and I'm putting in three hundred and forty k. Uh, question is, as this board develops, is it likely that both before they have just enough sort of showdown to try just get there? I think that's the most likely Ooh. thing. They'll hate this card as well. Yeah, I, I wonder. There's just so much in there is the problem. But that jack smashes. Smashes both. Does smash both, but I think it hits Panetti right. a little bit harder after he's I the one who called. You know the rain is gone. I wonder if he ever feels like he needs to try and bluff a 10 off here. 
feel like not this street. Right. Maybe not. But maybe on the river. Yeah, I think you're... Oh, well, now there's another <laughs> door open for these guys. And we see that Christopher would have got there if he'd speculated with that mm. gutter to the bottom end. But as played, I think both players with just enough to get the show down, as you said. I wonder James. how Panetti having the ace of hearts. Oh, that's true. Four-liner on board. Can't really expect a nine to be good at that off one, can he? Yeah. Hopes he's up against ace-king, ace-queen. That decided to bet flop. up. Could also be up against an over pair. Yeah. Is happy to show it down. Will be very happy, as both players will, to get this one. I'll tell you who's happiest there. It's your miles off three tables of his hand. And Paletti quickly picks up his cards to the table his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any uh, suggestion that the players might play a little tighter to start the day and just ease themselves in? Quickly. I laid there those fears. It's straight into action and already a player down. Down at 23. In fact, two players down, I believe. Come back. No, we came up at 24. One down. Those are the two out of tables. Of course, we have a redraw shortly. We have 18 players left. I say shortly. Five bust outs. As this gets shorter handed, those bust outs we assume will happen a little more quickly. Yeah, I think it will happen in this frame, but probably later on in the frame. We like to shuffle these guys around, get them all playing each other. Yeah, a weird kink, of course, the day coming, <laughs> end of the day coming, when it did, that they were having a redraw at 27, a redraw at 24, and have a redraw at 18. They, they better get to know each other. Yeah, we actually talked about this after the coverage yesterday, and I think maybe good sense could have prevailed there at 27. They could have sent them home early. That was one option. Just said, look, let's just leave it now. Nah. Welcome to the bone. <laughs> or redraw it and then stick to the redraw from 27 to 18. I think maybe the latter is the best. What are your thoughts on redraws in general? I've never really understood the need for it. Person. Well, I think the, uh, the objective is to make players play against each other as, of, uh, as, many, as much of a mixture as okay. possible in, in, in the end game. So if you do get a bad seat, you know, maybe you can get out of that seat. If you do okay. um, have a favourable position, you don't just get to keep having it, perhaps. Um, but yeah, uh, I know the high roller community definitely put a question mark over that and just say, why not just bring people in? Because I think one of the things, a uh, little bit gamesmanship-wise, is when people know the redraw is imminent and if they can wow, manipulate not you know, having to pay another mm -hmm. set of lines and free roll maybe getting a better seat, when the um, <laughs> redraw is, is that done. Is the case when the redraw happens anyway? Yeah, you kind of know. Well, if it's 19 and you know redraw is coming at 18 and you're under the gun and there's a couple of shorties around the base, you can just sit in your hands for a while. I know these guys have time banks in play, so it wouldn't be the greatest use of your time banks. Right, so if, <coughs> yeah. That's the same whether it's a redraw or not a redraw, right? If the table's going to break, I guess it's all the same. Well, no, because you, you don't want to pay your set of blinds before the redraw. You want to hopefully stall. And then maybe free roll getting the yeah, button. Maybe your table was the one that breaks. Oh no, I mean in the case of a redraw. Right. Yeah. 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 So. So. so we're arguing the same point here from. From both sides. <laughs> yeah. See, we are. There's a language barrier in the booth. <laughs> As Panny. No problem with that hand. Two kings. Just off route. King seven suited in the small. Is this one he's thinking about? Maybe leveraging. Situation here. It's definitely a hand he can do it with against the button open. Uh, in fact, given what we know of him, I think that's what we will see. Look at Haspani. He looks like me walking into the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Tula Burganoff, obviously, no interest here. And again, is this, are we just tanking here a little bit to reduce the number of hands in play? So we have. I think so. Achieved thirteen thousand seven hundred and thirty dollar payout. But at twenty one, there'd be another jump, and then of course at eighteen, another, and just maybe against that last two tables as slowly as possible is a good thing for him. Now let's jump ahead here. Does Hasbani ever just flat? I would love a flat. Well, definitely when we see the hands, but mm. like, does he ever just flat here, or does he just hope his opponent's got like jacks or queens and he can get them in? Quite like the idea of a flat here. Flat would leave him. 
about what 1.3, 1.4 times pot. Which is absolutely fine. Yeah. If you if you flat here and get outdrawn by some nonsense that would have folded pre, and you're only 1.4 times pot behind, it's actually not that big a disaster. No. Nope. Right. It's different if we have four or five times pot behind. But so often your opponent's going to flop something, or they're going to bluff into you when you've got these kings. Yeah, we see there has Banny going Looking for a read more. of his opponent. Mm. Very Banny important, because yep. you, you want to ascertain whether it's a real raise or it's a light raise, because that is the number one factor in what you do now. And he looks to me like he is quite kind of flustered, like he generally doesn't know what to do here. Yeah. That might be the case. He might be so torn between calling and jamming. But he doesn't look strong to me. <laughs> Looks like he's in here with yeah, some King Jack suited and Ace Ten. Oh, no. He does decide just to drop it in. Yeah, and it's it never bad. Obviously, there's no. loads of upside to just getting <laughs> it in there. <laughs> if <laughs> your opponent is using an Ace blocker, <laughs> you <laughs> deprive him of getting to see an Ace on the board. A situation where you might have to call one street again and <laughs> send more money into a pot when you're behind. <laughs> also, you prevent the possibility of a hand like tens or jacks escaping uh, on a board. That would be a little bit dangerous for them. So, nothing wrong with dropping the hammer there. But sometimes fortune favours the brave. Give me 20. This might yeah, be the way. Way. Another big factor actually is how often yeah. as Banny thinks Chris Afori would do with a king blocker. Because then he's sure, just sure. absolutely loving life. Yes. You can give him some big yeah. yes, yes. No, thank you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> this is a dealer mistake. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. I didn't count my chips. Discussing the pay jump. It's not a 22, it's a 21. I'm not sure. I mean, when there's 22 oh, left, they're on the pay jump bubble. It's funny, isn't it? I, the way poker's progressed over the last, you know, few years. I'm going to say, like, seven or eight. And the players are so hyper aware of these little pay jumps in the middle of pay structures that I see Michelle Habib here, who, not wanting to judge a book by his cover, but in tournaments I've been in, wouldn't be the person you'd expect if you're looking going, right, when's the next pay jump for, like, a fraction of a buy-in? Yeah. It's, everyone's so aware of it now. And I almost wonder if we're better served sometimes in these big live events that when we get to this stage of the tournament that maybe we base like levels on number of hands played or something of that ilk. Just to So if you guys finish your hands, you get the longer break? Yeah. And then we don't have so much of the completely understandably correct but yeah. unnecessary tanking. But then the issue still remains even if you play a number, oh you mean, then it would have to be hand for hand the whole right, time. Right, I see what you're saying. Because, yeah, because otherwise then you're still going to finish after the other guys. Yeah, and you'll know. Unless you can wind it back and go, well, we'll actually just line it up afterwards who, who makes the pay jump. Please. Yeah, or maybe if you But then you know what happens first, then you get the, the advanced knowledge. It still doesn't work perfectly. doesn't work perfectly, but is it better than the situation we have currently? I don't know. Musa, he's found a situation he doesn't mind. Jamming has 10 bigs over... Cordians plus one open, which is a little scary, yeah. but I guess 10 bigs, ace, 10 suited. He does have a little bit back, actually. It's more like a 15 big oh, blind implied me. shove. Pardon me, you're quite right. So that may get him a few more folds. Yeah, and, and we'll probably get a fold from this hand where for 10 blinds, yeah. one imagines it would feel compelled to call, especially with the four and a half million. I think so. Stack behind. Just off a route. Not much he can do here, surely, with the openness still to act and this three-bet jam is... No. Ace-queen would be pretty dicey there. Right. Like, you maybe feel like you have to go with ace-queen, but that's that's the one that's on the line, ace-check, an easy enough fold. Jula Bergenhoff, we can assume, is going to take 25 seconds here. Oh, no. Quick one this time. Yeah, 13. That's fine. And, uh... Korchidian. Obviously, we'll be in good shape against decent chunks of the Musa <laughs> range here, but overall, you know, just a bit too concerned about the Ace Kings and Ace Queens, which dominate them. Yeah. <laughs> see the eights, nines, tens, jacks. Do okay against. I have, I have very good hand. Better than you. For sure, for sure, I'm better than you. <laughs> for sure, I'm with better, kings. I'm better than King Seven. Okay. Last five seconds. I, I didn't show with eight nine. 
I'm better than King7. <laughs> Interesting that he said last five seconds and then I fold. And that's very fair because actually in his seat, he can't see the box. He's a little bit obscured because the dealer but is between him and the box. <laughs> so everyone else has a very good view of the, but the countdown. He can't but see it's it quite as he well said there. It, but it's interesting he said, there. like, the last five that. seconds I and I'll fold. He's that. the one with four and a half million chips on this table. He's the one that surely makes sense, wants to play more hands. Oh, I didn't think he said last five seconds and I fold. I thought he said last, tell me when it's last five seconds. Like, as a thing going forward, like, always please say oh, that okay. I can't see okay. it. You might be right. I thought that's what I heard, but... You have red one? No, you're, you're, so what you say makes more sense. That. What you say makes more sense. That's why I was surprised. Yeah, I've been in that spot a couple of times where the one and two seat, it is it is a little annoying because you can't actually see the clock tick down. So you're relying on the dealer maybe to give you a little bit of notice. Um, it's actually not great that it's obscured from a couple of the players because you even can pace the kind of decision you're going to make a little bit. You suddenly realise you have five seconds. It's a bit like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to being able to always glance up and realise. I think you can probably see it there. Seconds there. Looking at the, the line of it. But yeah, you're right. Certainly the one seat is hmm. has to lean forward. So. Quite like actually, again, not wanting to hark on, but... At Triton, kind of introduced a, a light strip in the table. You can see the time going down. Ooh, fancy. So wherever you're sitting, you can see it's just the LED strip in the middle of the table. Just ticking down. Panic as it gets near the bottom. I was going to say, it has a kind of a countdown clock vibe then. All in. Christophe <laughs> Root, he'll be going all in with this, giving the opportunity. Dangerous one for Habib here with 14 bigs. This is borderline. This is probably a shove, to be honest. And if he can somehow find a non shove <laughs> and save his tournament, he will be very fortunate because I think I probably just send this one, particularly against Christopher, who I think maybe opens lighter than most from the cutoff. Seems like there would be even more reason to get it in here. We are looking at yeah, the Yeah, entirely reasonable. Happy. David, you called it. And I think when you see Christopher just free bet fold instantly before. It's not like if you haven't played with him before, you can tell he's obviously not a nit. Certainly not. <laughs> Little stretch. I wonder what happens to nits when they turn up in the side. They just, they just get sent back at the airport. Cause we never see any. Oh, okay, Habib picks up a little equity in the form of that 10 8 7 board. 9 or 6 would keep him alive. There's the 9. Wow. Now, of course, there are opportunities for a chop. Christopher Root hoping for a jack or a 6. Oh, and he finds my the jack. Goodness me. Yeah. <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster there for both <laughs> players. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Why you tell the side of the inside? When I saw the guy, I was sure. Big moment there for both. <laughs> All that and he makes a loss in the putt, right? For the big blind as the person who posted the ante splits half the half the, gets half the small blind, but Loses half an ante. You're right. But for all that, to lose a small blind. <laughs> but he got a lot of fun out of it, David. And so did we. <laughs> it's, a fun, it's a funny one because I got lucky for good. <laughs> he got lucky and then got lucky with the needle. Unlucky. I got lucky, finished the hand. It's a funny one because by the river, both are happy in a weird way. Sure. They, they both come from behind. Got a chop. Stirring of the tea. That's yeah. you know it's early in the day. It has to be a few sugars to stir that much. No, you, you sort of. I defer to your knowledge on that subject. I'm not a sweet drinks man. Half sugar man. You're half yeah. sugar. I okay. I don't really stir. An egregious know, you're, amount. You're kind of known for stirring, aren't you? <laughs> James Dempsey with the wordplay. Panetti, ace queen. This one certainly does qualify. 
do you think you'll feature in Ali Najad's speech if he was to win the broadcast of the year? You are his producer at Triton, of course, and his co-commentator here. Would he give a speech? I suppose he'd give a speech if he didn't win as well. <laughs> I, you mentioned he was obviously nominated earlier. Yeah. You keep kind of keep tabs on this. I assume is he has he won it before? I imagine he hasn't. He's been nominated once before. Oh, only once before nominated. Well, wow, okay. I'm kind of. I know it, it, it's a strange one because I think it's fair to say you and I would rate Ali to be there thereabouts the best <laughs> hand for hand commentator there has ever been in poker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe it's the case that the the color commentators get a bit more love because they inject more personality. But actually, Ali injects a lot of personality into the drier role. Yes, certainly. Um, which is a, an enormous yes. skill. Obviously, his partnership with Nick Shulman, quite famous these days, as who's also nominated. Who, yeah, and and he's battling with a lot of his uh, co-commentators. Right, too, Henry Corbet in there as well. I explained to Ali that I did vote for Henry, uh, first preference, but only because the rules yeah, state that if you work with somebody in the capacity one eight double. that one they're eight. up for, you're not allowed to give them your first three. preference vote. Four so obviously, four um, Ali's four. co-commentator. So I stuck to the rules, I went for Henry Kilban. It, it, it solved a complicated decision for me, actually, because Henry and I go way back as well. happy to see either of them win. In fact, I'd be happy to see any of those guys win. I think uh, she's a good category this year. <laughs> Obviously, no love for you or I. Here they can listen. It's okay. Second tier. Maybe there's a Europa League of uh, commentators we can get into that competition. I, I, I want them to put a, together an award for the the best broadcaster slash talent producer and then that might be where I, I, I feel like I've got a niche somewhat. If I wasn't nominated in that category I'd be upset. Yeah, who also skis and plays golf. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I imagine there could be other ones who are better and than is, that And you have thing. to be in the follicle challenge category as well. Right? Yeah, and love fantasy sports. I don't know fantasy sports. You do a fantasy sport thing. Well, no, I've, I've mentioned this on stream and you looked at me like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I don't, I've never played any kind of do fantasy Do you not do sports? some sort of team thing? Do you always go, I'm doing my team? No, sports betting. Sports betting, okay. Well, I not. There's no, there's no fantasy not there. We're playing for real money. <laughs> I'm no gambler. I only play poker. Actually, speaking of being follically challenged, I'd say I think someone at Housekeeping played a cool, cool joke on me. I'm not sure <gasps> they weren't put up to by you. But three we went to get in the shower today. <laughs> and there were... No, <laughs> There were, you know, the little miniature tubs you get in hotel rooms for, you know, shampoo, conditioner, and shower gel. There were no shower gels, but four shampoo conditioners. <laughs> I thought, this is Lappin's work. Here. <laughs> the amount of time I've saved on haircuts. Styling going on. I used I mean to cut my own hair, so I was saving money then. I, I, I do it professionally now that I'm. Uh, what you cut hair yeah. professionally, or you get yours cut professionally? Th literally, th I, I now get mine cut professionally because, and the only reason is, I am on camera for two minutes at the beginning of end <laughs> and end of these broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> these broadcast frames. And I'm like, Ooh. wow. Christopher going off the Hasbani again. This time plus one, plus two. And. Although up against a tighter range, it has found him with a lighter hand this time. A little under 3x, but again, we're only playing sort of just over 30 blinds. We yeah. are 22 left. We don't have to go as large anymore. No, I really like this sizing. I think it's perfect. Just absolutely nailed on perfect from Christopher Rue. And it does put a hand like Queen Jack suited, a very playable one in a very tough situation. ICM right. what? is becoming a real factor here, a creeping factor since the bubble burst and relieved some of the stress. It's been inching its way back into the equation, quite a significant part of the equation now, with nice ladder jumps. A reminder that the ICM implications peaks at around about 10 or 9 players left before inching its way back down again until, of course, there is no more heads up. Little wrinkle in the merit 
paved structure that you see a bit extra with three left. Oh, hello, Musa. Wow. Finds it in a dreamy spot because this can be light ahead. He still has Fodo, can see, which is always nice, even when you've got his king. 900k in the pot. It will be some price Christopher has laid here. Just 900k more into a pot of, I assume it's going to be three and a half million. That'll be 2.3, yeah, sorry, including his 900k. I was, you calculate it such the professional way, I can at the puns are watching on TV way. <laughs> Moose to doing the put all my time chips out, start scratching my head, pretend I don't know what I'm going to do. We all know where this is going. Yeah, when it gets it back to Christopher, he's going to be laid a price. He's going to need Ooh. probably around 30%. On and one. he'll know he has a hand that may have 30% a decent Not amount of the time, yeah. but I think he has to let it go. Those chips far too valuable to right. keep rather than to invest in a precarious spot. And just dreamy for Musa to be able to pick up. 50% of his stack with no showdown. Yeah, it's an incredible situation. We'll see, like I say, when you can jam this hand and still have follow as well, not have to a lot of the time risk your stack, pick up that 50%. You are loving life. You know, as you mentioned, Christopher needs to be about 30%, <laughs> did you say? And, and here, he's only 25%, but Musa wouldn't want him to call here because although he's you know, laying him an incorrect price. For him as well, just that survival aspect here is worth so much. Oh, you don't mind just getting folds with, you know, a non-paired hand here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's ha he'd, he'd be more than happy for. Say, hey, don't worry. you got King 10, I've got his King. Just <laughs> get him up. To be honest, if you have a hand like Queens, you don't really mind getting the fold here. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's only Aces and Kings that are greedy in this spot. Credit to Christopher making the move, yeah. taking this game by the scruff of the neck. Just sort of ran into it yeah. there, and twice that happens. Twice yeah. he's run into it, and, nice little dude. and of course had kings v sixes, and only got a chop. I just want to revisit a point because I'm very concerned that the audience will now worry that I'm a very vain person um, <laughs> about my physical appearance, and that's why I'm getting professional haircuts because I'm on camera. I only meant it in the sense that now that I'm on camera, I can get my haircuts written off <laughs> as a tax expense. <laughs> wow. There we go. So with Albert. Yeah, just want to make that clear. Here, I can pull you. She can't eat that? It can be. My head, my head, Anna. Tempter for Yilmaz. Dare I say, man, <coughs> perhaps easily tempted. <laughs> Strikes me as such. Habib with an option here. Let's see Yilmaz open up ace nine offsuit in early position, right at the start of the day. Really is aware of the reputation of why can he get in the mix? Making this one somewhat tempting, isn't it, for 15 blinds? Unquestionably a spot here. If this was cut off and button, I think you mm -hmm. simply have to go for it. If this is hijack and button, it becomes very, very tempting indeed. Hijack to cut off, very cuspy. Penetti with a suited hand, doesn't realize those suits are smothered, of course, and sometimes a good adjustment to make here, to actually look at a hand like a 10-4 you know, clubs or a 8-3 mm. of whatever when you're suited, hands you might stickily defend, but as the ICM gets a little larger, and the fat lady singing here, I'm a bit worried <laughs> whether one of these guys are in trouble. Yeah, it was a bit, bit preemptive, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Benetti, up against your mass table, the ones who played out the first pot of the day on this table. And here they are again, this time Benetti 
has the best of it post flop. Facing a half pot size, not insignificant. Yeah, and as the ICM pressure creeps up, just makes it a little awkward to proceed in spots such as this one that are obviously clear calls in other environments. And this one is a clear call. He has to still go with it, but it's just, he's much more abusable on turns to have to make bigger mm -hmm. fouls than he would be in another situation. Oh my goodness Wow. Me. Both players <laughs> picking up that club draw. Panetti also picking up a wheel draw. Now, is this one just Yomaz really just has to keep up the heat with? Kind of, you can make diamond draws fold, perhaps. You can make the 10x's fold. You can even make maybe some weaker ace fold, like a6, a7, perhaps. Could, yeah, like, would you send it and then just put mm. loads and loads of pressure on your opponent that even their. Ooh. Weaker aces are in Hang trouble. On. What's Penny doing here? <laughs> Is he coming out with a little block? Well, that's not a little block. That's a huge bet himself. So, gooder, pair, flush draw, deemed enough to commit here. Doesn't want to face a bet, would rather make one, I guess, is and his logic. And is this deemed, is this sort of somewhat for protection and then other sides try and make maybe a hand like jacks, queens, kings, maybe a weak ace himself fold? Is that the. Logic here? Yeah, well, definitely jacks, queens, and kings are in a world of hurt. I'm wondering if this ever works against some of the ace -X combos. Right. Like, if you're there with an ace nine, are you loving life now? Very awkward. Seems Interesting unlikely. deviation from the norm here from yeah. Panetti. I thought it might be like a block kind of sizing with a 10, but he's gone the other way. He's gone huge. And what I would say is... This kind of play, this kind of aggression, actually really does complement his willingness to defend a hand like 10-4. Right. If he's willing to have these kind of moves, these kind of gears, then he can make it work for himself. How sick does your mass feel like turning that club thinking, oh, here we go. Oh, I just have to fall with that pretty good chipping. On the flip side there, he might be thinking, phew, I was going to jam there, maybe I'd have got snapped off. Yeah. My offset later. My <laughs> Deviations, the norm here. MPO Poker going down at the Merit Poker Western Series main event final day. We are moving very swiftly towards our final two tables and of course the final table a little later today. And then there will be just one remaining. The Lone Ranger, perhaps. Someone's going to get to 64 million chips before then though. 67 actually I believe, isn't it? 670 entries, something like that. 672, there you go. It's hard to believe that someone, one of these players will end the day with 67 million chips in play because, as we mentioned earlier, there's no one with a really big stack thus far. No, I do suspect we're in for a, a long final day. I have a sense we're going to be burning the midnight oil unless one of these players really catches some heat. Not unusual for us to come back for the final day of a Western event with maybe 20 players or less. So, the fact that we came back with 24, I think this one could go a little later. So, if you guys are brewing up your morning coffee, checking out the stream, see how these guys are doing. But, you know, we understand you might have things to do on a Thursday. Maybe work. You have to work. Maybe you have to drop the kids off. Collect them again later on. I can be Pretty Put confident. Get them up. <laughs> yeah, you just, just a lot of. You can tell where my life is these days. A lot of. How was the uh, child wrangling this morning? It's always wrangling. We were in the pool. Had oh. a great little morning in the pool. Nice. Yep. Some ball games. Included some other kids who were here on holidays. Lots of fun was had. But um, yeah, I think as much as we love you to stick around now, and please do so if you can. This evening, after work hours, it will be final table time. And I have a feeling we have a fantastic final table in store. <coughs> Can't imagine there's anything better in the poker world taking place between 7 p.m. and midnight tonight. No. Don't think we're competing with anyone else. No. 
Open docket. And also, it's cute you think midnight will be on this finish. This is going all night long. Well, I was sort of thinking about, I suppose, my Irish and your UK okay. brethren. But yes, you're absolutely right. All over the world, as is evident from the chat and the various languages in the chat, uh, people maybe having to brew a pot of coffee for an altogether different reason later on this evening to stay up for us. Nothing happening for Tulip Bergenoff in the early going. We've had just over Norbert. He's had to fold, I think, every hand so far. Not unusual to have these little patches of poor card distribution. So important to stay patient. Yeah, I mean, it's only 10 hands. <laughs> it's crazy. Looks like you're seeing quite a few play out thus far. <laughs> so, yeah, finding nothing for 10 hands. Completely normal. As David said, welcome to all of you watching wherever you are in the world, whatever language you speak. We do have the chat open. Let's see if we're getting a little action in there today. Please do let us know who you're rooting for. Or if you have a piece, maybe? Or if you have a piece, yeah. And th and that was the same thing, who you're rooting for, really, let's be honest. Mm. <laughs> financial incentive, a little extra, though. Yeah. I don't root for anything I've got for unless I've got financial. If you're on the oh. front table of the main event playing at someone I've never heard of, I don't care. You unless I've got a piece of you. I, I, I lie. I don't care. If I care, don't well, there's cry. Always, there's always the, uh, you know, if you want the main, like, just sometimes money falls out of those people's pockets. Yeah. Stay close. Stay close. <laughs> you just never know. Stay. Is that what Ali means by stay close? Yeah. Just stay close to those people who just won $342,000. Wow, this man is relentless. Christopher Root coming out for another light three bet. With eight deuce from the big against the button open again. The button going to be the one, six, lightest one, range. Okay. And kind of like the hand in the eight deuce. Doesn't really play very well. Don't really want to fold it though. So it's just slipping in. Obviously, you know, we'd rather see maybe an ace four type hand. But I kind of like this too. Yeah, finding ways to use all parts of the deck here, Christoforu. Yeah, I'm very impressed so far. And it makes him very, very difficult to play against. He finally wins one. He's been so unlucky. He's run into kings, run into ace king. Had kings against sixes, only got a chop. Now he finally wins one. All the sort of skills that he exhibited certainly deserve more than this thus far. And he seems the one on this table to me. But obviously, if he gets things going, he's willing to kind of go for broke, build a stack. We just saw Sarkis coming into picture there, obviously on the outer table. Stretching his legs. Ladies for Korshidin. Yeah, the man with all the chips on this table. <coughs> but only a sort of one and a half times average stack for him. Yeah, Not as you said, that. really interesting stack distributions here on the final day. Nobody with a really big stack. We, we have seen, obviously, the, the Western particularly big couple of stacks at this stage. I think already maybe did... The Dark Knight. No, it wasn't Dark Knight. Dark King. Dark, dark King, King, yeah. I the Dark King had like 12 dark, million already. The Dark Knight is, you know. That's a cool one too, though. Yeah. I don't mind being called the Dark Knight. We're going to upgrade him. 
Can do you upgrade from? No, it's uh, more of a downgrade from a game downgrade tonight. But downgrade really it sounds either. cooler because of recent cultural developments. Oh, and trouble here for Panetti, considering a queen X. Okay. Likely to be something like queen jack suited, king jack or king queen suited, I should say. <laughs> yeah, it's unlikely to be king very jack unlikely suited. to be king jack suited <laughs> here. <laughs> but yeah. It, it oh no. And I just mentioned how quiet he has been, but now has found a oh, dreamy spot. He long. doesn't realize is in fact a nightmare. Yeah. A cruel one, for sure. Just 15 blinds, a raise and an open in front. No way we can do anything but go with this. Looking up at the clock, 22 remain. The next page jump comes at 21, so... I like if he burns a little bit of time here, and then when he eventually makes the move, maybe leave a chip back to buy himself another 30 seconds. Perhaps scan around the room, see what's going on as well. That's what he's doing. He's kind of looking out of the left there, back onto the tournament floor. There are two tables there within short distance. I hate to be a little nitpicky with you, James. Go on. Would you not make the raise holding the chip back and not burn a time bank first and then burn them later? Because maybe well, it gets through and you think, need to I burn a time bank at all. I think he's burning one here and in posturing is like, I've got Aha, a tough decision. This one's like one the, of those ones. I this one's like the, I'm not sure what to do with this hand. Should I jam with it? And, but yes, you're, you're right. Well, he took your advice in the end. Did posture. Snap, shove from Corchidian. And not a snap fold from Panetti. So now thinking maybe an ace queen is in there. Maybe an ace queen suited decided to take the flatting, mm. more passive line, and now is wondering if they could ever be in good shape. No, I think I have 30 seconds. So yeah, he's just helping his man out. He just said, I have such a sick hand. I think it is ace queen. I think he said, I've just got 30 seconds. He's oh, just, he's sorry. Just it's a very big fold, okay? But yeah. All right, then. What do you have? I block. Block me? Yeah. Ace queen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. You were right. Pretty reasonable line. Flat the ace queen. And then obviously surrender to this much action. Yeah, I'm obviously would have called against Tulip Bergenoff, but Paul Cordian <sighs> ripped it in and an ace ten three flop. Obviously would have affected the folded hand as it is. No change here. Of course I can't call him, but I never can come. Jack Queen. See, he's the seven of diamonds roll off. Just has to fade one more card. Let's get himself up to the six million plus mark. What? That's what he's going to do, David. <laughs> Tulip Bergenoff out in 22nd. Nice the man, last man, man. Hard luck. picking up $13,730. Yeah, absolutely nothing he could have done oh, there. Oh, 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 A cooler <laughs> of the highest <laughs> order. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, sometimes I think that you, it's a he's good, one of the guys uh, with the shovel. Good inspiration from me. You have to respond. No way you call this. Man. But if you three bad, Do you no, I don't call, but I, I can three bad. Most know uh, that. Three three Sorry, I was listening to the three bad fold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three bad fold. Ace yeah. queen discussion yeah. at the table. Yeah, yeah, I missed your yeah. reference. Good inspiration. I probably don't get it, but go ahead again. Surely this is a movie. A western that you've seen. No, no, nice um, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, well, I didn't miss the, I missed the, the comment. Oh, uh, it might, might be the last words of the whole movie. He says, "There are two kinds of people in this world: those with loaded guns, and those who dig." Every hand I should tell you what I have. I don't know how to say it. Of course, he's given his friend on him. Oh, yeah, a gun that had no bullets. Oh. For the duel, oh, no. or true L, I guess no, you could call no, it, because no, it was no. a. No, 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 no. I think I, I, I didn't stand up. I, I don't remember which film. I open you three bets. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Ah, okay. He's regulating. I, I It'd be my guess because when yeah, you said surely you, you remember this, it would be the. <laughs> also me. It is a great source of disappointment. I, I, I kind of get that the opera yeah, stuff yeah, is no. a little bit too sure, swanky, sure, but. Yeah, westerns. Do you know what the worst thing is? Go on. Is the, uh, no, no, because uh, I ask you because you think to do media like studies, one of my subjects, and I did an entire module on <laughs> spaghetti westerns oh, no. <laughs> and the Dollar Trilogy in particular, and there I am with the most famous film from it. 
And I, I missed the quote. But you've also, you used the quote at the top of the show. I liked it. Thank you. Just trying to bit of bring a bit of class to this. So it's, it's ragtag bunch of misfits. It, it's not that I'm ignorant. No, I, would, I never would think you're ignorant. It's just I'm Think completely lazy, lazy, forgetful. Lazy. Because I've studied these films and I. Didn't read all my notes that I sent you before the <laughs> meeting. Well, in my defence, uh, A-level learning was 14, 15 years ago. No, wait, what talk about? Wow. 24. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're really I, 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 I also there. did maths <laughs> A-level. <laughs> <laughs> and they sit here beside 28-year-old James Dancy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> 20 year old James Dentz would have been on this table just blasting away. <laughs> 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 he was a battler. There was no ICM back then. He played for the glory. In fairness, back then, sponsorship deals were so readily handed out that there was a lot of extra equity in winning tournaments. For sure. <laughs> you won the tournament, you just got patched up immediately, no matter what, or yeah. where it was, yeah. I remember some absolutely wacky patches being handed out. I won't ask you to highlight anyone. I have a list here. How you been? Good guy, Dean. The opener, seeing an ace king eight flop. Not ideal with Christopher Rue calling the button, but Christopher Rue has turned a propensity to three bit a lot, so maybe we remove some of the strongest stuff here. And of course, with that gut shot, with the heart, and the big stack. Just fire him one out, see how we get on. Obviously, we're running into the two parts, of the, the two hands that are parts of the range that don't want to continue. Nice pick up, a good start to the day for him. But someone busted here. Huh? Someone busted here. It's there is two open seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 19. We're 19. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we've already lost two more players here, and we're down to 19 already. Yeah, it's actually gone rather quickly here in just under an hour. Oh. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> wait, wait. No, no, wait, wait. Wait, what is Wait, wait. If you wait nine minutes, you are big blind. The <laughs> <laughs> the pace of play going so fast here, with players busting out different tables. I believe the floor even losing track exactly how many are on each table, I think. It is two tables of six out there and a table of seven, so therefore, in that case, Habib will not have to move. I'm just confirming that now. I don't think they realized we'd had a bust out here as well a moment ago. Sometimes it's difficult when the uh, uh, floor's working out, the outer tables, they don't... There's obviously someone else keeping an eye on the feature table always, and. Sometimes that information doesn't always spread through, especially when the bust-outs are happening this quickly. Yeah, and I think exactly what you said happened there, which is that we had a bust-out, the guy was ready to go, he's like, okay, I'm going to get that guy off the table, and then there was a bust-out on that table, no longer a need to balance, but you've almost sort of made the decision in your head to move the guy, so you're thinking, that's what I'm doing anyway. Yeah. Actually, it may just be 20th, maybe two tables of seven and a table of six. But either way, we are now seven hands on this table with Tulip Bergenhoff's bust out and no need to move a player from here. And we talked about how no really big chip leaders yet in this, no one really pulling away. Ali likes to use the phrase Peloton as well, a kind of big group just right behind the leader. But uh, Korchidian is sort of maybe, just maybe, the guy stepping away, stepping out. That was getting hands like this. And credit to Habib as well, by the way, because he could have said nothing there. And he then moved off the table where he's about to be blind. And worst way, he moved into a different big blind. But chances are, moved maybe a couple of seats in the big blind. And when we're so close to a table redraw, it would have been very advantageous for him to avoid that blind. So credit for him for speaking up and saying, no, I, th I think maybe you're wrong here. I think I should post. Do you want to give him credit for that? Why are you Hollywood? You will post. <laughs> there are plenty of players who would... <laughs> I'm only joking. Try and get out of playing the blind there. No. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you strike me as someone who... You, you'd, you'd, sp you'd spill yeah. a coffee in a bubble, but I also <laughs> feel like you're not a man who takes a slow walk to his new table or, or <laughs> circles round when they're moving. 
Oh no, I would never circle around with a moving blue. I'd slow walk. Okay, yeah. I'd slow walk it sometimes. I, uh, yeah, well, I'd still walk, but just, you know, I have a limp because I have a bandy knee, so I kind of justify it. Maybe, maybe a slightly slow walk, or maybe a, uh, a if it's a last minute late reg at the World Series, I would circle back to the back of the queue. After you, sir. Yeah. And then circle back again i actually spoke to the uh staff at the world series and i said if darrow carney and i are at the back of the queue and we keep letting the other one go in front technically the queue never ends like we were getting into like an existential conversation about what is a queue and what is the end of a queue and if people constantly move out of the queue as the queue who you having this conversation with staff just wondering, <laughs> wondering and you didn't get banned wondering if we could prolong <laughs> the period before we had to actually jump in because we love playing with like four big blinds I can't ten. remember where my idea is. I've got to go, I've got to go get it from the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Goes route. No just messing around this time. Just ripping it. Yeah, just short stacks behind it. No, sorry, oh, not. Cool. The big, the big, big stack is right. behind. Wow, okay, interesting. Obviously. It's surprising to me because he's a player who's willing to play. We've seen it. Multiple, like, three bets. Yeah, this feels like a hand that actually works really nicely as an induce of the small blind. Yeah. And, and then if... The big stack, Corchidian, three bets. You actually get to four bet with fold equity. So I am a little surprised by this. It's easy, right? That one is a little... Hmm. Hmm. For a man, exactly as you said there, James, who loves the click wars, loves taking it to the streets, loves battling. Yeah. That was clunky. It, you do see that from some players. But from a player who's... You know, showing a willingness to. What I would say is the hand category you mostly associate with those big shoves is the small pairs. And it's very important when you do that with the small pairs in that spot, mm. you need a few to balance out with. Ace-Jack suited does make sense. King-Queen suited makes sense. Maybe even a King-Jack suited makes sense for that big shove. So maybe just maybe just trying to have a balanced game there and protect some of his small pairs in the overall strategy of it. But yeah, I don't know. That just felt like a... Well, I'm happy to get in against the short guy. And actually, there's enough of stack here that I can raise. And if Corchidian was to make it 500k, I can stick it all in over the top of that. Hmm. Well, Habib now with a must-shove 12 big blind spot on the button. Next page I'm coming at 18. So it still makes sense maybe to take a bit of time here and leave a chip back. Mm -hmm. See if he decides to do that or whether we will just rip. Yes. Now it's all in and gets snapped off by Kakordin in the small blind. Oh, oh no. Like do with me. Oh, oh. oh that's, not, that's not terrible news. Yeah. Do with me. No, no. The snap there perhaps designed to make Musa potentially fold slightly better because it looks so strong. Yeah. So obviously Cortidian, confident that Habib would have been in there with some weaker kings, maybe even a 10 jack. Oh, for sure. He's and he wants to play. Do the 11 blinds, 12 blinds even. He sent one packing already today. Can he send Habib on that man's heels? Well. Wow. He hasn't hit, but he likes the flop. Club. Yeah, equities have remained virtually else. static here. <laughs> and people <laughs> talking to the dealer saying, what is this flop? <laughs> what are you doing to me? Why are you that putting me through one. this? Great turn card for him, of course. I can see clearly now that one, though, not so much. Habib, the latest out. Accordion, striking gold. I can see clearly now the rain is gone, says Corchidian in song. All in, all in. As the river card was being dealt, <laughs> supreme confidence that all the chips are just gravitating towards him at the moment. Bro, eight more outs on the flop, you know? I have six outs. Suddenly eight comes. Yeah. Eight, 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 eight. Stop. Uh, no, the, the, he has also one jack. So. 
Well, saw the floor one coming over there, advising the dealer to hold up. If we don't see his cards, can mean only one thing, David. We'll never call them. We are down to the final 18 confirmation there on screen. And with that, we are about to go on a short break whilst the redraw is done. Such a critical part of the tournament, we always say. And you see Cordian with 7.7 .7 million chips off this table. Hasbani, Panetti, Christopheru, Musa, Kana Kampton Latin, and Yilmaz adrift for the rest. And the blinds will be going up shortly, but David, we won't waste any time. We are going to go on this break. It will take about 10 minutes to reset these two tables, and then we'll be back for more of this. Almost a gangster series, but it's the Western Series main event final day. one for Habib here with 14 bigs this is borderline this is probably a shove to be honest and if he can somehow find a non-shove <laughs> and save his tournament he will be very fortunate because I think I probably just send this one particularly against Christopher who I think maybe opens lighter than most from the cutoff seems like there would be even more reason to get it in here we are looking at yeah, the Yeah, entirely of reasonable. David, you called it. And I think when you see Christopher just free that fold instantly before. It's not like if you haven't played with him before, you can tell he's obviously not a nit. Certainly not. <laughs> Little stretch. I wonder what happens to nits when they turn up in the side. They just, they just get sent back at the airport because we never see any. Ooh, oh, okay, Habib picks up a little equity in the form of that 10-8-7 board. Nine or six would keep him alive. There are opportunities for a chop. Christopheru hoping yeah. for a jack or a six. Oh, oh he finds my the jack. goodness me! Yeah. <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster there for both <laughs> players. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I saw the guy, I was sure. It was
the ladies for Korshijin. Yeah, the man with all the chips on this table. <coughs> but only a sort of one and a half times average stack for him. Yeah, Not as you said, that. really interesting stack distributions here on the final day. Nobody with a really big stack. We, we have seen, obviously, the, the Western particularly big couple of stacks at this stage. I think already maybe did the Dark Knight. No, it wasn't Dark Knight. Dark King. Dark, Dark King, King, yeah. I the Dark King had like 12 Dark, million already. The Dark Knight is, you know. That's a cool one too, though. Yeah. I being called the Dark Knight. Could we going to upgrade him? Can you upgrade from... No. It's uh, more of a downgrade from a King tonight, but... Downgrade really. It sounds cooler because of recent cultural developments. Oh, and trouble here for Panetti, considering a Queen X. Okay. Likely to be something like Queen Jack suited, King Jack's... Or King Queen suited, I should say. <laughs> yeah, it's unlikely to be King Very Jack suited. Very unlikely to be King Jack suited <laughs> here. <laughs> but yeah. He, he oh, no. And I just mentioned how quiet he has been but now has found a oh, dreamy spot he doesn't realise is in fact a nightmare. Yeah. A cruel one, for sure. Just 15 blinds, a raise and an open in front. No way we can do anything but go with this. Looking up at the clock, 22 remain. The next page up comes at 21, so... I like if he burns a little bit of time here, and then when he eventually makes the move, maybe leave a chip back to buy himself another 30 seconds. Perhaps scan around the room, see what's going on as well. That's what he's doing. He's kind of looking out of the left there, back onto the tournament floor. There are two tables there within a short distance. I hate to be a little nitpicky with you, James. Go on. Would you not make the raise holding the chip back and not burn a time bank first, and then burn them later? I am so hyped to get back here for that backgammon championship. Every time <laughs> I hear that music, it gets my juices going. But for now, we have perhaps a slightly larger battle going on. It is, of course, the Western Series main event final day, and we have just reduced ourselves down to the final 18. Final two table redraw complete. We are moments away from getting it back underway, but as we discussed before, there's such a crucial point here. These last two tables, what seat do you get? Where do you where do you fit? We've just seen, you know, obviously some players busting, some players building stacks. It, it all changes now. Yeah, redraw is massive here. Obviously, the short stacks all looking to sort of navigate this tricky period now. 18 players left. You don't love being on the short stack in this situation as the ICM creeps up. But also those big stacks sort of in the ascendancy, we saw there Korchidian on the march. Mm -hmm. He's looking to build a big stack now for the final table. Won't be having much thought apart from that. He's going to try and bulldoze, I presume, the next period, uh, singing as he does. Uh, Christoforu obviously <laughs> stayed very active there I in the last frame clear. as well. <laughs> I can see clearly now the rain has gone as he <laughs> sends another one packing. <laughs> well, here we go. He's still on off each table, along with Ooh. the man who started the day as the chip leader, Amano Di Nicolo. Has also increased his stack a little bit. And a bit of a drop off to Corbin Haspani. Panetti back with us, Christopher as well. Moose, but I mean, a redraw, but we've got most of the players we had on the last frame back here again. Kirichenko, Di Nicola, Corbin joining us. Yeah, there is a lot of overlap there, but crucially, Di Nicola's inclusion at this table will make life a little bit more difficult for Korchidian. Those guys capable mm. of playing an absolutely monstrous pot. One wonders, will they clash or will they stay clear of each other? Uh, I'm going to go and say we, it wasn't a reader or such, but we broke a table because uh -huh. those players are still in their same seats, which I think is how we did things and things, which makes sense because we just had a redraw yes. overnight. No real need to do another one now before we get to the final table. Okay, so that explains why at least <laughs> five or six here. of the guys are <laughs> there and in the exact same spots. But we have filled in the other seats. Okay. Well, regardless there. We saw Di Nicola. I have to say I was a little bit... Oh, we're going to see he's drawn Di Nicola, of course. I know, right? 
out of position against the man who covers him here. I was a little bit critical of De Nicola in the penultimate frame last night. He was in there with 10 jack, flatting un early position opens. He was, you know, just wanting to see flops and, you know, obviously backs himself to outplay some people. But I wondered if that was, you know, overall a good strategy. Well, as soon as he went off the feature table and, you know, took his game uh, to the outer tables, it, it appears it was very fruitful for him. He, he went from about two million to one million on that feature table and then back up to six million in the space of just two hours. Amazing end of the night. Yeah, a, a man certainly playing with a lot of confidence, hmm? obviously on the back of that. Yeah. Well, he spoke a bracelet late last year. Well, he's a poker Europe. Happy to get in the mix. Uh, not in the same I, I I don't think he's in the same bracket yet as someone like Roman Harbits, but the same idea. Like you even when he's got a big snack, you know it might not last. There are some players when you see they've got six, seven million here, we're like, well they're they're just close to the final table all the time. But he's the kind of guy that is gonna take the chip lead to the final table quite often, but will also bust out fifteenth sometimes. Yeah, he's in an amazing situation here. We've actually already down to seventeen. We must have lost somebody instantaneously there on the outer table. Christoforu. Gonna fire a continuation bet here. As well he should mm -hmm. with the betting lead. And a gooder, but Panetti has a mystery card there which one assumes has connected with this board at least a little bit. Right, I mean it could be could king be a, ten. A king or a queen, queen yeah. Ten of his own, even like a ten nine, ten eight with a backdoor flush draw perhaps. So we saw him take a very creative line earlier with that flop second pair, turn a flush draw. Led out into the against the flow of the action for a huge bet. This ball, though, not developing in the same direction. Yeah, we'll have to see if Christoforu decides to go for two barrels. Oh, oh Panetti, having shown gears earlier, now going to do the same. He loves this move, and again on a on an ace high board, kind of a spot that it would really flummox your opponents. You never expect your opponent to lead on these kind of cards. I'm struggling to see what kind of hand that contains the ten of spades is wants to ten? ever do this. Yeah, is it jack ten? Jack is it jack ten where he doesn't want to give another free card? And Christopher who floats. Maybe. Makes a pair. Yeah. Has Panetti made two pair though? That's the question. Right. <laughs> right, this could be a ten nine type of holding. It's behind that. Could be a king ten holding. It's ahead, it could be two pair. Can it be ever like absolutely just nothing? Could he have been in here with? It's so hard when there's a heart, a diamond, and a club on the board, and we know he's got the ten of spades to give him anything. But queen ten, king ten, jack ten, ace ten. I would have thought. Seven. And given this, I, we can be pretty sure this is a two pair type hand now, right? Because so. would he would he be bluffing with queen ten, right? king ten? He'll really think he's uh. maybe got enough showdown. Yeah, I feel like if ace any. ten is the most likely holding now. Ace ten, just not wanting to face a bigger bet, decided to lead a smaller one. Like it, it, it's not the normal proceedings, but it does make the most sense as if we try and jump into the brain of Panetti here. Christoforo wondering, well, what could I possibly beat at this yeah. point? <coughs> Panetti, I told you I don't lie. twice being successful with the check call lead line, has three million chips. As we make way for another dealer, not much has changed at the leaderboard. Blinds going up to 50, 100k now with a 100k big blind ante. Love this level, very easy to calculate <laughs> bet sizes. <laughs> For those who numerically challenge, this is the dream. <laughs> uh, Yilmaz down at the bottom there, 950k, just nine and a half big blinds looking to make something happen. Everybody else has a bit of wiggle room. Three players around about the 20 big blind mark there, Musa, Kruchenko, and Kirchenko and Christofferu. And uh, we see yeah. Asbani and Panetti locked together with 30 bigs. Yeah, the, the yeah the three players there with a the classical tournament stack with 30 bigs, three with the classical 20 bigs, one with the classical 10 bigs, and then two outliers who've got 70 and 80 bigs, which you're not supposed to have on the fourth day of a poker tournament very often. 
no. A dream spot for both players hunting the chip lead as we inch our way towards the final tail. Which will come with the usual pageantry. The bombastic intros from producer and presenter Milbutas. Oh yes, you just reminded me. We've got a final table coming up, which means we get the Milbutas introduction of the finalists when they come out. Love us. Which is my favourite thing. I think of all the things here at Merritt is, is those. I just get gets the juices going. Gets me pumping when I'm in the room watching it live. Even watching it on stream is good, but in person, it's a sight to behold. I think it gets the players pumping too. <laughs> he certainly does. Because there can be a tendency in poker to be a bit drab and be a bit yeah. like... But when someone's giving that much energy, it kind of gets you into it as well. We saw players running around, Absolutely. kind of celebrating that they've made the finals, which you don't see, I think, if you just do a generic. And in seat one, we have... You need that. Yeah, the walk-ons as well. I almost feel like the guys for the walk-ons, you know when they do the walk-ons in boxing and, you know, the Burger King is behind them and, you know, maybe Taylor Swift is there. Or I don't know. <laughs> it's literally the only modern reference I could think of. But s somebody accompanies them as they do their walk-in. I wonder if that could be something we could encourage players to do to catch on. Do they have like an entourage? Oh, People yeah. pushing away the yeah. fans on either side. Who would be in your entourage? Would you have your kids out there? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we'd be in breach of some laws if I did that, but yes, no. that would be nice. Don't let it get in the way of a good... They'd enjoy it. They would love that. <coughs> yeah, no, I do like the idea of that. You say entourage, I say hangers-on, but... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I... Depends what they bring to the table. Entourage. Anyone who's got a percent has to be in there, kind of like fighting back the fans. Yeah, they're the entourage. And. Yeah, people who contribute something, even if it is just muscling away the fans. Joking aside, it is a lovely feature of the final tables here that. We take that little break, we set up the stage, the share hand guys usually create some really fun graphics as well, the players profiles displayed on the screen behind, the bombastic Milbutas with a uh, generous introduction for each player. I just, I feel like you can go on the road with it, I don't think there's any a stop that does it quite like Merritt. Could yeah, he's our own Bruce Buffer. Yeah, but even then, when they, when they, yeah, they, they can hype up a tournament, but hype up a final table, no one does it better. This man needs no hyping up. Get, he's got jacks and a big stack. He's hoping for one of these shorter stacks to perhaps perceive what is quite correctly a, a wider range than most. And Kirichenko, here we go. Here's an example of one who could certainly do this. And we've shown this man. Willingness to bust out. He definitely plays with his heart on his sleeve. And you've got fourth in the high roll this time. Second in that same event last time out. I'd be surprised, David, if we don't see him take the spot. He rarely shies away. And he has announced all in. 17 blinds. Completely reasonable against this hijack open. But what a dream start for Korshidian here. Snaps it off. Kirichenko now 29% only to stay in this tournament. Are we about to go to 16? Is Korchidian about to become the prohibitive chip leader of this tournament? It feels destiny like night, isn't it? If he keeps running like this, board's coming out clean, getting there when he needs to. Certainly could be Kirichenko reduced to just three. That's not it. GG's Kirichenko. Shout out to him for pulling up. Audacious bluff on the pure bubble yesterday. Ripped it in for 1.2 times pot. We just queen high. Oh, we have a bust out. Out on the floor as well. What is Looks happening like this morning? Clement Bonan holding ace 10. And then Ketzer getting there with ace 3. It was a 10 9 3 board. 
Turn two, river three. So he spiked a two arrow on the end yeah. at the same time. As we lose Kirichenko. Yeah, nothing wrong with the move there from Kirichenko. So I'm actually. <laughs> oh, the 17th and 16th, we've got the same money. 17.6k. So if we are down to the final 15, which makes sense now, that means everyone is now guaranteed 20k. It's getting serious. Oh, very tasty indeed. But tasty as 20k is. 340k is an awful lot more bananas and pineapple. You can't shame me for eating fruit. It's usually yeah, cookies yeah. I bring back here, so. I'm very impressed by your choice to spend that eight minute break gathering some fruits. Nine point seven million now for Corchidian. Another openable one. He's just relentless right now. Dealer being very generous with the Queens and Jacks and <laughs> Jacks again, but like well, she was about to lose her patience with the clock there. Has Banny. No interest in playing back with this A3 suited. Didn't even cross his mind. Christopher Root in the big blind. King, queen off. Interesting spot again, David. Mm -hmm. Does decide just to rifle it in. Yeah. Not surprising from this seat that we see this maneuver. No, and 16 and a half bigs, I think probably way too many for Cortillian here. He's finally going to have to so when let I one go. Don't you stop the clock, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's familiar with myself. Of course, he's facing a bet. If he asks how much the bet is, the clock has to be stopped, given the time. Yeah, hoping for a slow count here. Yeah. I know I'm ahead. He's right. Big time. He's wow. right. I know what you're shoving with, I know. But I'm afraid I will lose. You know, how much? Wow. A perfect handle on the situation, Cortidian. Surely not. Like Nostradamus today. Yeah. And an opportunity to not get a very dangerous opponent if indeed he's right. And he's it is a King Jack King. Wow! Queen. What are we seeing here? He was spot on, David. He's made the call. He said, I know I'm good. I know what you're jamming oh, with. No. Christopher Ruth feels sick seeing that no. hand call him. Well, huge moment for Christopher if he I can get there with the near jack flip hand. Suited, jack and suited. You know, I know. But I will play 60-40, let's see. I'm running good. <laughs> well, Ain't that the truth? It is just 60-40, of course. The king-queen live. Well, Still right. live, but after a five-high flop, not well, enjoying well, life well. too much. Oh, and you do feel yeah, for Christopher well, two well, cards well. away from elimination. Yes, yeah. He's you don't expect to get unlucky. called by this. Yeah, and he's obviously been... Very unlucky with his three bets lost. Tied kings, we six is all in pre. Now needs to hit king or queen on the river here. He's not going to do it. An incredible call from Kulkwidian. Read his man and said, I know what you've got. He did, he did. I know you've got these kind of hands. Just whether I want to gamble. I'll gamble. I'll take my 60% shot. I'm running good. And Christopher is just probably feeling a bit sick oh, at that. Sick to your stomach there. If he jack, if he run into ace jack or something, he'd probably be like, hey, you know, More fair enough, there. but getting called by A6 offsuit is a real sand in the face moment for him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are rifling through the field. We only just had our final 18 redraw, already down to 14. Each is one million, no? Yes. I have 40 And do you know what, James? And like this is sort of a hidden factor in all of this now. But I feel obliged to point it out. I pity the fool. And then I Do three bets. Corchidian from here on out. You're not, you're petrified to do it light. Right. Loads of hands that you're allowed to do it with and you're thinking, oh, he might just snap me off here with the raggy ace. A huge marker been put down there. Sane stuff. 
Yeah, there's two sides to that coin. He spotted an opportunity to remove possibly one of the most dangerous opponents he could face here, but he also gave an opportunity for them to double up in 45% of worlds. Right. Extraordinary moment. I'm sure. It didn't. It didn't take that long to make the call either. Got the count. I don't think he even used up a time chip. Your Maz, nine and a half blinds under the gun. Ace Queen. Fourteen players remain. Yeah, delighted to find a shove spot here. Really is struggling to get his engines going this morning. Maybe, just maybe, this is the beginning of the comeback. Of course, that famous hand from last night, which I feel like the world of poker, the entire poker community are going to have watched before this weekend is out. <coughs> Well, no double up, but he's going to get one through here at a nice time just before the blinds steal those chips right back off him. No, the cool beans. Brought his jacket out for the day like that. He's ready. He packed, assuming he was going to go deep. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate when people make a little bit of an effort to dress up. Yeah. I was hoping we might I mean see some Western attire today. Yeah, Someone had it in the locker, but this I play with, this not I to be. We'll see. Not counting on our staff. We're all dressed in the theme. I just I'm upset we can't get I can't get a big hat and the headset over it. I would know. I would definitely don a Stetson if I made the final table. Yeah. No question. I did. I when I got to uh, announce the uh, mystery bounties at this series last year, I wore stats. You look pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Don't know who gave you the authority to call the bounties, but we are where we are. It's part of my baptism of fire here in Corinia. Chidian now able to open with impunity. These guys petrified to fight back. Making good reads, running well. Waking up with some serious hands also. How much you have? <laughs> 11. <laughs> Getting bossy here, Kuchidin. Does he open this? Well, that's a lucky hand. This is becoming abusive. I like it. But and like as you as you said, when you've seen the man race call it off with a six offsuit, how difficult is it is it to go after it? Yeah. Yeah, his opponent's sharing a little laugh and a joke with him. Almost experience a sort of Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> Obviously, they all benefit from that bust us. They're kind of enjoying it, but now this one you realize they're left with the, the remnants. 
Now they have to deal with them themselves. If not a hole. If not a hole. Just having a look here. He started the day with 4.6 million. That's around 12 now. It's the breakout player thus far. Jack O'Quadian. I mean, I'm sure this tournament is going to have a lot of twists and turns. But he's the early breakout, getting up to you know, nearly 20% of the chips in play. Big blind is one entry, one starting stack. Yeah, this is one. This is my friend I put now. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoy that benchmark my myself. And my <laughs> other friend. <laughs> He's a player that's uh, usually found uh, in the cash game streets. <laughs> Does have a fair number of caches, just under 400k <laughs> on his Henemod database, a whole uh, bunch of which coming in this very place. <laughs> Well, will it be a case of no man left behind here in defense of his soldiers as Hasbani <laughs> takes a pre-flop stab here to the tune of 2.2 million? Yumaz <laughs> finding Jax with his nine blinds over and open. Very reasonable to believe he might get paid off here. And <laughs> this one would be a little optimistic. I wonder if any amount of this is sort of a little bit of gamesmanship. Like just to make sure that Hasbang knows it's sub 9 big blinds. Like I don't think it is in this case because he's got all the chips, but he's one of the short sites. You just want to point out to the man who's open, hey, this is a really small bet. Hasbangy. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna give him a spin so here, getting a great price, nine big, so <laughs> <laughs> Big moment for both players here. Has Bani, will he finish the hand with two million or four million? Will Yil Maz finish the hand with two million? Or a little piece of paper that says 14th place? Oh, ace in the window. Hasbani leaps out in front. Your Mars does have the opportunity, though, of course, David. There are routes to victory. Now there is just one route to victory. It means a black paint card that says J. And we have service. GG's. To your Mars. Very like unfortunate. I feel like there's a conspiracy with the dealers to give us an early night tonight. I, th I, I was there sending, setting it up going, we're going to be here till 2 in the morning. It's going to be a long day, 24 players. It's going to take a while. Half of them are gone. Well. Average stack is now over 50 big blinds. That's extraordinary in this stage of a tournament. Yeah, we will see it between the last three tables down to the final table, kind of shrinks down to 30 somewhere. So I didn't even think we would have had the two table set up by now. Right. And we're more than halfway to being to at the a final. final table. The deck somewhat cooperating. Very much so. The all in stack has not prevailed. Yeah, that's exactly it. Bounty is the money, my friend. The short stack. Always being shown the door right now. Sometimes goes the other way. We, of course, had a uh, an amazing Merit Western series high roller where short stack never lost. <laughs> yeah. And, and it just kept going back and forth. But yeah, quite the contrary this morning. 13 left. Who would have thunk it? After just an hour and 20 minutes? Corchidian 
Will he get bossy here with the 10-6-0? It's the kind of hand you might raise up, the kind of raggedy one that doesn't play great as a limp. He is going to. And a much nicer King-4 has to hit the muck. Yeah, like this. Power poker from Corchidian. Running with the bull. Di Nicola, I don't think he's played a pot since coming to this table. Obviously, it's only been actually a handful of hands, and I haven't seen him fold anything tight, but he's watching this all go on. Thinking, Christ, what have I got on my left here? Yeah, and I wonder if he does dare open one at some point. Will Corchidian give some respect, or will he immediately pounce with <laughs> the first playbackable one he gets? I have a feeling it'll be the latter. It can be that tendency of your De Nicola here to go, well, look, I'd, I'd like to be accumulating, but at the same time, I'm really enjoying all these players busting and me making progress right. to the final table. If the chips keep going to the same guy, yeah, well, I'm happy. actually sitting there in a very nice position. Yeah. Have you bust out? Can you watch as a bystander, your equity goes up. Same applies to Di Nicolo. Six deuce, not going to be something to get involved with. Right, how frisky are we feeling? This would be more than abusive. No harm to fold the occasional hand. It helps ah. for credibility once in a while. Can't be folding, David. Come on. I think he is going to let this one go. And he's going to talk about how he let this one go. <laughs> I don't feel it. I don't feel it, he says. Okay, you're right. Possibly a bit lucky here. Musa does wake up with the one with the hand that might have reshoved. We surely would have reshoved. Yeah, given the against this of seat. Yeah, he'd have to rejam, wouldn't he? Yeah, you're, you're shoving and then you're watching the rest of the hand play out through <laughs> through your fingers. You're, you're shoving and hoping it calls you with ace four. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, then. I'm just going to rip it himself from the small, maximizing the photo equity with these 18 blinds. Pay jump, 5k for the next bust out. Pace of play also been pretty rapid fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all fun and games right now. I mean, you're winning every pot. I've seen players out for fun. Here we go, David. Di Nicola. Opportunity to like one himself. He's four off in the hijack. He's finally going to get involved. And there you go. His man on the left did fold an ace. Ace three, so instantly folding. Giving a little bit of respect to Di Nicola. Of course, he should be folding ace three, but we weren't sure how he was going to react to the opens when they came. And actually, the, the speed of the fold doesn't give Di Nicola any information either. He wouldn't know that it was an ace. He wouldn't know that it was a possible three bet. I'll just think, oh, maybe look down at jack three off. Oh, has Banny. Definitely a call here. Mandatory defend. I don't think you want to get frisky with this one. I think you just want to navigate here, try and flop a set, maybe get a little sticky on some boards. Check back. <laughs> oh, the case four rolls out. The Haspani announces dark check. This day and age of dark check, well, players pretty much always check and flow anyway, so it doesn't really change too much. But it's odd that he's somehow done it now when he hasn't done it up until now. Yeah, Di Nicola feeling very good here with the four and the diamond, right? Yeah, I was going to say, Di Nicola has a lot of this himself. Middle pair, backdoor diamonds, wheel draw. Well, not really a wheel draw, I guess, because with the six on board there. All right. 
Multiple players have made the same hand. Mm, Hasbani coming out with a smaller raise. I don't think you can fold yet. No, but suspicions will heighten. Virtual lock on this one, Hasbani. Di Nicola, oh, well, we're going to pop back to that hand in a moment, but we want to see this classic race, Jack's Ace King first. Yeah, Soika's all in with the Ace King. And no him. help from the board until the river. Wow. He spikes a King for what well, looks like a very healthy double up there. 1.5 million just in the whites alone. He's about seven reds, so 2.2 plus a whole bunch of blues. Maybe a 2.6 stack. Yeah, that's a very big pot there, Ketzer. 2.7, so we're looking at five and a half million chip pot. Yeah, I think Ketzer maybe could have been the chip leader had he won that one or certainly been there thereabouts with our big stack. Corchidian instead. Those guys probably have similar stacks wow. now with five or six million each. Look at this, we come back to our table and Hasbani was called and now finds the check on the board straightening five. Not sure about this bet from Di Nicola. Might just be content to check it back. One in. Wow, has Banny check ripping? Four on the board in a row. Just denying flush draws, I guess, but it's a bit dicey. We open up obviously our entire stack when our opponent has a straight. We don't allow him to bluff again. Oh, welcome to the table, Dinakala. You fold for five, six hands. You finally play one, you get check raised twice in the same hand. Yeah, a pretty big one there for Hasbani. He is in the ascendancy right now. And a good morning, quietly. We've obviously given all the love to Corchidian because he's been smashing and bashing his way to a huge stack. But actually, Hasbani. When been given the chance, he's playing a cameo role here. Start of the day with 2.2 .2 million, now up over five. Dean Nicola with the hand he wishes he had last hand. Absolutely. We've got all of those chips barring apparel. Musa just posturing here, using up a little bit of time. Is there a money jump at 12? I believe there is. There is, yeah. 5k. Panetti, rags, bin. And a defendable Queen 10 off here for Cordbin. Who asked for espresso? Mm. Mm. Just, just give it up. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. I'll take the espresso if it's gone. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Long day ahead. Get caffeinated. You're a coffee guy, James. I am very much. Fancy coffees? You like you like your. Um, I'm not like some sort of coffee snob, but I do you know, have my limits. Do you have a nice machine at home? I do. But I tend to just go out for my coffees. I like having a coffee and a walk along the beach. It is a lovely thing. Yeah, and that's. I just I feel like they taste better out of the. The sort of the, the plastic lid and you're walking <laughs> along the wind blowing through your hair. Well, I can get behind the wind blowing through my hair. I'm not sure about the plastic lid, but oh. yeah. <laughs> I'd say I, uh, I was more of a coffee snob, I guess, by virtue of the fact that I had a fancy machine and I used to grind my beans in the morning and got into that routine. Just enjoying the romance, the smells, watching the espresso, you know, gently come out. Sometimes frothing the milk if I wanted to have a milky coffee as well. But having um, 
welcomed my second child to the family. I have to say, time is a much more important commodity in my life these days. And I actually, alongside my fancy coffee machine, I have a Lavazza Sega, um, which is, which is <coughs> as pod machines go, is actually a pretty good one. But it is a pod machine with Lavazza pods, and I use that when I'm on, the, on the go. I swore I wouldn't be a pod machine guy, but do you know what? There's a time and a place, my friend. Something had to give this year. <laughs> There's a time and a place. Well, it's good coffee, too. Uh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's very good. It's none of that Nespresso muck. Yeah. It's proper, like. But it's just not quite the same romantic 10 minutes experience to make your single cup of coffee in the morning. Kaidian. Please. to lead. Sorry, pardon me. Follow up. On this Jack 3 deuce board. <laughs> I mean, unlikely paired. The three. Went from that seat. And a call from Hasbani. Makes life a bit difficult for Dina Cola here with this deuce. I wonder how keen he is to get involved now. He wisely folds. I thought maybe he's like looking at all these chips flying around this table very liberally, thinking, hey, a call here, try and spike and maybe win a big one. Interesting card for Hasbani. Picking up clubs, David. Yeah, Hasbani feeling like there's another path to victory here if he's not already good. But Korshidian doesn't strike me as the man who will slow down. This is a card you should slow down on. The obvious draws got there. Clubs got there. 4-5 got there. But <laughs> the obvious doesn't always occur to this man. He kind yeah. of rewrites the rules. And then Hasbani, with that in mind, probably has to play everything kind of defensively against yeah. a player this aggressively and finds a club on the river. And I wasn't sure if he was good in the turn and probably not sure if he's good in the river. <laughs> it's it switched around. Does Corchidian ever feel like he doesn't have enough showdown now with this three and turn his hand into a bluff going okay. big and representing a big club? No, he does not. Yeah. And has Benny relieved not to face a bet there? Happily to yeah, knuckle, knuckle back there, the, the seven of clubs. I'm with you. It would have been quite a nice spot for him to fire that bluff. Um, kind of four seconds his left opponent probably doesn't have a club. And you don't look. Okay, Probably so that club spot him on the turn when they check back. And Probably is line. limited to these so kind of the time is over. under pairs and maybe a jack. Okay. I'm just letting you know. To drift away from the poker for just a moment there, we were talking about broadcast of the year. I just want to give a shout out to my uh, co-commentator here, who, ever the profession, he smashed his knee off the desk rather viciously at the beginning of that hand. Cut his mic. I presumed I was going to have to take it from there for at least two or three minutes of, you know, lapping only waffle. But after about 45 seconds, bravely turns back on the mic. Actually did more of the heavy lifting in that hand. Ever the professional. It's these moments that <laughs> the jury... They just don't see it, They do don't they? see these moments. That's what it is. They, <coughs> they hear Ali Najad's word smithery. They see him acting the maggot, joking around at the end of a session with props, producing bananas, putting jumpers on his head. Just a couple of the things I've seen this weekend. But they don't see the moments where genuine physical injury is just pushed aside and professionalism takes over. I dot my cap to you, sir. So you don't get points for sort of cleaning your desk when you finish your session. I'm like, some people who are nominated for... <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but maybe maybe Ali and I should just be forced to share <laughs> the same space, and you can have the, the clean area that you tidy up. It's a problem when you're in the booth together. <laughs> Benetti, put one up here with the two sixes. Yeah, I actually got Ali with that yesterday. I don't. Know if you saw the end of the frame when he had his head up. He did it at the start of the frame as well, and I managed to trick him by sneaking around behind him. So when you took his head off and turned to me. I wasn't sat here anymore. <laughs> because I was stood to his right. But obviously he could still hear me in his headset. <laughs> Very much confused. How, how did you do that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you in a second. It's Very stealthy. Very stealthy. Is finally applying some pressure. <laughs> He's been itching to do this sort of stuff. Benetti opening off 27 blinds. Kind of hard to imagine him wanting to continue here, isn't it? Yeah, he's getting a good price. Um, De Nicola really coming for a small sizing here out of the small, but um, 
this particular hand is very hard to navigate for Panetti. Do you feel like there'd be a decent number of suited Ooh. Broadway kind of combos? Besides, for that price, it is okay to have a little look. That reason, do you perhaps like slightly larger from Dina Color? I understand the si sizing down against 27 big blind stack, but. I do prefer a larger size against range. Um, I wondered whether they would get the job done against these sixes, which are harder to play than, say, a hand like Queen Jack suited. But to the flop we go. Ooh, great flop for Dina Cola. Must feel like he has the best hand here, bar traps. And Panetti's going to feel pretty confident, confident about this board. <coughs> yeah, I think we're going to see a fairly small bet here from Dina Cola. Maybe something in the region of 350. And it's going to be very hard for Panetti not to stick around for at least one, if not two, streets here. Oh, even smaller again. Really milky. Mm -hmm. I like it. I guess with that smaller size in pre, does have all these sort of queen jacks, king jacks, king queen kind of hands that you want to target. Even some a size, perhaps, that, like ace jack of diamonds, ace jack of clubs. Oh, yeah. Find it hard. This hand fraught with danger now for Panetti. Obviously not going anywhere. Has that six of hearts in hand as well. Lots of safe ones here where... Oh, wow! Dina Cola will be delighted, but... Dina Cola, that is the death card. It looks like a safe one. Yeah, it looks like a great knees. card. And with only 2 million back, 1.7 in the pot, in this case, Dinicola's mm -hmm. just going to do it for him over two streets. I check my name. Well, barring one of the two tens in the deck coming out here on the river, I do not see an escape route for Dinicola. I think Panetti is quids in for this big, big double up. I love his uh, presence at the table during hands. He gives away nothing. We've seen it in every hand. He just He's very stoic. Just got to do a little bit of acting. One assumes calling no real reason to raise there is there, obviously. I oh, he has raised. Yeah, I'm a little surprised because he's in position. So right. out of position, I, I can understand a raise. But in position, I certainly would have expected him to just call again, keep in all the bluffs, and, and then hope some of those bluffs catch a piece. So for that reason, does Dina kind of think this just can't ever be value? Yeah, it feel, feels like hearts, doesn't it? Yeah. Or maybe a hand like eight that doesn't want to call another belt on the river and decides it makes it a million now. Goes all in, gets snapped, gets the bad news, he's got two outs. Oh. And yeah. Brutal. Reaction says it all. He knew he was a very good chance of getting all those chips if it hadn't come a six on the turn, as it is. He's a favourite to double his man up. Now, the dealers have been <laughs> ruthless with our short stacks. Not, Not this, this time. time. <laughs> <laughs> we doubled up. What an amazing situation for Corchidian now. Yeah. Nicola, body blow here, back to three million. Although I suppose flipping rolls maybe slightly. Panetti now up to around 5.5. .5. But I think, obviously, we haven't seen Panetti with a stack, but... We know Dina Cola is a, is a live one. Yeah. Makes it very hard. It's hard to imagine <laughs> Panetti's going to build that stack with the same vigor that Dina Cola does. So I'm with you. It's bad the chips move to our left, but a less volatile opponent. Oh, Dina Cola. Crestfallen. Yeah, he's, in one, he's one, though. It, go, it gets swingy for him. I'll pass you. As if it couldn't get better than the last couple of frames last night. What yeah, it's, it's building up already, isn't it? An engrossing morning of poker. These guys don't need to warm up. 
the start of a poker day. Found another playable one. Instantly using those chips. This time Panetti with the nine. It's like the third or fourth time we've only seen one of Panetti's cards. I think. Well, as well as he's doing at poker, yeah, perhaps yeah, he needs a little yeah. education in how mm -hmm. to place the cards, okay. David. Okay. Oh, put like me, like this. Very obvious. Okay. I didn't. You didn't start my time. King Jack off in the small. Is he going to go after his man? First opportunity. Here. Looks like it. Here we go. 850. He does. I love this. Just laying down the law. Look, Panetti, you doubled up last hand. You want to start raising under the gun? Well, it's not going to be easy. 4x. Targeting that. 57 big blind stack now. Musa just using up the maximum amount of time before folding. David, hard to imagine bar a nine. Is there any other card that here that we can continue with? Yeah, like, like the nine ten suiteds are pretty pure, but mm. it's a big bet. Yeah, I think this is job done here, Corchidian. Bulldozing. Yeah, I like it. Just set the pace as soon as Benetti opens off that fresh double up. I was thinking I open with nothing because I just mm -hmm. did take a big pot on. Why you uh, trip? I have very good cards. <laughs> 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 Me too. It's why I fall because I, I trust you once. Okay. <laughs> I trust but you. Don't do it again. Once. <laughs> or he will punish you. Not I trust you. Just I trust you once. Poker is very simple. You complicate it. You want a hand and uh, I have very good cards. I really. <laughs> It's true. Don't complicate it, David. Got very good cards you raise. That's Banny. He's smiling. Got a little fortunate with that A7 against the two jacks earlier. Has over six million in chips. Dina Colas, the other day as chip leader, has about half what he began the day with. Obviously very unlucky a moment ago against Panetti. He's holding that two out up. Okadian. <laughs> all smiles, all laughs, leading the way comfortably. Monstrous 12 million stack. Musa. Man on 18 blinds. Probably hoping the button had opened in this spot. It would have been a slam dunk jam. As it is, just going to have to jam from the small and hope to pick up far fewer chips than he would have done if they'd been an open. One is good. Maybe he was showing the four when he thought it. He showed the queen. I think if he showed the four, he might have been showed two fours. <laughs> yeah, and a cursory no, glance there at Musa's chip graph no. shows that he's basically been in a holding pattern no. with two million, getting a shove mm -hmm. through, a through each orbit. Nothing to do. Holding steady. If I limp, I Why do you like to take information? Is there a heavy information? Is is this information? <laughs> information is the most expensive thing, you know? Maybe, oh, they you to to your own Maybe they give it to you wrong I information. Said. If you ask him what you have, he may, he'll tell you you have others' cards. 
What, what information you take? You trust him? As Musa mentioned, it's about 30 minutes. It had to be 60 minutes today. We are on a one hour delay on the final day. He said, not that I heard bad. Musa now on the button. On open pop with 20 bigs. I imagine he's going to look to play this 7 8 off, is he, David? 20. No, I think you want to let this one go. Yeah, nice. It's tempting, though, isn't it? Obviously, on the button, those connectors. Mm -hmm. That's wisely get out of the way because Panetti was lurking behind with this King Queen offsuit. Yeah, definitely a raisable one, but also could be limped in. Yeah, as a player who covers behind, here's the two big stacks there. Spanny checking back the option with 10 5 off. Yeah, don't mind this. You keep in some stuff you dominate here. Panetti with gentle proceedings. Fire a little equity denier here, but you can also check it. Anna. Look at this. That's Banny the one reaching for chips. Representing here. Hard to represent an ace X, but you know, eight X and six X would certainly bet as well, so with diamonds. <laughs> Panetti with King Queen no diamond. Really hard for match to continue here, isn't it, with a nut no pair? It's like but like you have to, but there's so many bad cards for you on the turn, right? Yeah, and one would hope Hasbani would check back some ace-x hands, maybe like an ace-deuce or mm -hmm. an ace-six. That makes a lot of sense here if you want to just have some aces that allow you to represent boards like this. Yeah, I like that fold for Panetti. Just, it just gets too icky. And for that reason, do you like a tiny stab yourself yeah. maybe instead? I think I on that I kind of board too. texture where you just can't check cool. Yeah. Or very hard to check cool. I think having a little stab is perhaps better. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, too. his preference was checking and hoping it checked back behind. Hmm. Hope is not something you can rely on in poker. things up. King Queen off under the gun, certainly enough hand to be doing so with. Very bad start to the day for him. Obviously he had a decent actual start to the day in that when he came to our feature table he'd already picked up an additional million chips. Top of the 5.8 he bagged last night but hasn't gone so well here. No, and one wonders if he has the patience to navigate or will he really be looking to get involved a little more often than perhaps is always advisable in pursuit of those lost chips. Hmm. Matty again, the mystery hand. Again. It's like he's going to lock horns. 600. Dinicola. This is an interesting one because Dinicola's got... Exactly the kind of hand that doesn't want to fold. But also, it's sub premium. Snap folds. Now, back to the opener. Tabor, what are we feeling? Yeah, I would not be surprised to see a shove here with the King Queen. It's sort of the four bet candidate that you can go with light. And. Yeah, I just feel as though Di Nicola in no mood right now. Just going to make the call. Yep, keeping the dominated. Progress to a flop. Plays okay, King Queen. Sure. You know, flop a pair, you feel pretty good about life. Stack about ratio 1.5 to 1 now. Yeah. <coughs> hmm. 
Well, he's not going anywhere now, and we just don't know what Panetti's holding under there. Could it be Ace King? Could it be Aces? I am so pro. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> it must be in Cocadian. I think Musa chuckling to himself as he declared himself so pro. <laughs> I am so pro, as it is. <laughs> Panetti betting into Dina Cola. As expected on this King Nine Four board, or King Nine Five board, pardon me. Obviously, we can't see the cards, but <coughs> a little scary when it comes like King with a connected card all loosely here against the under the gun peeler. Sending it. No Chip. snap. Yeah, I, I kind of like this chip jam when you're doing the because he kind of looks a bit frustrated. Try and make sh tens, no, jacks, queens might just want to cycle. Diamond draws would call. Yeah, he's almost played it like a diamond draw, Di Nicola. Mm. Just have the back door. King high flush. And obviously draw. it's one of these. We check jams. Just hopes for no snap. Yeah. Oh, exactly. No snap. Now he knows he's good. And it does seem like he might be up against pocket jacks, mm. pocket 10, something like that. Because there's a category of hand... That's very easy to call within a category of hand. That's very easy to fold. And the ones you ask for the count and mull over are definitely those sorts of hands. The tens, the jacks, the queens. Try to ascertain how often it's a draw versus how often it is a king. But then he makes the fold. We'll never know. We will never know. Sometimes you have to live with mystery in this world. You often do at the poker table. Pedetti's best career score mm -hmm. coming at merit. Ah, oh, okay, okay. I appreciate it. Uh, in Poly Poker Millions okay. North Cyprus event back in 2021. Third in the 10k high roller for 173k. By far the best cash. He's had next best score being 23k cashing the I recent World Series Poker Europe so. main event championship. No, uh, uh, no he's seen. You fold? Big fold. Bro. <laughs> you, yeah. you jump, you jump, you jump from 10th floor, you don't fold this The time. man this is who won that high roller, <laughs> uh, probably Poker Millions Live, is really? still in this yeah, field, Mustafa no, Erkan. I don't know. <laughs> On the outer table. Both of them. For both players. Their career best scores. So here they are. Fond memories of each other. Not there yet, obviously, separate tables, but maybe they get to the final. Oh, <laughs> you again, my friend. <laughs> How are you? Favourite hand now, Corchidian. Suited variety this time. Twenty seconds on other side. <laughs> <laughs> Musa making it clear. He is going to use his time here on the ladder jump. Are you losing my life? Charlie, reasonable? Yeah. There was some pushback on people stalling in these situations and time cards being in play and players using them. And uh, there was an argument that they should be punished somehow for this, but the. I think you, you get these, you've got these time cards and they're yours to use as you see fit, in my opinion. Absolutely. It's part what's of the game. The difference with you? Pocket nine. Give me nine. Pocket nine. Okay. Yeah, but what's the difference with I you? I want to know what time he folded. <laughs> <laughs> information. You have a information. pen and what's paper? It's very, very important. important. Very very important. Very what's, yeah, what's different if he folded eight deuce or nine? <laughs> 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 Eight eight information or nine three. Info free free information. What suit? <laughs> what suit? What, you, what, you what, suit? what suit? What suit did you fold? Really? It depends. If no, it's no a bad for nine. For example, nine, uh, if nine of spades, you should not fold. He will never fold. If nine of spades, you should not fold. I don't think he will fold Jackson and show it. Uh, I don't think. <laughs> he will fold Jackson and show. It. He fold these junk hands. Free information. Use this information, what, 938, deuce, 10, 5, 
couple of hands left now in this frame. We're going to take a short break. 15, maybe. 18 minutes. You should show him. I But maybe, just maybe, we have time for another bust out. Oh, there's always time for a bust out. No, no, I understand you. You're right. You should see what he's folding. You're right. But if he's folding Jack Seven, not him or anyone, they will never show him, no? Because Jack Seven is not foldable hand. I call 100%. Jack Seven offsuit versus UTG. It's fold? It's a fold. Really? Yeah. Versus Chip Leader? <laughs> Against UTG's bad card offsuit. So I don't fold hands like Jack7, what are you talking about? What was Tragedy Talk going yeah, on for Final 13 and a tournament with 370k up top? Right? right. <coughs> yeah. 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 Well, not just Cortidian's favourite hand, Panetti gonna take a shot here and under the gun steal with the A6 out. For the fans. Looks like it okay. might be last hand of the oh. session. Oh, Musa. Tricky one to defend here. Ace 5 0 oh in the big blind. 18 bigs effective. But he is going to. It is short handed, remember. It's under the gun open. is actually really like a low jack open. Um, what a flop. Ace, six, four. Panetti smashing the moose. I'm more than happy with that development. Oh, no. I said there was time for one more bust out. <laughs> oh, no. Everyone assumes, though, he's going to play this one cautiously down the streets, having flopped that top pair against none of the gun open. Yeah, but he's also got back doors, and it's going to be very hard to not call at least twice. Still so feel like he's going to call here. That was the first time I think I've seen Panetti break character. He sort of came up out of his seat, looked at his opponent, and gave like a little sigh. One assumes Panetti's going to come with a bet that sets up a river shove. Probably needs to make it about 400k. Looks like he's chosen five. It's an interesting bet size actually because I guess if you feel like your opponent has a lot of turn calls and river folds right maybe you want to size up the turn that makes good sense actually because this is a spot where his opponent is going to struggle to find three street calls defending big blind well Musa joking about how he would take 20 seconds until the clock died down and making sure not to invest time banks. is actually investing time banks yeah. in a very real way now. And obviously, ironically, we are going on a break because either the rest of the players have left the table, so there is no clock to run down here. This is, of course, all genuine. Yeah, so difficult here when Panetti, very capable of just taking that second stab to blow his opponent off a six or a four, when in fact Moose is sitting there with the vulnerable ace that he's not loving right now. Two time banks expended. Yeah, and is the rainbow nature of the board? No Broadway cards there, leading him to believe Panetti here for this ace. If it was, say, the ten of spades in the turn, can he give him a lot more natural bluffs? Like, in his mind, he's thinking, well, this could be King Jack. Mm. And I have a lock on the hand. Right. I believe you this time. He says, I don't know why. Wow. What sounds a like a fold. What a read. You can't continue after saying that. Sick, sick read by Musa there. Phenomenal stuff. I'm strong, I'm strong. You will see, you will see. Well, well, well. What a nice hand to finish on. Musa, who's navigated this table very well, avoided one where a lot of other players may have busted. So, congratulations to him getting off this table, this feature table, as it were, with still 13 big blinds intact, David. Yeah, huge outcome for him there.
his spider senses were tingling and he trusted them and he was right no lie was told there obviously Panetti did have the goods that time and uh, yeah avoided disaster it must be said I'm going to jump in right away here and, and do something that I know James hates he hates when I do these naff outros I'm going to do it anyway sorry in advance we heard earlier the chip leader Court Chidian singing that famous Johnny Nash song I can see clearly now <laughs> One of the obstacles in his way was Christoforu. Well, he dispatched him uh, with the A6. We saw that. Uh, dispatched quite a few people, it's fair to say, Kirchenko. Also set packing. But the question remains, James Dempsey, nope. will it be a bright, 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 sunshiny day? We're going on break. See you in 15. <laughs> suddenly realise you have five seconds. It's a bit like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to being able to always glance up and realise. I think you can probably see it 10 there. seconds down. Looking at the, the line of it. But yeah, you're right. So in the one seat is... Mm. Has to lean forward to... Quite like, actually, again, not wanting to hark on, but... That Triton. Kind of introduced the a light strip in the table. Not see the time going down. Ooh. Fancy. So wherever you're sitting, you can see it's just a... LED strip in the middle of the table. It's ticking down. Panic as it gets near the bottom. I was going to say, it has a kind of a countdown clock. Five, then. All in. <laughs> Christopher Root. He'll be going all in with this, giving the opportunity. Oh, and dangerous one for Habib here with 14 bigs. This is borderline. This is probably a shove to be honest and if he can somehow find a non-shove <laughs> and save his tournament he will be very fortunate because i think i probably just send this one particularly against christopher who i think maybe opens lighter than most from the cutoff seems like there would be even more reason to get it in here we are looking at yeah the uh, entirely reasonable it. david you called it and i think we've seen christopher just Three bit fold instantly before. It's not like if you haven't played with him before, you can tell he's obviously not a nit. Certainly not. <laughs> Little stretch. I don't know what happens to nits when they turn up in the side. They just, they just get sent back at the airport because we never see any. Okay, Happy picks up a little equity in the form of that 10 8 7 board. 9 or 6 would keep him alive. There's the nine. Wow. Now, of course, there are opportunities for a chop. Christopher Root. 
Both in for a jack or a six. Oh, he finds oh the jack. Goodness me. Oh. <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster there for both <laughs> players. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I Ladies for Korshijin. Yeah, the man with all the chips on this table. <coughs> but only a sort of one and a half times average stack for him. Yeah, Not as you said, that. really interesting stack distributions here on the final day. Nobody with a really big stack. We, we have seen, obviously, the, the Western particularly big couple of stacks at this stage. I think already maybe did... The Dark Knight. No, it wasn't Dark Knight. Dark King. Dark, dark King, King, yeah. I the Dark King had like 12 dark, million already. The Dark Knight is, you know. That's a cool one too, though. Yeah. I being called the Dark Knight. Could we going to upgrade him? Can you upgrade from... No. It's uh, more of a downgrade from King downgrade, to Knight, but... Downgrade really. It really sounds cooler cool. because of recent cultural developments. Oh, and trouble here for Panetti, considering a Queen X. Likely to be something like Queen Jack suited, King Jack's, or King Queen suited, I should say. <laughs> yeah, it's unlikely to be King Very Jack suited. Very unlikely to be King Jack suited here. <laughs> but yeah. He, he oh no. And I just mentioned how quiet he has been, but now has found a oh, dreamy spot he doesn't realize is in fact a nightmare. Yeah. A cruel one, for sure. Just 15 blinds, a raise and an open in front. No way we can do anything but go with this. Looking up at the clock, 22 remain. The next page up comes at 21. So I like if he burns a little bit of time here. And then when he eventually makes the move, maybe leave a chip back to buy himself another 30 seconds. Perhaps scan around the room, see what's going on as well. That's what he's doing. He's just kind of looking out of the left there, back onto the tournament floor. There are two tables there within short distance. hate to be a little nitpicky with you, James. Go on. Would you not make the raise holding the chip back and not burn a time bank first and then burn them later? Because maybe well, it gets through and you think, need to I burn a time bank at all. I think he's burning one here and in posturing as like, I've got a tough decision. This one's like, one the, of those ones. This one's like the, I'm not sure what to do with this hand. Should I jam with it? And but yes, you're, you're right. Well, he took your advice in the end. Did posture. Snap, show from Corchidian, and not a snap <laughs> fold from Panetti. So now thinking maybe an ace queen is in there. Maybe an ace queen suited decided to take the flatting, mm. more passive line, and now is wondering if they could ever be in good shape. I think I have 30 seconds. Yeah, he's just helping his man out. He just said, I have such a sick hand. I think it is ace queen. I think he said, I've just got 30 seconds. He's oh, just, he's sorry. Just it's a very big fold, okay? But he has. All right then. What you have? I block. You block me? Yeah. Ace queen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. You're right. Pretty reasonable line. Flat the ace queen. And then obviously surrender to this much action. Yeah, I'm obviously would have called against Tulip Bergenoff, but Brookordian <sighs> ripped it in and an ace 10 three flop. Obviously would have affected the folded hand as it is. No change here. Of course, I can't call him, but he's in. I, I never can call. Jack Queen. He's the seven of diamonds roll off. Just has to fade one more card. Let's get himself up to the six million plus mark. 
That's what he's going to do, David. Tulip Perganoff out in 22nd. The last man picking up $13,730. Yeah, absolutely nothing he could have done there. A strategy of us. But yeah, I don't know. That just felt like a... Well, I'm happy to get in against the short guy. And actually, there's enough of stack here that I can raise. And if Quartidian was to make it 500k, I can stick it all in over the top of that. Hmm. Well, Habib now with a must-shove 12 big blind spot on the button. Yeah, next pay jump coming at 18. So it still makes sense maybe to take a bit of time here and leave a chip back. Mm -hmm. See if he decides to do that or... Whether he will just rip. Yes. Now it's all going to get snapped off by Kukordian in the small blind. Oh no. Oh, oh that's, not, that's not terrible news. Yeah. Do it, Mene. No, no. The snap there perhaps designed to make Musa potentially fold slightly better because it looks so strong. Yeah. So obviously, Kukordian, confident that Habib would have been in there with some weaker kings, maybe even a yeah. 10 jack. Oh, for sure. I think he's uh, handy, wants to play. With the 11 blinds, 12 blinds even. He sent one packing already today. Can he send Habib on that man's heels? Well, wow. he hasn't hit, but he likes Big the flop. Club. Yeah, equities have remained world. virtually static here. <laughs> and people <laughs> talking to the dealer saying, what is this flop? <laughs> what are you doing to me? Why are you putting me through this? Great turn card for him, of course. I can keep feeling out that one, though, not so much. Habib, the latest out. Accordion, striking gold. I can see clearly now the rain is gone, says Corchidian in song. All in, all in. As the river card was being dealt, <laughs> supreme. Joking aside, it is a. Lovely feature of the final tables here that we take that little break, we set up the stage. The share hand guys usually create some really fun graphics as well. The players' profiles displayed on the screen behind. The bombastic Milbutas. <laughs> You look like Pocahontas. With a uh, <laughs> generous introduction for each player. I just, I, I feel like he can go on the road with it. I don't think there's any poker stop that does it quite like Merritt. Could yeah, he's our own Bruce Buffer. Yeah, but even then when they, when they yeah, yeah, they can hype up a tournament, but hype up a final table, no one does it better. This man needs no hyping up. Get, he's got jacks and a big stack. He's hoping for... One of these shorter stacks to perhaps perceive what is quite correctly a, a wider range than most. And Kirichenko, here we go. Here's an example of one who could certainly do this. And we've shown this man willingness to bust out. He definitely plays with his heart on his sleeve. And you've got fourth in the high roll this time. Second in that same event last time out. I'd be surprised, David, if we don't see him take the spot. He rarely shies away. And he has... Announced all in. 17 blinds. Completely reasonable against this hijack open. But what a dream start for Korshidian here. Snaps it off. Kirichenko now 29% only to stay in this tournament. Are we about to go to 16? Is Korshidian about to become the prohibitive chip leader of this tournament? It feels destiny like night. Isn't it? If he keeps running like this, board's coming out clean. Getting there when he needs to. Certainly could be Kirichenko reduced to just three. Uh, That's not it. GG's Kirichenko. Shout out to him for pulling up. Audacious bluff on the pure bubble yesterday. Ripped it in for 1.2 times pot. We just Queen High. Oh, we have a bust out. Out on the floor as well. What is happening like this morning? Clement Bonan holding ace 10. And then Ketzer getting there with ace three. 340k is 
an awful lot more bananas and pineapple. You can't shame me for eating fruit. It's usually cookies I bring back there, so. I'm very impressed by your choice to spend that eight minute break gathering some fruits. Nine point seven million now for Corchidian. Another openable one. He's just relentless right now. Dealer being very generous with the Queens and Jacks and <laughs> Jacks again, but like well, she was about to lose her patience with the clock there. That's Banny. No interest in playing back with this ace three suited. Didn't even cross his mind. Christopher Root in the big blind. King Queen off. Interesting spot again, David. Mm -hmm. Does decide just to rifle it in. Yeah. Not surprising from this seat that we see this maneuver. No, and 16 and a half bigs, I think probably way too many for Cortidian here. He's finally going to have to so let I one go. You stop the clock, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's familiar with myself. Of course, he's facing a bet. If he asks how much the bet is, the clock has to be stopped, give him the time. Yep, hoping for a slow count here. Yeah. I know I'm ahead. He's right. Big time. He's right. Yeah. I know what you're shoving with, I know. But I'm afraid I will lose. You know, how much? Wow. A perfect handle mm -hmm. on the situation, Cortidian. Surely not. Like Nostradamus today. Yeah. And an opportunity to knock out a very dangerous opponent if indeed he's right. And welcome back for the fourth and final day of the Merit Poker Western Series main event. A main event which is certainly one for the ages. Ali Najad alongside David Lappin tagging in for James Dempsey. Our colleague Andrew Headley of course meeting his maker in 30th place yesterday. Not a part of these fourth and final day festivities. Festivities which came to an abrupt end for many already here in the first frame, David. Yeah, it's been uh, a fair rate of attrition already here. Ali Kirichenko fallen by the wayside. Christoforu, both at the hands of that man. It's all about that man at the moment. Korchidian, he has been an absolute wrecking ball. 5 million all the way up to 11.5, maybe even 12 million now. T. Nicola, well, he started with 5 million earlier in the day and he's on the way down the chip counts, down to 3 million, of course, after that huge clash, that very fortuitous moment, of course, for Panetti, who managed to turn the set when Di Nicola had flopped top pair. And uh, that is the reason um, Di Nicola finds himself now back in the pack. We're going to take a look at the new feature table now, uh, featuring Philippe Ketzer at the top. Uh, of course, a hand we went over to during the last frame, Ali Ketzer was all in for around about a six million pot. Had that one gone his way, He'd be sitting with 14 million right now, still clearly in a great spot. Though. So pivotal. And a flag that isn't flown all that often, just given geographics, you know, Brazil, we know there's plenty of talent when it comes to uh, poker out that way in South America, one of those burgeoning markets. But unlike the Chinese delegation yet to really field, um, uh, you know, a large side here at Merit. But I'm sure eventually, as Felipe and the like come and get their taste of what's going on over here, the journey will be more and more justified as you see Jugralin and his talents taking a pass on this particular pot. Jugralin held the overall chip lead for quite some time during yesterday's play. He's been incredibly impressive on the occasions in which we have observed his procedures, the Kazakh National. Certainly a regular here as we see Jehan Erjan. Uh, Mustafa Erjan rather. Tezjan, the man I'm Confusing him with from earlier actions. Raise and take it for Mustafa. Yeah, and interestingly, Bo Elise finds himself on the short stack now. You're right, he was right there at the top. 
for a good deal of yesterday. In fact, I think he had a pretty good stack coming into today, or at least he did going into the last frame last night. That's when I um, bowed out, obviously, and uh, wouldn't have followed it to the letter. But, yeah, he's obviously had a great run in this tournament so far. Well, I spent the bulk of the time after yesterday's stream completed just <laughs> trying to absorb what had gone on on the day, and I turned to James Dempsey, both on air and afterward, and I stand behind it. In the 20-plus years that I've been doing poker commentary, day three was perhaps the most absurd collection of hands. And I say that not in a sense of criticism, but just the insane parlay of things that needed to happen exactly as they did to create <coughs> such memorable encounters. And obviously, for those that are still with us here on fourth, the fourth and final day, a little bit more memorable than for those who were dispatched by virtue of some of those collisions. Of course, Matthew Davenport coming to mind really just uh, deserved better when making a heroic call with King Jack High and Incidental 3 on the river losing to King 3, which was air up until that point, as oh we yeah. observe Ilhar Soika from the small blind. He says, let's play for all of it against the man from the Italian delegation, Boelis, who held the chip lead himself for a good bit of his time at feature tables earlier on. Yeah, I will admit to not watching the entire frame with you and James last night, but I did tune in to the very end, and it seemed like a rather PTSD Alina Jad in the oh seat yeah. that I find myself right now. Oh, uh, yeah. Hunkered down. I think maybe your suit was on top of your head. I, I was terrified at what the deck... It's so funny because James had this cavalier notion that with three or four hands left on the night, surely we can simply exhale. Players <laughs> will be seeking a bag and they will not be looking for violence. But the deck absolutely stayed true to form. And it was so insane. I'm no astrological <laughs> aficionado, but I turned to James and said, is there a full moon? Because I've heard whispers of the inexplicable being attributed to, you know, lunar cycles at times. It was, uh, <laughs> the werewolves were out, that's for sure. As everybody is out so far in this one, around a Soika on the button this time. Obviously, accomplished merit regular is Soika. beyond these borders as well. Belarusian from Minsk, 3.6 million plus in career tournament earnings, obviously understands what it takes to make a deep run. And actually his last recorded cash was a win during the Gangster Series last year from right here at Merit. King 7-4 board as Mohamed Mokrani defends with the ace three. Heart ace is working. Does have the best hand, but of course checks it over <laughs> with the flow of play to the larger stack of Soika. Yeah, I'd expect Soika to fire a small continuation bet on the King 7 4 here. And I would expect McCranny to include the Ace 3 with the Ace of Hearts crucial card, as you said there, Ali, um, as part of his minimum defense frequency. There are lots of good turn cards for him, obviously, also drawing to a wheel. <laughs> And also, maybe the most importantly of all, Ace High can be good right now. He will tear one off for the extra 175,000. You see him dart a glance over at Soika as he picks up not only that nut flush draw, but a two-way straight draw as well. Deucer or six would do the trick. Yeah, basically the nut card in the deck for Mokrani here. Second check in front of this. <laughs> future lacking Jack-9, which does check back. Board pairs, and that's actually good texture for Makrani if we're not going to improve. Doesn't complicate matters. What I quite like here as a line is checking because our ace high can be good, but if our opponent does bet, we can use this hand as a bluff candidate and go for the check raise. That seems to me maybe the coolest way to use this hand. Well, part one of your desires was the only part that was supplied there as Soika with the check back and <coughs> Kroni able to take a bite. <coughs> yeah, we'll never know if part two was on his mind. Mm. 
I hope it was, one though. Eight, five, one, one eight to twenty-five. Thank you, Michael. Well, Ronnie, by the way, according to producer Neil Butas, a MTT <coughs> reg who frequently comes out to the Merit Festivals, but I confess I hadn't really had or five million at nearly as sorry. much of an opportunity to observe <coughs> his procedures oh. prior to this particular festival as I have during this one, where he's <coughs> spent a lot more time at the feature. Yeah, same. Relatively new player to me as well, but clearly not new to the felt. Not at all. Ketzer, Jack-10 offsuit, will open 1.8 million roughly in career tournament earnings for him. Over $300,000, his career best cash. That coming back in May of last year in the 25K EPT high roller. So again, we find players who <coughs> enter events far larger than a $3,300 main Working their way down here, obviously a testament to how worthwhile visits to the Merit Complex in pursuit of tournament poker can be. That's the raise to 250,000, thought over by Barca. I like this fold from Barca. And what I will say about Ketzer from everything we've seen on stream, he really does push the action. We saw an ambitious four bet with Queen Jack O yesterday. We've seen him open probably the widest range, maybe any player, certainly one of the widest, um, definitely looks to push the action and will be eyeing up a period such as this, a high ICM situation as we have here with 13 left, to lean on all these small to middly stacks, put maximum pressure on them, try and win some cheap chips as we inch toward the final table which I for one can't wait for obviously the bombastic Milbutas intros the music oh, you the know. fabulous graphics supplied by Sharehand the pageantry Ali we're here for it Makrani is suited king on the button obviously a candidate Blinds are 50 and 125,000 with 125k big blind ante. It's simple math, but worthy of note, the 300,000 in orbit cost of spectating here, which adds up quickly. And as such, further encourages opens in late position in an effort to steal an orbit's worth of tokens from broader and broader ranges as the situation becomes more and more desperate for the shorter stacks. Jagralin, king four, laying it down. It's such a stacked tournament now. There's just not too many players playing short. Obviously, on the other table, when we left it, Musa sitting around two million, Cordbin three million, Dina Cola back down to three million. But remember, three million right now is still. 24 big blinds on this table. Well, Boelis is short with 1.9. Maybe the only actually short player in the tournament. Well, we find players on their feet here and a wrap of the table. It appeared to be Hadi Hordbin. Not sure whether or not he was involved, but Pocket Queens may very well. Yeah, Musa getting the double up there, I think. Yeah, contributed to the continued journey for Basel Musa. He had two million roughly walking away from the table, presuming that there were no other skirmishes in the first five or seven minutes of the frame. I'd say he's up to around four million now. Being told it was actually Hadi Hord Bean who doubled up with ace three through Jack Jack. Not right? No, no, no. It's Hadi Corbin with Queen Queen doubling up through the Ace Ten of Basel Musa. <coughs> <coughs> Meanwhile.
Meanwhile, Boelis, East 9. Obviously, things continuing to grow more and more tense, not at all in small part due to the $342,000 first place prize, which is so far from the current $25,000 or $20,400 payout with 13 left. The pay jump of 5K obviously also contributing to the tension. As 12th will pick up that 25K. Yeah, far from insignificant ladders now. <coughs> Aces for Barca. Can't come at a better time considering he's hovering down there in that 20-ish big blind stacked up. He's open. You see Erjan taking a peek with the suited one gapper. While he mulls over this, I will issue a correction. It was Musa who held the ace 10. So he's actually been crippled here very short now on the outer table. Yeah. It was the Initially, other way around. Initially, yeah, we thought it was Musa doubling through Hadi, but as we saw that, not the case. We wish Basil luck now as he probably needs to get it in a few times to get back into this from a very short stack now. Good flop for Barca. Plenty of hands he can target. King 6-10. Two diamonds. Got shot straight draw for Ketzer. Two of them both checking <laughs> over. And we're back over to Basil Musa who looks like perhaps... He's got the rest of his chips in here with Jack Six. Flopped a pair against King Eight. Yeah, at 50. Doubles up. As he turned the jack for Jack's up. Caught a quick glimpse of that. Christopher Panetti, the victim. Back over now to the feature where we cut away briefly. Half a million, the follow through sizing. Out of Barca. This is kind of a no funny business from this point forward bet. Yeah, and we'll get the job done here. Ketzer, not enough hand. Jack nine, gutter ball in the muck. Always a little bit disappointed not to pick <laughs> up a bit more with those aces, but he did get calls out of both blinds pre as opposed to just raising and taking it. So I suppose there's that. Step away from the poker for just a moment here. Sure, I'm obviously sure. sitting next to a GPI award nominated broadcaster here. And I, I, I pay tribute in the last frame to James Dempsey, another excellent broadcaster who smashed his knee into the desk, cut his mic for about 10 seconds and then soldiered on, actually covered more of the hand than I did from that point on. And it's moments like that, I said then, that really just, you know, professionalism stands out in a big way. Well, hang on a second. Big situation again for Basel who has been unraveling did double briefly moments ago here he is 9-5 appears to have been the customer and again chips heading his way resiliency and that pay jump not going to be realized by the field just yet if Basel Musa has anything to do with it King Deuce on that occasion was his holding on the king high flop, which stayed clean. 9-5 drew dead on the turn. Meanwhile, back over to the feature. We certainly will be toggling back and forth a reasonable amount. Just two tables do remain. Playing seven and six as it stands. Ketzer playing limp with the 10-5 off suit. Dominating Soika 7-5 <coughs> suited. <coughs>
favorable for Ketzer. Sure. Backdoor flush and straight draws to go with this top pair. Round the six, but not much to write home about here for Soika. Maybe he uses this one as a, a stab bluff. Yeah. Looks like he agrees. <coughs> There's the barrel. I presume Ketzer won't want to bl bloat this one. If you do go for a raise in this spot, you sort of represent <coughs> stronger than you have when you actually have somewhat strength. It's a bit weird. Much prefer this check call line. You're content to just take the passive approach out of position without much kit. 625,000 in the middle now. Second check from Ketzer. And let's see if it's one and done for Soika. Yeah, I would be surprised if Soika's plan here wasn't to only barrel on cards which picked him up some equity. <coughs> Two options now for Ketzer. A block here that targets a six. Or a check call. Third and final check. Second over card to the 10 rolling off. Clubs did get completed. So I could just waving the white flag. And I think that's something that's important to have in your arsenal. Sometimes we get really tempted to win each and every pot. We go hard. And, you know, it is admirable. And players such as that definitely, you know, uh, I think earn folds, uh, maybe even reluctance from other players to get after them because they know they're a bit of a wet blanket, but you just minimize the losses, maximize the profits and the gains, and find your way close to the summit here in a day four main. Speaking of the summit, so I waxed lyrical there a moment ago about the uh, excellence in broadcasting mm -hmm. displayed by our co-commentator James Dempsey. Well, Unbeknownst to everybody at home, just a moment ago, extraordinary moment of precision, accuracy by Ali Najad. Not while calling cards. No, no word smithery was this, but rather the demise of a small insect in the booth here. Yeah, I, I have a particular disdain for what appears to be a sort of a generational flock of mosquitoes that pay us visits in the booth each and every one of these stops and <laughs> I am doing my best to really end that rain. These are the moments that the jury are unaware of when selecting broadcaster <laughs> of the year. <laughs> I'm keeping your supple Caucasian dermis safe <laughs> and insect bite free here, David. It is the Lord's work I do. <laughs> Maybe a bit of grandiosity there as the 10 9 suited. Also behaving in less than humble fashion and uh, humbling Jack High flop here as Ketzer's ace queen on the button. Rakan pairs his nine. Yeah, he sure does. Felipe did check back, unimproved on this turn, and downed by that innocent-looking nine of diamonds, which has taken no interest in further betting. Ketzer might get the sense that ace-queen is good. He could maybe even <coughs> probe for value, but instead he goes meaty. Three-quarter pot, and this is a kind of card that the flat caller on the button, in position, checking both streets, and then suddenly activating, you know, uh, with the king showing up. He could have it, but look at Erjan sniffing it out. Disappointing, of course, for Ketzer. Yeah, that bet very much designed to fold out pocket pairs. I guess a similar sort of holding there for Erjan, but 
Sticky, sticky against his wily foe there. Indeed. <coughs> Will you write a speech to have in the uh, back <coughs> pocket <coughs> for the big night in uh, February? You know, it's funny because it feels unsavory. <laughs> you know what I mean? To do something like that presumptuous, you know, especially given everybody in the category is somebody who I work with. Kilbane on the Triton Poker Tour has obviously come into his own in the last couple of years, done tremendous amount to further his career, and really many have taken notice. You have Jeff Platt, who is effectively the Craig Sager of poker, what with the sartorial jackets that he dons. <laughs> <laughs> on camera, Craig Sager, a very famous NBA sideline correspondent who is no longer with us but was very well known for that. We tease Jeff. He's been also christened the Reaper by yours truly because everyone, it seems, that he chooses to interview shortly thereafter ends up busting no matter at what point in a tournament it is. But consummate professional. And then, of course, who can overlook Nick Shulman, a man who I'm partnered with infrequently but delightfully during the... World Series of Poker main event in particular. So stiff competition. I mean, I think you're almost better served not to write the speech because chances are any of them could hoist the trophy in the end. As we see, Ketz are hoisting 250,000 and then depositing it forward out of the cutoff with an ace four, which Soika has chosen to flat from the button with the suited one gapper. And now Boelis, the temptations of perhaps squeezable scenarios with this King-10 not going to get the best of him. Mokrani out of the way as well, so table for two. What do you think? Are you a speech writing kind of guy when you're nominated, Lappin, or do you just wing it? I write notes. Uh, a hedge. All the time. A I'm hedge. Not, I'm just constantly r scribbling down things. So, yeah, no, I would, have, I would have the speech ready just in case. But not like something full, you know, just little bullet points. Things you want to make sure no, you mention. Nothing sincere, just piss taking. <laughs> like I no love that. Absolutely no attempt to give my honest feelings or even reveal any of my true self I think in a moment like that. A <laughs> full on roasting of the losers would yes. even be. Actually, I really like the sound worthwhile, of that. Worthwhile, yeah. Backdoor clubs and a gut shot straight draw here on the Queen 7 6 rainbow flop for Soika. And with the opportunity granted by Ketzer's post flop check, he decides not quite to pounce. Certainly paw at this pot. And yeah. does so fruitfully, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned there, uh, Jeff Platt being the Grim Reaper. Uh, very noteworthy that the only person who ducked and dived an interview from him was Dan Weinman. Is this true? It's actually a true fact. And, and multiple uh, efforts, I presume, were made by Jeff to interview Dan en route to the World Series of Poker Main Event Championship last year. The victory for Dan. Absolutely, and on moments such as that, <coughs> Sean Deeb was muscle and was like keeping him away, entourage style. That is fantastic. It is good to have someone in your corner in a situation like that. I mean, your star continues to rise, as does your net worth. The deeper <laughs> you go, I mean, you need some security detail as... Basil Musastak has been fairly insecure. Again, he finds himself on his feet. Outer table action, pocket threes <laughs> against ace deuce. And he is held on once more. The resiliency. <laughs> it's starting to get old, by the way, for everybody else at that table. You're busting one player, man, on the, on the page jump. What are you doing? What do you read? Anyway, thank you. What you have? I have the nine. Call 25. Yes, the nine. Look at the Nicola pleading with everyone to just employ a bit of implicit collusion and not try to isolate. As we get back over to a Boelis all in on the button, suited connector, and a dominant A6 here for Barca. Will he don the sheriff's badge? This is a lot of his 2.6 back. He will assume that he's ahead of a decent chunk of this range, but A6 is just such a wickedly horrible hand to call with. Obviously, we saw the ascendant Corchidian treat A6 like it was the nuts earlier on. Indeed, it prevailed on that instance against Christoforu, but it's very hard to be the sheriff 
with such a little kit. No disagreement here. And yes, a couple of days ago, at the risk of being indulgent in hyperbole, I did dub this Western series the series of the comeback. We'd seen such incredible comebacks in both the warm-up and high roller events. And maybe, just maybe, Basil Musa weaving the prologue, at least, to a comeback tale. I mean, so far we've watched him double three times in one orbit. Surely he's got a serviceable stack. Still work to be done, without question. And as you pointed out, David, we got to 13 players in a hurry. Kind of an unexpected clip. But courtesy of the fact that a lot of the short stacks were busting, as we see Air John King, Jack opening, Ketzer mulling the pocket fours directly behind. The consolidation puts it into the bin, by the way. The consolidation of those short stacks into the remaining field does just bolster all of their coffers and leave us with a more than average level of deep stacks at this particular stage. Yeah, we've asked a lot of our dealers when it came to supplying these coolers at these new deeper stack depths. They are really going to have to don the Grim Reaper's outfit if they want to continue the attrition at the rate we've seen. Well, that lane is, of course, occupied, as we know, by Mr. Platt, but <laughs> they can make a bid. <laughs> so we see Jugralin and Mokrani both joining the party, and it is an eight high straight. No waiting for Mokrani. Unfortunately for him, of course, not a lot on the stove top other than the backdoor club and two over aspirations for the remains of the field and you see air john's under the gun ray's not followed up on can he ever find a check here decide to himself his opponents probably have broadway kind of stuff or does he go for the really small bet and try and just get some chips into this pot i don't know how small it is and <coughs> the 375 fired and you see air john Asking himself, how often do I get an overcall on the button from this part of the deck? I suppose it's a SETI board as well. We see McCranny obviously makes a straight, but it is a SETI sort of board for a, a button flatter. And there will also be suited stuff in there, so maybe the clubs have connected. Now, by SETI... Surely you aren't referring to the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Project, <laughs> but rather just a board that contains the sets. True story, by the way. I had a, a college buddy that <laughs> ended up working on that project, and oh I'm not wow. sure if it's still funded. But I... Uh, An actual X-Files. Kind of, yeah. Real life X-Files. I, I do feel compelled, though, to let everyone know that we did find extraterrestrial life, and much of it made its way into day three <laughs> so they can relax with the radio frequency beams into outer space it's it's all happening here in north cyprus fellas but i say that in, in cheeky manner by the way it wasn't pure mutant <laughs> behavior it was actually some pretty cool top shelf stuff that we got to witness I challenge people who've never been out here to come in to a merit cold turkey and try their hand at, at the regs here because they've got something for them. A7 suited. We'll pick up Barca's king queen on the button. Did you think maybe Barca would get ambitious and look to jam over the top of that? I did actually. You read That's my mind. Imagine. Not sure of the pay jump. Perhaps having something to do with the more conservative approach right now. Yeah, King Queen suited maybe rates to be a better flat here. King Queen O oh, I might have put into my light shoving range, and it's not even that light. Well 
nothing for the King Queen here. Top pair for Boelis, bottom pair for Erkan with just that little back up, the back door flush draw. So Barca obviously well served not to have got himself in what would have been deep trouble drawing dead against the A7 suited, provided that Boelis would have made the call, which is certainly not a given. But he is behind both deuces and aces as the round of checks brings the eight of clubs and Air John thinking about whether or not he can be first to speak here and rep the ace. Thinks better of it. Well, he's now with the arid texture. Willing to stab. Three and a quarter. Back over to Erichan. Which coincidentally is the name of the airport here in North Cyprus. ECN. Just about an hour and change from Istanbul. John did make the call, by the way, with these deuces, just keeping Boelis honest. Mm. And he's going to rip this A7 for the full one and a half million, David. Is this um, necessary? It's kind of mergy. Um, like, I wonder if it ever... Gets better to fold, ace nine. Well, it probably doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. I guess with the two and three on board, you can get called <laughs> by ace four, ace five, ace six. I'm trying to figure out that one. Not quite sure. Was a big bet. Yeah, I <coughs> confess to being a bit surprised by that choice. <laughs> Ali, you're obviously a resident of Las Vegas some of the year when you're not traveling. Yeah. Um, interested to know, apart from the time when I joyously remember you reading out my name as host of the GPI Global Poker Awards. Sure. Um, is that a, an event you've attended? On a couple of prior occasions, Obviously, I did the hosting. I attended it once as a nominee in Los Angeles, once at the Poker Go studio. Um, and so a total of four times, two as a host and two as uh, an attendee. But uh, none as a victor of any hardware. Is it a fun night? You know, I... Yeah, I mean, you certainly don't regret going because you have so many of the people who often you and I don't really have an opportunity to interact with as much as we'd like to. We feel as though we are because it's, you know, through the screen. Sure. But, uh, but just being there at uh, communal tables and having a laugh, seeing everyone dressed up as well. You know, we see everybody in sweats and hoodies and you know, <laughs> oftentimes not really in any sort of formal attire. And in that sense, yeah, it, it certainly is a good time out. I, I don't blame you for not having come all the way over from Malta when uh, the opportunity presented itself. But uh, if it ever does from closer by, certainly would encourage it. King 8 deuce, by the way, as the blinds square off. There, John was dominant. Now trails Ketzer's bottom pair as he checks and faces the two and a quarter, which should send him packing. Air John feels, you know, I don't want to make much of it just yet, but it feels like he's a bit frustrated, just a little. Looking out and seeing everybody else win a pot. When's my turn? Of course, as we observed yesterday, there's a deep lack of justice in <laughs> poker <laughs> that pays us frequent visits. So not exactly the <coughs> sandbox in which you want to be searching for.
justice. I was looking for a synonym for it, but really it's just the only way to describe it. <coughs> Equity? Egalitarianism <laughs> was the other, but that was just too... Too many syllables. Fairness, I guess. Yeah, fairness. Good. Mokrani, ace-jack, takes us up. Playable one for Jugralin. A fair one. Yeah. Now, it will be something of a fair fight if these guys make it to heads up here. Position plus... Oh, but they're not going to. Absolutely not. And the other thing about the eventual three bet that will be inbound from this big blind, if you're Mokrani, is... Being forced to question whether or not it's just the product of the Jugralin flat more than the actual holding, which as we can see is for sure One the more one. responsible element. Great point. 1.1. 1. 1. And there are the eyes of Makrani darting over to try to make that exact assessment. Is this funny business or is this the real deal yeah the other part of the equation here I imagine being mulled over by McCranny is big blind gets such a good price to just call and see a flop when they choose to three bet from that seat particularly attacking an early position open does lean towards legitimate strength and I think he makes an excellent decision in the end Reluctant, but appropriate. Worth noting, Basil Musa hasn't been all in for about six minutes. Yeah, that's a lifetime. Surely we'll be headed that way shortly now that you've said that. <laughs> and for your sake, I hope he doubles when we do. <laughs> do want to take a moment to acknowledge all of you who are joining us here. Some of you from the very onset of our coverage, which began on day two here at this Merit Poker Western Series main event. Final day coverage. Obviously, appreciate all of the support and encourage you to click the like button and the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss any of the broadcasts from here at the Merit Complex, which stand alone truly in terms of the nature of what you're able to observe versus any other stream, of which each and every year there seem to be more and more of, David, but not all created equal. No, not at all. Some are absolutely rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> not quite what I was getting at, but <laughs> I was just <laughs> suggesting the poker, the nature of what you see is different. <laughs> Gets her, though. Pocket kings, and on the topic of rubbish, two jacks can be described as exactly that in this situation. Little does Soika know it, though. Gets her with the covering stack. Let's see what Soika dials up. Surely a three bet, but to what amount? Nine fifty. Nine fifty. Nine fifty, and that is an amount he can step away from if Ketzer chooses to play this aggressively. But with position, certainly some opportunity for Felipe to play it as a trap. Obviously. We are wary of ace-high boards when we do, but options on the table, perhaps, David, to do something trappy, or we're always four-betting and ending it here? <laughs> options definitely on the table. Ketzer will be very aware that his image is loose and his <coughs> opening range is wide, and his opponent may be loose as well, and therefore he's better served flatting. But this does spell doom, I think. Um, the other side of that coin is Ketzer doesn't get as much credibility with a clicky four bet and I can't see Soika getting away from this particular villain. When a player like Ketzer actually has it, it's very, very difficult. This could be ace four, ace five, king, queen, even ace jack, ace ten, just 
using the blocker value, just pouncing upon perceived light ones here. Game meeting game. I don't see an escape hatch for Soika. Owen. And he does rip. This is exactly what Ketzer was hoping to hear. Double checks to make sure that the Cowboys are mounted up and demoralizing revelations for Soika. As those hooks have been lodged directly in the corner of his mouth as these kings are reeling him in for the time being in a massive 12 million chip pot where 774 provides little hope. Turn. Dims the lights even further. Can Soika find a jack? He can't. Okay, you're good. Okay. And so he secures the last of the 20,000 and change payouts as a 13th place finisher. As Ketzer catapulting his stack northbound. Mm -hmm. And in the process, the entire field oh, enjoying yeah. about a 5K pay jump as 12 remain. Yeah, gross one there for Soika. He was right middle of the pack of the 13 players left. I think he was in sixth or seventh position. So a bit of an ICM catastrophe as much as anything else. We coined Ketzer, the baby faced Le Chiffre yesterday. Oh my goodness me. Is the Bond villain not in the box seat now? 14 million of the 67 million in play. Yeah. He is the man to beat right now. He should be happy. And you know, those are the ones where you just... <laughs> Ketzer obviously not taking any personal pride necessarily. He just coolers the two Jackson for Soika. What is he supposed to do? Nothing at all. Show me somebody who doesn't go broke in some manner, whether it's preflop or post in that particular run out. As now Barca with a pocket pair of his own, hoping for a better outcome. Under the gun, two tens. Killed him uh, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take back your chip. <laughs> Same jacks that I had. Same color, you mean? Uh, 275k hmm? open cup flatted color, here yeah. by Air John's King no, no, no. Queen. Same jacks that uh, gave him the chip uh, now to. Takes the conservative approach and retains Mokrani, who takes the price with King 5. Fortunate not to have flopped a King as the real good fortune is Barca's here on this 10 high board where he's got top set and this pot by the throat. Yeah, almost too much hand. <coughs> Unblocking clubs, some texture there, not necessarily the type that he expects other than a flush draw would be involved all that often for Air John, but certainly a possibility for Makrani. So. Price being charged, 350,000. And Air John asking for a count as those chips were nestled behind the time clock. Yeah, very floatable one here for Air Khan. He has the king of clubs and he has backdoor Broadway as well. Gonna peel. Yeah, I like this on balance. Obviously we see it's a bit of a disaster for him in this instance, but I do think this is the correct call and wow. Action turn card. Yep. Hits the eight of clubs for the flush draw, and you see Barca jamming to protect himself against these club draws. Now Air John forced to ask for a count, getting two to one exactly by our math on a call here, and it would be very important for a king or a queen to be good for this to pencil out. <laughs> Yeah, if indeed he even is drawing to the nut flush here, you know, very possible that the ace of clubs could be in Barca's hand, putting him in even worse shape. I think you add all these factors up, no clean outs. You gotta let your hand go here if you're Urkan. Good decision. Yeah.
going to go one further here. Ali asked you guys to smash that subscribe and like button. If you really, really like what you see, you can head on over to the GPI Global yeah. Poker Awards website. Yeah. Not just to <laughs> cast yeah. your eyes over the nominees. When we play with LR on warm up, I ask but if Philippe also come. Mm -hmm. To find yourself the fans voting page where it's best live stream is a fan <laughs> voted award. <laughs> and it's, um, again, if you like what you see here, <laughs> you like what you hear, <laughs> we would massively appreciate <laughs> your vote. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe, but just I maybe, you, you can help us put this live stream on the map face. in a bigger yeah. way. Because we didn't play before. Yeah, I think, I think we didn't. Pardon the brief absence as uh, <coughs> I was moonlighting in my pest control duties here in the booth, which uh, really caused me to make some questionable decisions about standing on a rolling chair at one point in <coughs> the pursuit of delivering death to another one of these mosquitoes. Well, I'm the already booth. dealing with the one co-commentator who was recently concussed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really appreciate. That's true. Our own James Dempsey. With Bit of a scary skiing accident. He's a huge skiing buff. Travels regularly to the Alps. It should be said that each and every dollar he earns in the booth is spent on a piece somewhere. <laughs> he's always haggling. Whenever I catch him on a down moment, he's haggling with someone who owns a chalet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Basil Musa. Finds himself all in. Outer table action. Ace three. Up against Christoph Panetti, who's got pocket fours. And now the three no longer good for Basel as the board runs out. Seven, seven, six, five. Needs to find an ace. Instead, it's the nine. Could have counterfeited the fours with a double paired board as well, I suppose. But the run has come to an end. And the only silver lining, of course, that it happened on the back end of the Soika bust out, which means he will be securing the first of the 25K payouts here. Back over, meanwhile, to the feature where Demir Jugralin has ace-king up against queen-ten suited. Mokrani, understandably, is open from the button. Out of the big, noise will be made. Yeah, and he has a flattable one to a three bet here. I assume he raised there, or did he just limp in? I think graphically we suggest that he limped in, but I don't think that's right. If he did, I would be surprised by yeah, the sizing from Zagrelin. Um, unless Zagrelin thought he'd raised when he limped. Um, does look like a a single 100k and a single 25k chip out there. And that does make it a little bit more sensible that he would limp and then fall to a 6x rather than, say, a 4x. So, yeah, I think that's what's, what's happened. What do you have? Never mind. Okay. Queen 10. Hmm? Diamond. Queen 10. Honest exchange there between the boys. Pocket eights for Ketzer. Opens. <coughs> Arca, Jack 10 off suit against the min raise. Decides to play it as a flat. 
Yeah, speculating here. I guess feeling like Ketzer's under the gun opening range is the widest of anybody. Certainly would have that luxury with this massive stack. King high board, rainbow texture, follow through barrel. Jack High's hopes shriveling. How much? How's your yeah, set? it's akin to playing with fire here from Barca. Jack 10, <coughs> easily dominated <coughs> hand. Yes, I, I get well. that Ketzer is likely opening wider than most, but the flip side of that is he can apply all the ICM pressure on you post flop. Yeah, and point. look at this! No, no, not me. I absolutely didn't anticipate it, but you see what Barker's doing. He's combining the board texture where flats on the button against Ketzer in particular could very well contain some of the King Broadway combos and deciding that if Ketzer, who we know has a wide range with this big stack, doesn't connect with a King, he's forced to fold to this 600,000. There's a lot of thought going into this. Yeah, and there's no draws really, so he is just representing a King right now. Again, the problem is Ketzer is a sticky opponent. And he'll be thinking to himself, well, if you do have ace-king, surely you put it in pre. If you do have king-queen and king-jack and you find this raise, well, credit to you for that. But don't those hands also just flat a lot of the time and let me barrel off? He's deeply suspicious yeah. of this raise. Yeah. For exactly the reasons that you gave, by the way. David, would they not be more inclined to flat? As we see, Ketzer make the call. It goes check-check on the turn. Barca... Slowing down, backdoor hearts arrive, four does pair as well. And he does have that jack of hearts, which becomes relevant. I'm not sure, though, with this run out, whether or not Ketzer, who worthy of note does unblock hearts, is going to feel like folding if he checks and faces a bet, which he doesn't necessarily need to take that line, David. He could very well block bet into this two million. Instead, the check comes through, but it is cashed by Ketzer. Yeah, a bit of a slap in the face there for Barca, basically being told <coughs> who the sheriff is at this table. Sure. And boy, oh boy, do we have a front runner now. Obviously over there on the other table, Corchidian bossing it up. But these guys clear of each other now. Don't have to worry about each other. Can just get to work piling ICM pressure and every other sort of pressure onto their respective opponents. Maybe put off a clash until we do get to the final table. 11 left, you see there. Not far away from the final table. Barker with Queens. Can you get us closer? Certainly going to do his best to do so. <laughs> Two and a half. Two and a half. Two on the button. King 10 suited. Interests peaked and oh wait a minute. <laughs> Di Nicola on his feet at the outer table as we pop right back over. King Jack suited against Queen Six suited, both in clubs. And that is it. Hermano Di Nicola on the Ace Jack 5 10 3 board falls to Horchidian's King Jack of clubs. My, my. What is happening this morning here in the Merrick Crystal Cove? We looked away for just a moment and the flat is now being squeezed by the King Queen suited from the small blind for Erjan, who is in a bad way with one King busy and Queens for Barca, which we know are going to continue. Yeah, interesting one here. Barca doing his best to sell the, oh gosh, this is a tough one. But what's actually happened here is Erjan has priced himself in against the original opener. He's going to have to just call one million more, snaps it off, knows exactly what he was doing, treating this king-queen suited like a value hand, and 
Is it about to become final table, Ali? I mean, we have 10 left. Nine, we go to the final, and it certainly looks as though Erichon is not covered, but obviously would be left with very little. Flops himself the gutter and the backdoor spades on an ace-10-7 board. As you see, Adi Horbin front row seat to the festivities. Kill some outs. Yep. With the arrival of the diamonds, you see Barca just needs to fade the jack or the king. Non-diamond in nature, and he's done it. Running <laughs> aces. <laughs> Huge double there for Barca. They basically switch roles now. Erjan was the man with 5 million. Now he's the man with 2.5 million. Shortest stack in the tournament now, Erjan. <coughs> this is the most extraordinary morning of poker. You said last night was insane. Obviously, it was more down to the crazy hands and the sorts of setups you saw. Today, it's just been cruel, cold deck yeah. after cool, cruel deck. Yeah, it's a continuation of what really had its seeds planted from the onset of the day all the way through. I look back at the sheet that we fill out here in the booth where we take note of memorable hands. In each of the prior days before day three, we had three, maybe four hands that we had written down on the sheet. Yesterday, there were 14 or 15 hands, and ratings of 10 were assigned to half of them. I put 11 after one of mine. <laughs> Rightfully so, by the way. And you were big like little spinal tap joke there for everyone. Yeah, volume dial, remember it. <laughs> never easy, never easy. That flop, never easy. <laughs> I blocked king of clubs, so only one king. King of heart, help it. But Jack. Jack, Jack, Jack. Four outs on the river. Yeah. Two fifty. Onwards, re rage, Air John. Down to two point three, so I stand corrected. He actually had. 2.6-ish behind after making the call. So really, unless the queens were cooler, we weren't at risk of getting down to the final table. Flat by the A7 suited, A7 off suit now. Cozy in calling behind, as Jugralin has company. Company which coincidentally is interfering with itself on a king-queen nine board. Top pair for Jugralin. Round of checks, now the spade draw acquired on the turn. And you're growling plenty comfortable enough to fire. thousand sheds the first day seven now we wait upon the second <coughs> good fault my friend <laughs> again eight eight oh. sorry you check huh? <coughs> i will not try block you okay <coughs> but maybe maybe later maybe later well I we play on Five and five, with two tables remaining on the final table bubble. Felipe Ketzer, 98 big blinds, comfortably up top after Kings bested Jack's pre and led to Soika's demise. Basil Musa also a casualty during that last level. Short stack belonging to Erjan after he 
failed to take down the pocket queens of Sammy Barco, which currently sit in third. Mokrani in fourth. Yeah, Lines. incredible spot now for Ketzer. Yeah. 100 bigs at this stage of the tournament. My goodness. Lines are going up to 75, 150, mind you. Barca for the ride after the defense from the big blind, which turns into a pair of jacks. I'm just checking, I'm just looking. And he's in front of Demir. Checking over. Two 225k C bet from Jugralin. Ten of hearts obviously playing a role. Barca. Second pair, no heart, flats, pot up to one and a quarter million. Very dry deuce on the turn. And probably both players with enough show down here. No more money gets into that pot, and Barca dragging in another one. A little bit smaller than last time round, but all donations gratefully received. Count graph for Jugralin. Now for Barca in the face of an ace seven open on the button from Mokrani. His run good appears to have been activated. Yeah, what a difference a few moments can make. And a few premiums. Yeah. Don't leave that part out. <coughs> and Mokrani, well. Button open, small blind three bet, does have an ace, would be a little optimistic to go for this spot. Is gonna call though, wow. Pot brewing. Yeah, this is perhaps a bit ambitious, especially up against the covering stack of Barca who hasn't been out of line. This is a board where perhaps Mokrani is going to be able to spare himself further losses. We wait and see as we flip back over to the outer table. Final table bubble action as we touched on. Yes, yes the declaration there from Hadi Khordbin, who appears to have doubled up with ace three off suit against Nihad Khorchidian's pocket jacks on a board of ace deuce five, deuce eight. Yeah, that could have been it as well. We've had two bites at getting to this final table. 
Corchidian, obviously a monster stack over there, but he's been dented ever so slightly by that one. Barca obviously going to keep firing here. One presumes that's exactly what's happened as we rejoin the action. No, he actually did. He threw a little rope and, oh my God, and disastrous decision. Manages to hit the ace. This is so gross for Barca. Note that he does check, however, David, and that is fairly astutely recognizing that the kings do potentially have some problems in a spot such as this. Maybe pocket nines, pocket eights are a part of the equation. I'm sorry, actually. This was a float from McCranny. I'm, uh, we obviously cut to the other table there, but based on the size of the pot, some chips definitely went in on that Oh, flop. yeah. It okay. was raised, three-bet call, then a follow-through okay. from Barca, then the flat from McCrony, finds the ace. Wow. Goes check, check, and now with the second check in front of him, he's left wondering whether or not there isn't some value available. Yeah, some of the light three-bets will be the ace-fives, ace-threes, and he does <laughs> actually have his kicker playing against those. That's an interesting little point to consider. Then he would think that the good ace-x, the ones that do it for value, ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, would do their own dirty work here. Obviously, kings, queens, and jacks would also proceed that way, and that is one of the hands we see. He can definitely go for a little value here. Look at the way in which he does so. I, you know, I love that shot. It was just a ginger million. And you see Barca <laughs> keeping his man honest and just disgusted, understandably, by that outcome. And Mokrani, the beneficiary, is still recognizing that he got tremendously lucky in the damage, very evident, to Barca's stack. <laughs> yeah, hoping to see a 10-jack roll over there and not an A7 of all things. Mm. <coughs> to be fair, of course, Barca had Jack-9 against the pocket 10s, enjoyed mm -hmm. queens against mm -hmm. king-queen, so... Pretty game. Two for three. Uh -huh. King, king. Mm? Bad storm. Bad finish, king, king. Bad finish. suited now for Macrani. Newly minted seven and a half million and 300 of it being <coughs> deposited. Ace deuce of hearts. We know these are candidates, David. Sure are. Go Jack Jack ten open ender from Macrani as Rugalin played it passive. Quick check back. Dry turn. Yeah, obviously Macrani deciding that this is a board texture that will also hit his opponent and maybe facing two checks a delay C bet is more the order of the day. Very surprised to see him check again, but he does. So going going to go for a really, really advanced two checks and then bluff river line here, presumably. Okay. No. What? Just shut it all the way down. Knew he was never a winner at showdown and yet decided that as played, it would have been a bit too ambitious for him to try to win that one. And of course, David is befuddled by that. There's just so many king and queen highs that you need to fold out. I'm really surprised we didn't see a C bet. I'm really surprised we didn't see a turn bet. 
and I'm gobsmacked we didn't see a river bet there. Lester Grawlin is just pigeonholed as a <laughs> massive knit. I don't yeah. really understand that one. <laughs> and I think he's getting ribbed for his decision not to yeah. fire out a bet yeah, at I some point. <laughs> like a chip. <laughs> Perhaps. Sevens for Jugralin, the follow-up to the ace-deuce. Now ace-ten in the big blind for Ketzer. We await his sentiments. Content to play it as a flat. Thought grows to 800. 25,000, and it comes 664 with two diamonds. So an overpair for Jugralin. Nice texture. Does play it as a check back, though, David, and that allows a jack to roll off. Thankfully, another check in front of the sevens would be feeling for Jugralin. Does announce 250 now. We see a lot of these delayed C bets with hands that don't necessarily need to have the ace 10 beat. Certainly a, an en vogue sort of approach. <coughs> yeah, Mergy one here, obviously denying some equity, setting his own price in case he's up against a jack. Getting some value from an ace high. It's a multifunctional sort of bet. Well, Ketzer can't love that card either. Nor does yeah. Zugralen. And I can't imagine any more chips getting into this pot. Yeah, Ketzer did make that one call there just in case. And Zugralen recognizing that perhaps value is no longer available to the pocket sevens. Checks back. We'll be pleased to haul that one in. So having peaked at 16 million, Ketzer loses a couple of small ones there, back to 14 million. Still in an incredible spot in this tournament, sitting with maybe 22, 23% of the chips in play. Korchidian over on the outer table. We know has built up a big stack as well, sitting on around 11.5, 12 million when we last left him. Now we know he lost a little pot there a few moments ago. <coughs> so perhaps back around the 10 million zone. I'm only speculating here from eyeballing his stack when last we saw him. All in. And Hurricane just going to send it. 13 bigs, button. Two million in front of him. Oh, and this Two million. should be Two million. showdown here. Mokrani has a fairly easy decision. For 13 <laughs> big blinds, ace nine of hearts in the big. More than enough kit. Way more than enough. Unfortunately for Air John, you are right about that. There will be How much chops 20% of the time. There will be victories for Air John 20% of the time, but 60% of the time, Okrani will bring us to a final table here. Mm. Oh, wow, he really is mulling this one. <laughs> now, in the end, the call does get made begrudgingly, but he will be definitely pleased to learn that he has the dominant ace in this situation. You see the percentages, though, don't add up to 100, and that, of course, is due to the 15% of the time that they will chop. But on their feet they go when they're all in, as Mustafa Erjan has done. Up against the wall, nine in the window, disaster, but a monotone <laughs> board gives him all of the clubs. Table having a good chuckle. Can Air John find the club? Not yet, but he does find more outs as tens join the party. 
Come on, Bottle. Too many outs? 1.1 million in the middle. And the 10 comes in, giving Air John the jack high straight. And you see him sharing a little grin with Mokrani, who he takes this bite out of. <laughs> Very fortunate, David, to escape there. <coughs> Crazy hand. Final table <coughs> proving very elusive thus far here as on multiple occasions we've had all-ins and on each and every one of them the all-in has doubled. Right. Can that streak continue and if so for how long? That is the question. <coughs> Five K open from Ketzer as we see the luxuries of being the big stack on display, and look at Barca, gonna dig in with ten seven and is dominating here. <coughs> King five three Ketzer fortunate to hit his side card and jump into the lead. Not sure how interested Barca is going to be. <laughs> 250k ending the affair there as Barca check folds. Lighting. Nice amount of symmetry there at the table. Players equidistant. You want to be in the odd seats today, it looks like. <laughs> this reminds me of the color theory that James is always <laughs> trying to jam down <laughs> our throats. <laughs> it's not a thing, Dempsey. Why? Okay. Oh. okay, 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 no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. James has just WhatsApp me. It is a thing, he says. No, get out. <laughs> Good change. Good Cut change. it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hearts. Laying the trap, I think. Yeah, is this a lay? It is. Shoe growling with a suited king. These are the kinds of hands that do sometimes like to get more in the middle. And from the big blind, the declaration is made 500,000. And now Barker can certainly pounce if he chooses. Nicely done. Yeah. Limp jam. Take it down without any fanfare. A reminder, guys, ICM peaking around about now. Now on nine-handed, the absolute pinnacle of the 
pressure can be put upon shorter stacks here. Medium stacks also not loving life. Equity catastrophe. A real possibility as we see wow, what a big stack there from Ketzer. Fourteen and a half million, but we'll sit this one out. Mokrani then allowed to open. Yeah, I would expect Ketzer to get jiggy now over the course of the next 30 minutes or so that I think we have left at this level, maybe 40 minutes. If this can stay five-handed and five-handed for a while, it is to his advantage. Bar could be tempted here with a small pair. 21 bigs. Very close. 3.3 million behind. <coughs> oh, I didn't expect this. No, he plays it as a flat on the button, and now Air John wakes up in the big with pocket fives. Off of 3.8, could he want to play this as a squeeze? Yeah, he absolutely could. There's a lot out there. And yeah, there's the jam. Almost 4 million in total. And here's what could have happened. Barca, had you taken this reshove spot yourself, Urchan, no way he calls it off with right. fives. Mm -hmm. So you've had your pocket pinched there. If Barca gets aggressive, the fives are out, as you mentioned, and it's back over the king nine folds. But <coughs> consider that there is the final table bubble. When we consider that there's 342,000 and change up top. And, of course, a pay jump of over $9,000 just for sliding from 10th to 9th, David. These are the sorts of things which can adulterate what would be otherwise conventional wisdom or the type of logic that gets deployed in a more comfortable manner sure. beyond these stages. No pun intended. Yeah. What can feel like the lower variance route, putting fewer chips in the middle, flatting a situation that you could otherwise shove, is actually not the low variance play. Shoving and winning... <coughs> Right there and then, 85% of the time, whatever it will be, is actually the low variance route. Calling and then creating murky situations where you have to fold later on is actually the higher variance route. Something I think that is lost on some players who think that they're treading carefully yeah. in situations where they're actually treading more trepidatiously. Yeah, I, I like that you point that out because it's sort of isn't the natural thought on our minds, but it is absolutely the sage one as both blinds join Jugralin's King-10 open. Nobody connecting with the Ace-4-4 four four board, however. Yeah, I would anticipate a couple of checks and Zugralin can fire super small here. We'll presumably recognize that a 200k bet achieves a lot just clears out equity Shugralin <laughs> would appear to agree with two checks in front of him as he barrels into this million he barrels six in for 625 yeah, that's wow. meaty and I don't know that that six and a quarter accomplishes something that three and a quarter doesn't on a board texture such as this, David. Absolutely. Like, yes, an ace will be put under some pressure, but they would always have to call once. Oh, look at this. Kets are recognizing that that's a very fishy bet. And he's about to do something a little audacious. Yeah, I would take the over on a little audacious as punishment delivered to Jugralin 
And at a number that was larger than it needed to be, dare I say. Not to be overshadowed, though. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Felipe Ketzer. 7-5. <laughs> Dust. What a cool little spot there is the Brazilian. Flexing with the big stack. Yeah, and almost recognizing the doors being opened by the large bet that just a very minuscule click of that large bet represented super strength it actually looked like a four and we'll clear out all but the good ace x's or fours in that situation the fact that he was willing to raise over a larger bet gave even more credibility to his move and these guys would do well to pay attention should they all make the final table here at some point in the near future casting their eyes back over this stream seeing some of the moves Ketzer is capable of putting that into the memory banks because I suspect this man is going to bully not only this final table bubble, but the final table itself. I think the action is going to revolve around him. As he looks to build upon this chip lead, creep towards the 20 million no. mark, perhaps, before the final table begins. <laughs> put himself in an incredible position to take home about 350k. Here he is in the small blind with... Ace five up against Mokrani's eight four, which turns into a two-way straight draw on this ten seven six board texture, which is quite pesky texture. Recognizing such, he checks it over. Mokrani with a really fun hand, it must be said. Backdoor diamonds to go with that double belly buster, and it's always fun when you have a double belly buster because you hit in a way that is less believable. Sometimes you can get paid. Oh, over we go. On the topic of getting paid. Hadi Hordbin summoning people over, obviously involved in this particular pot as we effort Intel. Looks it like is Boelis is all in. Giuliano Boelis, pocket tens against oh hang on we don't have cards on their backs just yet although obviously the information is available to us yeah i think we have an all-in and maybe another all-in or a call and we still have corchidian in the tank so it could be a multi-way affair Oh, wow. Well, thank you for the roving reporting yeah. then. Three bet, four bet, five bet. Please, cold water, but the glass butter. We saw Gorchidian with this move earlier on today, asking for both counts before the clock starts, buying himself that bit of extra time. So strong, you snapped. You were excited. Three players in the hand. Probably rubbing right up against the rules there, talking with one of his opponents. Fold declared on their backs. Ali, what have we got? Well, there's the tens for Boelis and for Cordbean. Pocket kings, I'm being told, as a validating declaration of I knew he was so strong being issued. The way you jump is like I can put maybe a king's. Queens? Instead 
Corbin in a wonderful way here, but threatened on this 6-7-9 board. <laughs> wow, well, we're seeing to some the sickness. The oh my goodness. Whoa. The 10 <laughs> rolling <laughs> off. Now he needs a king for a win, an 8 for a chop, and instead it's a 5. Boelis will take his seat once more, and you see an incredulous Hadi Corbin being doubled through there. Very deflating developments. Yeah, he called for the rail. He had the Django's, he wanted to celebrate with his friends, but in a 6-6 six, six turn of looking. Look, he's very short now. They're the 25k chips, Ali. Left with just over a million, I yeah, think, or around like about a million. vapors from this angle. Very unfortunate for Hadi. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, an all-in on the feature table. Barca's gone for the squeeze shove. In fact, it's... Two seven. So, raised flat by Mokrani. Barca... Decides 12. to send 12. in the 19 bigs as well. He should with the pocket eights. Yeah. Gets it done. Not exactly looking to play flops with that particular holding. It does play out exactly as he had hoped there. And, of course, some extra chips being hauled in courtesy of that flat in between. Look at that. Nice there for Barca. <laughs> well, the wheel at least on that outer table... I think it was said that he had 2.5, 2.4 million, and then his opponent had 4 million. So I guess we can do the math there and guess that he is a little over a million left. But at least doubles to around 4.55 million, something in that neighborhood. Worth noting whether there are short stacks about here. Obviously, both tables should be keenly aware of the stacks on each other's tables. And Ketzer, well, he doesn't have to be worried about anything. He can just pound on this final table bubble. That he can. And Barker with the pair again. 24 bigs. Will he learn from what happened the last time he speculated in this spot? Yes, he will. I like this fold. So I'm call with the Pocket fours last time round decides once bitten twice shy. Ten four deuce as Ketzer. Second pair up against top pairs. You're growling in a nice way after defending. Checks with eight seventy five in the middle. Yeah, and certainly gonna be hard for Ketzer not to lose some chips in this spot. He has made a hand here. Now, Ketzer is a creative player and will figure out ways to win without hitting. This board should run out scarily for his opponent. As is, probably has enough to just check this back now. Although, I don't really want to predict what Ketzer will do because I think he understands this FT bubble dynamic better than anyone. And maybe we'll try to pressurize some hands. He does check. That is what I would have done. But like I said, this man has found bets that <coughs> I nor not too many people would have found already on this feature table. And now certainly both players with enough showdown. One feels. fact, the block coming in from Zagralin. Yeah. Emboldened by this run out where he does hold a spade and this range perhaps he perceives, especially <coughs> with the actual 10 in tow. Honestly, I'm not sure whether Ketzer <coughs> is contemplating call or raise. <coughs> he is greedy right now. He wants to win 
every pot he enters, he's going to have a little think. Obviously, it is scant showdown. Wondering maybe if his opponent would ever block her a queen four or jack four. Maybe his opponent would block her an ace deuce in this manner. <coughs> I think at this point he has resigned himself to make the call. Doesn't have to be good too often here. No. And so you growl in with a nice little pickup. Yeah. There, obviously, but a flesh wound for Ketzer. But uh, really just reclaiming some of the 600 and change in the form of the C-bet that he was bullied off of <laughs> on that ace-4-4 four, four flop by nothing more than seven high, as it turned out. Even without this massive stack... David, we always knew Ketzer was going to be one to watch, not simply by virtue of, you know, flying the Brazilian flag. We know that there's a lot of talent coming out of there, but just the glimpses we've had. I'm very impressed, I have to say, by Ketzer and his procedures. We saw it yesterday, some beautifully timed three and four bets. We've seen some creativity, some real get after it. Yeah. <coughs> very fair way to describe it. Once again, the big blind defender with 9-10 and once again connecting. Mokhrani has a range seabed here. Erjan has a slam dunk call. Cool. Second pair must proceed here as Mokhrani certainly was hoping to just see bet and take it. Instead, he's forced to take a turn here as the pot grows to almost 1.4 million. And trip nines for Air John, just in case he was up against the ace. Note the quick check. Yeah, I would like to see a lead out actually on this nine. Um, obviously the ace and nine both going nowhere. So if your opponent has either one, it behooves you to attack the ace X, which would always check back on this board pairing Hard. Well, now as played, he would be ideally pursuing value from a ace X hand. I'd actually like to have seen him go bigger with that, but it is all sort of academic in this example because up against Queen Eight, we can't assume Mohrani has a willingness to send soldiers into battle. Right. I say that, however, could McCranny be considering using this Queen of Spades flush blocker as a audacious bluff attempt facing the small sizing, remember? Maybe try to muscle a weak ace off their holding? No. And I think a wise decision, not just because we see the nine in John's hand, but because it is a bit of a fishy story. Yeah. Something didn't add up. Eric Johnson not supposed to be behaving in that manner without <laughs> some strength at a minimum. So the pace of play has cracked along all morning. Obviously, we went from 24 players down to 13 in the first frame in a s startling attrition rate. It continued for the first hour or so of this frame getting us down to 10 rather quickly one wondered if we would be heading for a very early final table today but settled down a bit here on the ft bubble we have seen two or three all-ins but <coughs> short stack
coming out on top in all of those. Of course, the tens cracking the kings. A moment to go. That could have been it. Pocket sixes here for Makrani as he follows up. Opening once more. up one caller who has a six in his hand, that being Ketzer. Unfortunately, he doesn't have anything else on the queen-queen eight board with which to maybe be a customer. Makrani content to check back despite that board texture and look at the run good for Ketzer. A nine rolling right off, putting him in front. And a very textured card too, David, that's going to leave these sixes feeling very uncomfortable. Yeah, I wonder if Ketzer is earning these checks just purely because of a fear factor now. I thought on a paired board, the sixes would be very happy to see bet. Yes, of course, some of the flats are in that neighborhood, but I think you just got to take your stab there with the sixes, deny some equity, protect your hand, dare I say. Gave a free card, let his opponent overtake him, and now... <laughs> In a bit of a dark tunnel, knowing whether to call this 325 or not. There will be a lot of bluffs in Ketzer's range, one's, one feels. And McCranny, having not committed any chips post-flop in this one, <coughs> might feel like he has to be sticky with the pair. McCranny, very conscious of the fact that he looks much more like he has a hand like ace jack or ace king than he does a pocket pair and that's why he's called with these sixes sending another pot catcher's way so payday for Ketzer there as he has kept honest yeah and frustrating for McCranny who began this feature table with 4.6 million Got off to a pretty good start, got up to 7.5 million, but is now half of that, 3.7. Going in the wrong direction right now. Queen for Barca. This will be playable. Memory is open. Cats are dominated. Contemplating in the small, well served to get out of there. His 15 million will sit this one out. Another dominated king in the big, this time for Mokrani. Let's see how he feels. Respect. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> so rare to see a raise and take it at this feature table. In fact, I don't remember the last one. Does feel <coughs> rare, in particular with the presence of Ketzer, who has such a big stack with which to be pesky. Oh. Glance over there by Zugral, and something happening on the other table? Very interested, yeah. and a little bit of noise to accompany. There oh, we go. Yeah. And on this occasion, it is Boelis on his feet. Big pot then, he had five million. Corchidian, the man on the other end, is it? If it's Corchidian, this is two big stacks. Oh my God, aces against jacks, an absolute cooler. The board 
Seven four deuce, a five yes. on the turn, and I will find that table with five final minutes. table has we'll been achieved. Cake, and way. for yeah, but, uh, one very short upset. stack, that is cause look at that celebration. Stack. Yeah, <laughs> Ketzer's going to have company once we consolidate here as. That elimination does bring us to our final nine, but a pot in progress still at the feature where the holes will be filled in shortly by the four players at the outer. Jugralin raised with the queen nine suited. Ketzer on the button, queen eight off. Yeah, because we don't go hand for hand in these tournaments, we have technically reached nine left, so these players have all laddered. I wonder if that will play a small factor in the equation. Barca, a very defendable a7 here, but might just think I fold. Milbutas will be reading out my name in <laughs> 45 minutes time. Yeah, very well could be. No, he is just going to play his hand. Ooh, and play it as a raise. So Gralin. Opening the queen nine of diamonds here in the hijack and Barca getting frisky. Um, seven. Committing 20% of his stack here in a very plausible fashion from the big blind. I imagine despite the playability of a hand like queen nine of diamonds, it's going to hit the bin and that will be that. I don't think Demir is going to be particularly interested with this combo, especially the final table is set. Granted, that's just psychology, but Ooh. hang on, he's reaching for here chips. Here we go, here we go. And we're gonna play one. Benefit of position, of course, a factor, without question. Yeah. Barker, of course, benefiting from some nice. box protection yeah, to his stack. Queen 7 5, top pair against second pair. Jugralin in a delightful spot here. Oh, wow. Wow. Will there be nine people seated at this final table? Ali Najad. Oh, my goodness. Or will there be just eight? How much? Barca sea betting a million of his remaining three into 1.7. Top pair is so much hand. Yeah, and with so much in there, Zugralin very tempted to just stick it in now. Obviously, could get the really terrible news that he's in big trouble against an over pair or a dominating queen. But you don't call the three bet with this hand and give up when you make top no, pair. You're absolutely right about that. The final table. <gasps> Speech play from Barca. Trying to encourage his man to maybe fold yeah, a hand like it. eights or nines. Yes, because I want to play the table final. Listen to this, Ali. <laughs> oh, you can see on the stream, I feel better. I know. You don't need to wait. Just wait a second, my friend. Sorry. Take your time, sir. Yeah. And if Barca gets this one through, wow. He seems confident. He tried to project that of a man with an over pair who didn't really want to have 75% equity, wanted yeah. the lights, camera, and action of the final table in an hour's time. You're very right. Maybe that was quite a good salesman job. No, there's the call. So Gralin recognizing that he just simply has to play this hand after making top pair. And one wonders now, how strong Barca thinks he really could be. They've given so much verbal information away to one another. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. Ace on the turn. Barca taking the lead and in comes the remaining two million. No, if you don't pay, uh, if you don't pay before. Okay. Note, by the way, that Jugralin's choice not to check okay. jam actually saves him considerable number of chips, David. Quick fold, I think, there by hmm? Zugralin, who ultimately didn't want to commit any more chips there on the worst card in the deck. Let's be honest, Ketzer, 15 million. Wow. 
just staggering size of stack there, but he's going to have company is obviously Horchidian making waves at the outer table, dispatching on the final table bubble, the Italian Boeli says we bring you back into the commentary booth for a break as we will be getting that final table set up. It's going to be about a 30 minute break, so brace yourselves for that. But David, final thoughts then as we step to a, a bit of a, a longer respite. My final thoughts are more general thoughts about the day so far. It has been absolutely incredible stuff. Sarkis, bust. Julia yeah. Bergenoff, bust. Christoforu, bust. Kirichenko, Di Nicola, Musa, Soika, and then Boelis there just a moment ago. All bust. The Shepherd's Crook has been deployed relentlessly during this final day. We've lost 15 tributes in just over three hours. I'm gobsmacked. gobsmacked. I can't even say gobsmacked. I'm so gobsmacked by the pace of play. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to rail this uh, final table, both you and James in the next frame and when I'll be back later on. Absolutely, and we certainly hope that all of you will stick around. So set an alarm, do what you need to do in about 30 minutes time. We're gonna come right back here to North Cyprus and put a bow on what has been an absolutely amazing main event and rates to be entertaining as we move forward. Keep it close, we'll be back in about 30. What's going on everybody? Very first break during day two of the main meal. Look what we heard from the boot to the game. What's your experience with the main one? Really good, mate. As we know, Merit, amazing place to play poker. I was very lucky this stop to be able to do commentating duty and then play the main event. I uh, started the day with 400K, which is a nice stack. Oh, beautiful. Lost a very tough one with aces against two pair where I was very sure my hand was good. I shoved the river for value. He had. Yeah. He had trapped me, he played this hand good. Oh, yeah. It was a very normal hand, so I went down to 200, now I'm back to 350. So swingy, so, swingy, yeah, yeah, up and down. Things are good, and the structure is so good. But yeah, great experience, and we're halfway through the day. Okay. So how is your game running, huh? Four days here. Yes, it's amazing. I can never, like, get uh, bored of this. You can stay forever. And today you're playing the main event, day yes. two. What about yesterday? You play the cash games as well, yeah? I'm a cash game player. I'm okay. usually a cash game player. I don't like tournaments. I tried my luck uh, one year ago at your place here in Merit, and I loved it. Uh, it was fun. So I'm like, every time I'm coming, I'm going to play the main event. Straight from the feature table. I had plenty of tough spots to be honest, so my heart is a little bit broken because I managed to have a, a bunch of good hands like aces, queens, and I feel like I didn't win a single time with those strong hands, and uh, I had to like maneuver for that TV table like a little bit differently. I folded aces, I folded queens, like it was just frustrating, but well, that's the game. <laughs> Got a capable flop in the sense that he blocks that king as well, so crucial. Sure. Is it still MPO on the tables or just from the boot when you see the guards is like a bit different story? It's MPO. It's obviously a different experience to some, you know, if you play a high roller or if you play against, you know, very experienced regs, there's a big mixture here. So some tables are full of regulars, some not so much, some more fun players. So you really have to think on your feet. So some hands we play normal theory, some hands we get into the merit streets, especially here. As you see, you know, people will call with hands from early position. They shouldn't call. You will see lots of, you know, betting on a board that they shouldn't really bet. So it's a big challenge. You we should always pay attention yeah, anyway, yeah, and especially here. Especially. Especially. Okay, I wish you all the best. Hope it's just, thank you. Yeah. You've been here like a week. 
Have you tried any activities, facilities, what, you, what you've done besides the game? Yeah, so that's the best thing about uh, Merit here because we play short enough to be able to do actually stuff like either before the tournaments or after, after the tournaments. Normally, they make us to play until like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and you're just dead going to bed and you don't have the room to do anything. And here, I played squash yesterday. I basically have a massage every single day or go to sauna or swimming pool. I go to the gym every day. There's just so much to do, so I don't know, we can just bring your plus one and make sure like they, they're gonna be fine here there's just so much to do so in Cyprus in Merit is always amazing it's always so nice to play here and stay here in general because you guys are all great real we saw on your social media you love puppies and it's the place for you yeah <laughs> I love them. We were just actually talking. There, there's Isla and, and my boyfriend, and they're actually like looking at the pictures of the puppies. There's plenty of dogs and cats, and I, I really love that culture because it makes this place more human. Like normally, like in Europe, they're just like so strict and they're just yeah, like that's true. so cold. And here, I, I, I love it. I love it. It really like makes you smile. I, I don't like no reason so I, I i'm a big fan of the idea and uh, we're this is actually our pre-tournament routine which is like go visit the puppies like pet them a little bit and come back and what about your table now there are lots of chips on your table in the main event yes so uh, i did a very well uh, couple of hands and now you're going to the feature table, huh? What's your strategy to maybe push a little bit players? Because you know... I'm very aggressive. I know, I know. And uh, they usually like to bluff a girl or to uh, put a lot of pressure on the girl because exactly. they think she's going to fall easily. Yeah. And I made a couple of loose calls and it turned out well for me. So We nice. are looking forward to some action from the table. Of course, always. Yeah, cheers. And we see so many Italians after Andreas Dato's victory. How about Italians? They know better, better merit, and they come back here for the bigger ones. I can say that in some way, uh, me and our organization, Imperium, we helped to uh, push so many Italians here, but we did it with big, big pleasure because every time an Italian player comes here, then he always wants to come back because he's very, very happy, always. Newcomer here, first time in the Merit, yeah? Yeah, yeah, first time. Uh, how is your experience with the tournament? Uh, the tournament is perfect, uh, and I'm very lucky. Play satellite, win a ticket, then play another satellite, win another ticket. Oh, that's so, beautiful. Yeah, 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 it's beautiful. Yeah. And what we can expect from coming MPP, you know, some, some big things, some... For sure, a lot of Italians will come for MPP, but we, they will come also for a La Dolce Vita series that we will have in the end of July and August. It's a great opportunity for uh, Italian players to come here and we will be very happy to support everybody to, to join us. During the very last break of the day two in the main event, we just talked Anatoly. How is it going for you so far? Everything good. I had uh, 800,000 uh, chips uh, three hours before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, after this, I had a little bit more than 400,000, but now it's about, I think, 650. So it's more than average, all good? Like... Yes, yes, not bad. What about Chinese people? More and more coming to Merit, I enjoying. This is my first time, but my friend is second time coming here. Sometimes uh, one player knows here, uh, he, he told his friends, and his friends told his friends, their friends. So many, many Chinese players know this tournament, they come here. Uh, maybe next time, uh, we'll more Chinese players come here, maybe. I'm really glad they yeah. like, that's why they tell you to come, yeah? That's good. What if not in this place here, what you would choose this time right here, right now? What to choose, which place in the world you want to be? Now I want to be, of course, with my wife and my uh, dog, maybe you know, Rudy. One time I was here with him uh, when we uh, traveling by car. Yeah, I remember, when, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember. My was in Diamond. Okay, you have the wife, you have the dog, yes. but where, where in the world? 
Which place? We have a small dream with our wife uh, to go to Japanese. I have an idea. You go to the final table, mm -hmm. make some money. Some. So, so, oh, like this, some, this uh, one, uh, yeah. and go straight to Japan. We can't um, fly to Japan with our dog, but I think first place we can buy a ticket to business jet, you know, something like this. Okay, oh, oh, so that's for sure should be like minimum the deal heads up. Yes, minimum. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is two. Lines are 2,000, 4,000, with 4,000 in the land. We will shuffle up a bit, and we wish you the best of luck. This is now the registration for this tournament. It's closed. to be good at that off one, Kenny. Yeah. Hopes he's up against Ace King, Ace Queen. So decided to bet flop. up. Could also be up against an over pair. Yeah. He is happy to show it down. Will be very happy, as both players <laughs> will, to get this one. I'll tell you who's happiest there. He's your miles off three tables of his hand. Mm. And Paletti quickly picks up his cards to the table hits. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been in that spot a couple of times where the one and two seat, it's, it is a little annoying because you can't actually see the clock tick down. So you're relying on the dealer maybe to give you a little bit of notice. Um, it's actually not great that it's obscured from a couple of the players because you even can pace the kind of decision you're going to make a little bit. You suddenly realize you have five seconds, it's a bit like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to being able to always glance yeah. up and I realize think, I think you can probably see it 10 seconds there. Looking yeah. at the, the line of it. But yeah, you're right. So the one seat is... Hmm. has to lean forward to... Quite like actually, again, not wanting to hark on, but... That Triton. Kind of introduced a, a light strip in the table. You can see the time going down. Ooh. Fancy. So wherever you're sitting, you can see it's just the LED strip in the middle of the table. Just ticking down. Panic as it gets near the bottom. I was going to say, it has a kind of a countdown clock vibe then. All in. <laughs> Christopher Root, he'll be going all in with this, giving the opportunity. Oh, and dangerous one for Habib here with 14 bigs. This is borderline. This is probably a shove, to be honest. And if he can somehow find a non-shove... <laughs> and save his tournament he will be very fortunate because i think i probably just send this one particularly against christopher who i think maybe opens lighter than most from the cutoff seems like there would be even more reason to get it in here we are looking at yeah the entirely the reasonable david you called it and i think when you seen christopher just three bet fold instantly before it's not like if you haven't played with him before you can tell he's obviously not a nit certainly not a little stretch I don't know what happens to nits when they turn up in the side. They just, they just get sent back at the airport. Cause they, we never see any. <laughs> 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 
كده على الرابع ورقه البستونيه دي اوكي حبيب picks up a little equity in the form of that 10 8 7 board 9 or 6 would keep him alive there's the nine. Wow. Now, of course, there are opportunities for a chop. Christoph Root hoping yeah. for a jack or a six. Oh, and he finds my the jack. goodness me. Oh. <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster there for both players. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Why you tell the Hassan of the Yinza? When I saw the guy, I was sure. Ladies for Korshijin. Yeah, the man with all the chips on this table. <coughs> but only a sort of one and a half times average stack for him. Yeah, Not as you said, that. really interesting stack distributions here on the final day. Nobody with a really big stack. We, we have seen, obviously, the, the Western particularly big couple of stacks at this stage. I think already maybe did... The Dark Knight. No, it wasn't Dark Knight. Dark King. Dark, dark King, King, yeah. I, the Dark King had like 12 dark, million already. The Dark Knight is, you know. That's a cool one too, though. Yeah. I'm being called the Dark Knight. We're going to upgrade him. Can you upgrade from... No. It's uh, more of a downgrade from King downgrade, to Knight, but... Downgrade really. It sounds cooler because of recent cultural developments. Oh, and trouble here for Panetti, considering a Queen X. Okay. Likely to be something like Queen Jack suited, King Jacks, or King Queen suited, I should say. <laughs> yeah, it's unlikely to be King Very Jack suited. Very unlikely to be King Jack suited here. <laughs> but yeah. He, he oh no! And I just mentioned how quiet he has been, but now has found a oh, dreamy spot he long. doesn't realize is in fact a nightmare. Yeah. A cruel one, for sure. Just 15 blinds, a raise and an open in front. No way we can do anything but go with this. Looking up at the clock, 22 remain. The next pay jump comes at 21. So I like if he burns a little bit of time here. And then when he eventually makes the move, maybe leave a chip back to buy himself another 30 seconds. Perhaps scan around the room, see what's going on as well. That's what he's doing. He's just kind of looking out of the left there, back onto the tournament floor. There are two tables there within short distance. hate to be a little nitpicky with you, James. Go on. Would you not make the raise holding the chip back and not burn a time bank first and then burn them later? Because maybe well, it gets through and you think, need to I burn a time bank at all. I think he's burning one here and in posturing is like, I've got Aha, a tough decision. This one's like, one the, of those ones. I this one's like the, I'm not sure what to do with this hand. Should I jam with it? And but yes, you're, you're right. Well, he took your advice in the end. Did posture. Snap, show from Corchidian, and not a snap <laughs> foul from Panetti. So now thinking maybe an ace queen is in there. Maybe an ace queen suited decided to take the flatting, mm. more passive line, and now is wondering know, if they could ever be in good shape. No, I think I have such a sick hand. So yeah, he's just helping his man out. He just said, I have such a sick hand. I think it is ace queen. I think he said, I've just got 30 seconds. He's oh, just, he's sorry. Just it's a very big fold, okay? But he has. All right then. What you have? I block. Block me? Yeah. Ace queen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. You're right. Pretty reasonable line. Flat the ace queen. And then obviously surrender to this much action. Yeah, I'm obviously would have called against Tulip Bergenoff, but Paul Cordian <sighs> ripped it in and an ace 10 three flop. 
obviously would have affected the folded hand as it is. No change here. Of course, I cannot call in, but you know, I, I never can call. Jack King. Sees the seven of diamonds roll off. Just has to fade one more card. Let's get himself up to the six million plus mark. That's what he's going to do, David. Philip Bergenoff out in 22nd, the last man picking up $13,730. Yeah, absolutely nothing he could have done there. A strategy of us, but yeah, I don't know. That just felt like a, well, I'm happy to get in against the short guy. And actually, there's enough of stack here that I can raise. And if Quartidian was to make it 500K, I can stick it all in over the top of that. Hmm. Well, Habib now with a must-shove 12 big blind spot on the button. Yeah, next pay jump coming at 18. So it still makes sense maybe to take a bit of time here and leave a chip back. Mm -hmm. See if he decides to do that or whether we will just rip. Now it's all in and gets snapped off by Kukordin in the small blind. Oh no. Oh, oh that's, not, that's not terrible news. Yeah. Do it, Mene. No, no. The snap there perhaps designed to make Musa potentially fold slightly better because it looks so strong. Yeah. So obviously, Cortidian, confident that Habib would have been in there with some weaker kings, maybe even a yeah. 10 jack. Oh, for sure. I think he's uh, handy, wants to play. With the 11 blinds, 12 blinds even. He sent one packing already today. Can he send Habib on that man's heels? Well, wow. he hasn't hit, but he likes the flop. Yeah, equities have remained virtually static here. <laughs> and people are talking to the dealer saying, what is this flop? What are you doing to me? Why are you putting me through this? Great turn card for him, of course. I can keep healing now. That one, though, not so much. Habib, Thank you, Habib. the latest out. Accordion, striking gold. I can see clearly now the rain is gone, says Corchidian in song. All in, all in. As the river card was being dealt, <laughs> supreme. Joking aside, it is a. Lovely feature of the final tables here that we take that little break, we set up the stage. The share hand guys usually create some really fun graphics as well. The players' profiles displayed on the screen behind. The bombastic Milbutas. <laughs> You look like Pocahontas. With a uh, no, Pocahontas. generous introduction for each player. I just, I, I feel like he can go on the road with it. I don't think there's any poker stop that does it quite like Merritt. Like yeah, he's our own Bruce Buffer. Yeah, but even then when they, when they yeah, yeah, they can hype up a tournament, but hype up a final table, no one does it better. This man needs no hyping up. He's got jacks and a big stack. He's hoping for... One of these shorter stacks to perhaps perceive what is quite correctly a, a wider range than most. And Kirichenko, here we go. Here's an example of one who could certainly do this. And we've shown this man willingness to bust out. He definitely plays with his heart on his sleeve. And you've got fourth in the high roll this time. Second in that same event last time out. I'd be surprised, David, if we don't see him take the spot. He rarely shies away. And he has... Announced all in. 17 blinds completely reasonable against this hijack open. But what a dream start for Korshidian here. Snaps it off. Kirichenko now 29% only to stay in this tournament. Are we about to go to 16? Is Korshidian about to become the prohibitive chip leader of this tournament? It feels destiny like night, Isn't it? If he keeps running like this, board's coming out clean. Getting there when he needs to. Certainly could be Kirichenko reduced to just three. Right. That's not it. G2 
GG's Kirichenko. Shout out to him for pulling a audacious bluff on the pure bubble yesterday. Ripped it in for 1.2 times pot. We're just queen high. Oh, we have a bust out. Out on the floor as well. What is happening like this morning? Clement Bonant holding ace 10. And then Ketzer getting there with ace 3. 340k is an awful lot more bananas and pineapple. You can't shame me for eating fruit. It's usually cookies I bring back there, so. I'm very impressed by your choice to spend that eight minute break gathering some fruits. Nine point seven million now, Corchidian. Another openable one. He's just relentless right now. Dealer being very generous with the queens and jacks and <laughs> jacks again, but like. Well, she was about to lose her patience with the clock there. Aspani, no interest in playing back with this ace three suited. Didn't even cross his mind. Christopher Root in the big blind. King, queen off. Interesting spot again, David. Mm -hmm. Does decide just to rifle it in. Yeah. Not surprising from this seat that we see this maneuver. No, and 16 and a half bigs. I think probably way too many for Cortidian here. He's finally going to have to so when let I one go. You stop the clock, right? Oh. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Familiar with myself. Of course, he's facing a bet. If he asks how much the bet is, the clock has to be stopped. Give him the time. Yep, hoping for a slow count here. Yeah. I know I'm ahead. He's right. Big time. He's yeah. right. I know what you're shoving with. I know. But I'm afraid I will lose. You know, how much? Wow. A perfect handle mm -hmm. on the situation. Cortidian. Surely not. Like Nostradamus today. Yeah. And an opportunity to knock out a very dangerous opponent if indeed he's right. And he's it is a King Jack King. Queen wow! Queen. What are we seeing here? He was spot on, David. He's made the call. He said, I know I'm good. I know what you're jamming oh, with. No. Christopher Roo feels sick seeing that no. hand call him. Wow. Well, huge moment for Christopher Roo if he I can get there with the near flip hand. Suited, Jack time suited. You know, I know. But I will play 60 40. Let's see. I'm running good. <laughs> well, Ain't that the truth? It is just 60-40, of course. The king-queen live. Oh, Still like live, but after a five-high flop, not enjoying life too much. Oh, and you do feel yeah, for Christopher, who two cards away from elimination. Yes, yeah. He's you don't expect to get unlucky. called by this. Yeah, and he's obviously been very unlucky with his three bets. Lost. Tied kings, we sixes all in pre. Now needs to hit king or queen on the river here. He's not going to do it. An incredible call oh. from Kulkwidian. Read his man and said, I know what you've got. He did. He did. I know you've got these kind of hands. Just whether I want to gamble. I'll gamble. I'll take my 60% shot. I'm running good. And Christopher is just probably feeling a bit sick oh, at that. Getting up to yeah, nearly 20% of the chips in play. Big blind is one entry, one starting stack. Yeah, this is one. This is my friend I put now. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoy that benchmark myself. And my yeah. other friend. <laughs> He's a player that's usually uh, found uh, in the cash game streets. <laughs> Does have a fair number of caches, just under 400k <laughs> on his Henemod database, or a bunch of which coming in this very place. <laughs> Well, will it be a case of no man left behind here in defense of his soldiers as Hasbani <laughs> takes a free flop stab here to the tune of 2.2 million? Yumaz <laughs> finding Jax with his nine blinds over and open. Very reasonable to believe he might get paid off here. And <laughs> <laughs> this would one would be a little optimistic. 150. How much chance 
I wonder if any amount of this is sort of a little bit of gamesmanship, like, just to make sure that Hispania knows it's sub nine points. Like, I don't think it is in this case because he's got all the chips, but he's on the short side. So you just want to point out to the man who's open, hey, this is a really small bet. Hispani. I'm going to give him a spin here, getting a great price, nine big, Sony. <laughs> Big moment for both players here. Has Bani. Will he finish the hand with 2 million or 4 million? Will Yil Maz finish the hand with 2 million? Or a little piece of paper that says 14th place? Oh, ace in the window. Has Bani leaps out in front. Yil Maz. Does have a, the opportunity there, of course, David. There are routes to victory. Now there is just one route to victory. It means a black paint card that says J. GG's to Yomaz. I love you. I Very like unfortunate. I feel like there's a conspiracy with the dealers. I've seen players out of the fun. Here we go, David. Do the cola. Opportunity for a light one himself. He's four off in the hijack. He's finally going to get involved. And there you go. His man on the left did hold an ace. Ace three, so instantly folding, giving a little bit of respect to Dealer Color. Of course, he should be folding ace three, but we were, weren't sure how he was going to react to the opens when they came. And actually, the, the speed of the fold doesn't give Dealer Color any information either. He won't know that it was an ace. He won't know that it was a possible three bet. He'll just think, oh, maybe look down at Jack three off. Oh, has Banny. Definitely a call here. Mandatory defend. I don't think you want to get frisky with this one. I think you just want to navigate here, try and flop a set, maybe get a little sticky on some boards. Check back. <laughs> oh, the case four rolls out. The Hispani announces a dark check. This day and age of dark check, well, players pretty much always check and flow anyway, so it doesn't really change too much. But it's odd that he's somehow done it now when he hasn't done it up until now. Yeah, Nicola feeling very good here with the four and the diamond, right? Yeah, I was going to say, Nicola has a lot of this himself. Middle pair, backdoor diamonds, wheel draw. Well, not really a wheel draw, I guess, because with the six on board there, All right. the pro players have made the same hand. <coughs> Hispani coming out with a smaller raise. And I don't think you can fold yet. No, but suspicions will heighten. Virtual lock on this one, Hasbani. Nicola, oh, well, we're well. going to pop back to that hand in a moment, but we want to see this classic race. Jack's ace king first. Yeah, Soika's all in with the ace king. And no him. help from the board until the river. Wow. He spikes a king for what well, looks like a very healthy double up there. 1.5 million just in the whites alone. He's about seven reds, so 2.2 plus a whole bunch of blues. Maybe a 2.6 stack. Yeah, that's a very big pot there, Ketzer. 2.7, so we're looking at a 5.5 million chip pot. Yeah, I think Ketzer maybe could have been the chip leader had he won that one or certainly been there thereabouts with our big stack, Korchidian. Instead, those guys probably have similar stacks wow. now with 5 or 6 million each. Look at this, we come back to our table. And Hasbani was called and now finds the check on the board straightening 5. Not sure about this bet from Di Nicola. Might just be content to check it back. Oh no. Wow, has Bunny check ripping? Four on the board in a row. Just denying flush draws, I guess, but it's a bit dicey. We open up obviously our on the mic. 
actually did more of the heavy lifting in that hand ever the professional these moments that <laughs> the jury they just don't see it they do don't they? see these moments that's what it is They, they <coughs> hear Alina Jad's word smithery. They see him acting the maggot, joking around at the end of a session with props, producing bananas, putting jumpers on his head. Just a couple of the things I've seen this weekend. But they don't see the moments where genuine physical injury is just pushed aside and professionalism takes over. I dot my cap to you, sir. So you don't get points for sort of cleaning your desk when you finish your session. I'm like some people who are nominated for. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but maybe maybe Ali and I should just be forced to share <laughs> the same space, and you can have the, the clean area that you tidy up. It's a problem when you're in the booth together. <laughs> Benetti, put one up here with the two sixes. Yeah, I actually got Ali with that yesterday. I don't know if you saw the end of the frame when he had his head up. He did at the start of the frame as well. I managed to trick him by sneaking around behind him. So when he took his head off and turned to me, I wasn't sat here anymore. <laughs> because I was stood to his right. But obviously he could still hear me in his headset. <laughs> Very much confused. How, how did Ordinary. you do that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you in a second. Very, Very stealthy. He's finally applying some pressure. <laughs> He's been itching to do this sort of stuff. Benetti opening off 27 blinds. Kind of hard to imagine him wanting to continue, continue here, isn't it? Yeah, he's getting a good price. Um, Di Nicola really coming for a small sizing here out of the small bus. Um, this particular hand is very hard to navigate for Panetti. Do you feel like there'd be a decent number of suited Ooh. Broadway kind of combos? Besides, for that price, it is okay to have a little look. That reason, do you perhaps like slightly larger from Di Nicola? I understand the si sizing down against the 27 big blind stack, but... I do prefer a larger size against range. Um, I wondered whether they would get the job done against these sixes, which are harder to play than, say, a hand like Queen Jack suited. But to the flop we go. Ooh, great flop for Dina Cola. Must feel like he has the best hand here, bar traps. And Panetti's going to feel pretty confident, confident about this board. <coughs> yeah, I think we're going to see a fairly small bet here from... Nicola, maybe something in the region of 350. And it's going to be very hard for Panetti not to stick around for at least one, if not two, streets here. Oh, even smaller again. Really milky. Mm -hmm. I like it. I guess with that smaller size, Pre does have all these sort of queen jacks, king jacks, king queen kind of hands that you want to target. Even some A size, perhaps, like ace jack of diamonds, ace jack of clubs. Oh, yeah. Find it hard. This hand fraught with danger now for Panetti. Obviously not going anywhere. Has that six of hearts in hand as well. Lots of safe ones here where... Oh, wow! Dina Cola will be delighted, but... Dina Cola, that is the death card. It looks like a safe one. Yeah, it looks like a great name. card. With only 2 million back, 1.7 million in the pot, in this case, Dina Cola's just going to do it for him over two streets. I take my name. Well, barring one of the two tens in the deck coming out here on the river, I do not see an escape route for Dina Cola. I think Panetti is quids in for this big, big double up. I love his uh, presence at the table during hands. He gives away nothing. We've seen it in every hand. He just He's very stoic. Do a little bit of acting. One assumes calling no real reason to raise there is there, obviously. I oh, he has raised. Yeah, I'm a little surprised because he's in position. So right. Out of position, I, I can understand a raise, but in position, I certainly would have expected him to just call again, keep in all the bluffs, and, and then hope some of those bluffs catch a piece. So for that reason, does Dina kind of think this just can't ever be value? Yeah, it feel, feels like hearts, doesn't it? Yeah. Or maybe a hand like 
eight that doesn't want to call another belt on the river and decides it makes it a million now. Goes all in, gets snapped, gets the bad news, he's got two outs. Oh. And yeah. Oh. Brutal. Reaction says it all. He knew he was a very good chance of getting all those chips if it hadn't come a six on the turn, as it is. Your favourite to double his man up. Now, the dealers have been <laughs> ruthless with our short stacks. Not, Not this, this time. time. <laughs> <laughs> we doubled up. What an amazing situation for Corchidian now. Yeah. Nicola. Well, we find... Players on their feet here, and a wrap of the table. It appeared to be Hadi Horbin. Not sure whether or not he was involved, but Pocket Queens may very well. Yeah, Musa getting the double up there, I think. Yeah, contributed to the continued over. And we're back over to Basil Musa, who looks like perhaps he's got the rest of his chips in here with Jack Six. Flopped a pair against King Eight. He had 50. Doubles up. As he turned the jack for Guay. Well, hang on a second. Big situation again for Basel, who has been unraveling. Did double briefly moments ago. Here he is. 9-5 appears to have been the customer. And again, chips heading his way. Resiliency and that pay jump. Not going to be realized by the field just yet as... Basel Musa stack has been fairly insecure. Again, he finds himself on his feet. Outer table action, pocket threes <laughs> against ace deuce. And he is held on once more. The resiliency. <laughs> it's starting to get old, by the way, for everybody else at that table. You must take one player, man, on the, on the page jump. What are you doing? What do you read? Anyway, thank you. What you have? I have the nine. Call 25. Yes, the nine. Look at the Nicola pleading with everyone to just relax with the radio frequency beams into outer space. It's, it's all happening here in North Cyprus, fellas. But I say that in, in cheeky manner, by the way. It wasn't pure mutant behavior it was actually some pretty cool top shelf stuff that we got to witness i challenge people who've never been out here to come in to a merit cold turkey and try their hand at, at the regs here because they've got something for them a seven suited He'll pick up Barca's King Queen on the button. Did you think maybe Barca would get ambitious and look to jam over the top of that? I did actually. You read my mind. Jam. Not sure of the pay jump. Perhaps having something to do with the more conservative approach, right? Strap yourselves in as continuing coverage of this fourth and final day of the Merit Poker Western Series main event is underway. And we welcome James Dempsey back into the commentary booth alongside yours truly, Ali Najad. Delighted, obviously, with all that we've been able to offer you to this point. But the final table is at long last set, James, 342,000 up top obviously that's what's on everyone's mind worthy of note of course that ninth place is a guaranteed thirty-four thousand three hundred dollars but the massive stacks of Corchidian obviously one guy that we want to be keeping our eye on uh, the other just escaping me the names you know they they kind of pile up here throughout the course of the uh, day. Uh, uh, Felipe Ketzer obviously yeah. another guy that's been just very steady thus far the two that maybe i'm circling but any of these nine obviously especially the shorter stacks i know we've got a five big blind stack out there some spin-ups as we've seen in the past i think it was four big blinds off of yep. which somebody came back to win the warm-up already here at this western and we could see real fireworks well ali i'm excited for this to happen like some of the viewers i wasn't in for the last passage down to the final table so a lot of the early action 
the good news is we're about to get my favorite part of the series, which is Emil Butter's introduction to a final table. Oh, yeah. And see our lucky nine in action. Nothing better than that. Obviously, he is a longtime regular here. He is our producer. You hear us talk about him all the time. He's mostly behind the scenes. But then, when it's time for the final table intros, we call upon him and all of his energy and all of his presence to get out there onto the stage and deliver all of those introductions. Just about 20 seconds away from that. If you've never borne witness to it, it's yeah, worth checking out. and it, we were out. discussing it earlier. It kind of gets the players pumping as well. Some of the guys who normally come out a little low, we, we saw in the warm-up final, coming out dancing because the yeah. music's going. Milbutas is like generating the crowd and everyone in the room stops, watches. It, it makes it a much bigger event. So without further ado, we give you down to Vita for the final table intros. Ladies and gentlemen, the cab was from Merit Poker is calling. And I have the mixed feelings. In other hand, it's the last day of the tournament and all the best things goes to the end. But in other hand, it's the most exciting one because it's the final table of the main event. 672 entries were made and it's still more than 1.1 million in the cashier for nine remaining ones to share, including the marvelous 342 and a half thousand US dollars. So let me meet our luckiest and most accomplished ones. Sitting in the first seat and representing Lebanon with 4.4 million in chips is Anton Hasbani. For the second one, I expect huge applause, as I think some Persians are still in the building. So he's the shortest one, but he's a very experienced cash game table player. So it's Hadi Corbin! The seat number three is the third in the chips as well. And representing Switzerland, welcome back, Mr. Christophe Panetti. Who's sitting in the middle. He has great success in merit poker events lately. And he's back for one more final table appearance. 4.3 million in chips, it's Damir Zugralin! The guy who is sitting 6, he knows the taste of victory as he was 10k high roller champion back in the day for kind of the same amount. And I expect some Turkish player applause. It's Timur Erjan. The guy who's sitting seven, he gave us amazing moments during the live stream. Let's see what he still got in his pocket for this final table appearance. It's Sammy Barca! But every final table has its own chip leader and we start to talk the 8th and 9th place which are the biggest one. And let's start 19 million in chips from Lebanon, cash game specialist Nishan Hordimian! And how could we have the final table without the very accomplished online poker professionals? He came here from overseas, from Brazil, with 15 million in chips. It's Felipe Ketzer!
Guys, I wish you all the best. Just the one will win, but you can make your best possible appearance. So please, dealer, shuffle up and deal. And our thanks to Vita for what was, as promised, a very hyped final table intro. You see Hadi Hordbin, five big blinds, did take a horrendous beat with Pocket Kings against Pocket Tens, part of why he finds himself in that situation, but did manage to punch a ticket to this final table where the blinds will start, 75 and 150,000. Yeah, they'll be going up very soon, though, Ali. I think there's only about 10 minutes left on the level, if yeah. memory serves. Maybe a little bit more, but certainly he's going to feel the pinch. The rest, though, look at that. Seventh place of the nine has 29 big blinds, Ali. This is incredibly deep for a final table. But look at the drop-off there behind Horchidian, or Horchidian rather, and Ketzer to the rest of the field. Panetti, 57 bigs yeah. over, you know, 44 bigs separating him from second. So we'll see whether or not... Ketzer in particular, when Horshidian is not involved in a pot, will take advantage of being the big stack to maybe apply plenty of pressure with Hadi Hordbin sitting on those five big blinds. Everyone incentivized to kick back and try to realize this $11,000 gap between ninth and eighth. Let's see if they can do it. Yeah, like you say, obviously with the, such a short stack in the mix here, everyone forced to play very tough until that four big blind stack finds itself in the middle. 11k pay jump. Could come very quickly. Did I just see a drone in the shot? Did you catch that? Oh, there's that. I've seen the drone here before. I actually missed it this time. But yeah, oh yeah, this the drone gets around these parts. Got to keep your head on a swivel whilst you're playing yeah. poker in this room. You think it's just the crows in the background you've got to worry about, but... No. Once in a while, they pop out the screen. Players just getting situated to get underway. There it is. There it is. They um, didn't have those in the Wild West. No, it's a more modern take on the uh, on the theme. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you had like a drone in the Wild West. You just could take one random bit of technology over and you could... I always wonder this. If you just had one thing that the rest of the world didn't have and you were ahead by 100 years... I mean, people would just shoot at it, right? Isn't that Actually, what would happen? Actually, yeah, the Wild West is kind of a bad place to take my drone to. <laughs> and I also, I think it's going to be hard to find spare parts. <laughs> Less worried about the spare parts, but I hear what you're saying. All of the festivities. I see everything moving out. Winding down. We must be nearly upon it. That's the first time we got to the end of the music. Oh, wow. You thought it was first the end. Loop. That, yeah. Oh, we'll loop back around. Don't worry. It's like when you pass out in bed with the, the reel running on your phone and <laughs> it's just the, the music's going nonstop. Of those nine players at this final table, James, anyone in particular that you're keeping an eye on? Uh, I would have to make... Felipe Ketzer, probably the favorite, uh, very accomplished online poker pro, coming in here with a monstrous stack. No disrespect to the man on his right, who is, I believe, the chip leader. Or Shidian, the man there, who, I gather, doesn't really play many tournaments, dabbles every now, now and again, plays very high stakes cash, has only come here, are we, mm -hmm. to try and win a tournament. He's not too bothered about ladders. I think mean, he probably doesn't know too much about ICM. He's probably heard the letters before. But is here playing squarely for pride, which is going to make it fun. And, and that tallies with everything we've seen in the run up to the final table. Certainly. Now Keeney was to knock people out. Now, interestingly enough, Ketzer, we can see, it's the pocket fours that has him raising. But I do think that most of the field anticipates that he's going to be very active alongside Horshidian. Yeah. So you wonder if somebody wakes up with one that they could potentially want to play, if they'll play it as a three bet and target what they perceive to be <coughs> the big bully on the block. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, Panetti's looking here, but there's, there's just no future in playing this queen. And obviously he's there with the third stack, I believe. Andrew Garland, the same, just 
Can't play this full file. Can't play so many hands. It was uh, Haddy, right? Called him the, the shortest. Yep. So he's in seat two. Air John and Varka. No, no, this, this is for you? Yeah. Back to this back. For you? Yeah, yeah it was, I believe you and I this were in the booth, weren't we? Yesterday when Varka made a no, bold play with the two sevens on the bubble, re jamming over, raising yeah. the cool, and More winning than a, a few flip. of them. Mm -hmm. Showed no fear okay. that moment. Yeah. These ladders up, Very though, Ollie, a little bigger than they were at the start of the pay ladder. Barca, A6 suited, up front, too much pressure. Obviously a terrible seat draw, James, to be directly to the right of Horshidian. Yeah. He's got a couple of sixes. He just doesn't get to play hands like that with the four big blind stack in play. Horshidian, of course, opposite, gets to play loads of hands. And everyone's just annoyed when... Hadi Cordman folds. It's like, come on, dude. <laughs> we can't start playing this final until, yeah. until you move those chips. You either got a double or bust, but do something quickly, please. Well, he's not going to get those chips in motion until absolutely necessary, unless oh, he finds a hand that he wants to play. Mokrani, though, willing to get involved with this Queen-10 suited James, and it felt as though you were taking issue with the choice. I just with that tiny stack, I mean, this one's just about okay normally. Maybe a little weak, or 20 pigs. And I mean, it's not just as well that micro stack, but he's in there with 20 pigs. There are obviously, he's the second shortest, but there are plenty stacks not far from him. I don't think he wants to play too much reactive poker. But. Air John does come along for the price, does not connect with the Ace King 9 board, but Mokrani definitely has something. Horshidian, obviously, he can just barrel away with. Impunity yeah. in certain spots, but in a three-way pot on this board, it well, doesn't feel like... Yeah, I, I agree with you. Obviously, and Macron is supposed to have a decent amount of this ace-king kind of stuff when he right. flats. But Urkan in the big blind, yes, it makes it harder to get the three, but it almost gives him like a little blanket against Macron. It's much harder for Macron to play when Orshidian's betting this three ways. It's number one, he has to... Progress with the live player still behind it, but also it just lends more credibility to this kind of bet. And these kind of hands, Ali, the sixes on these boards are the ones that the kids love to barrel with. I'm blocking, do. you know, all the straight draws like we see here. All the ace jacks, ace tens. So Makrani <laughs> does take this turn. A board pairing king is actually a fairly bad card for. Horshidian, who has to assume an ace or a king is part of what Mokrani flatted the button with and then called on the flop. Yeah, but all that said, if Mokrani has like ace-10 <coughs> suited, what is he going to do here when he gets barreled into? Potentially bust out when there's his short stack still in here. I love this. Just hammer down. Doing exactly that. And this is why it's just not advisable to be playing this queen-10. You just don't get to realize. Normal spot here, Ali. There's a good chance you get to realize a lot of your equity on the button. But when they can just bully you, the game gets a lot harder. So that second barrel is the one that gets the job done for Horshidian. And no surprise, perhaps, that the two big stacks at the table are the two that have taken down our first couple of pots with Ketzer and Horshidian in succession. haven't personally had the opportunity to observe Orshidian's procedures thus far, just given the way the scheduling has worked out for us here in the booth. James, yourself? Pardon, say again. Horshidian, have you had a chance to <coughs> watch his feature table appearances? Have you been in the booth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with, I mean, he was the one doing all the damage with two tables left. The first oh, part the reaper. of that frame. Yeah, he was just... And I mean, he was... Clearly not going to back down. We saw him raise call A6 for 17 blinds, I want to say, and just said, look, 
I think I know what you got. I know I'm ahead. He said, I'm, I know I'm ahead. I know you got a yeah. hand like King, King Queen, Queen Jack yeah. 10. It's just whether I want to gamble. And we were like, well, he's surely going to fold this A6 offsuit. Then he called. Won the gamble against exactly King Queen. Pretty shocking that he did use that particular hand. Obviously, it was very disappointing. I'm watching or one of these moments in the booth there where King Queen. Ali is focused firmly on a mosquito, but no. he was spinning around on his spot so much that I thought the mosquito was winning this battle and you're going to be tangled up in your cable, but thankfully you reversed your pirouette. I, I wouldn't bet on the mosquito in this particular exchange, I, I James. Know, I thought I had you there for a second. No. Ketzer, Jack-9 suited. Unclear why the pause on the button uh, for Jack-4 for Zhugralin. I think... Looking to get the blinds up. I think and the uh, blinds, yeah. He wants, he's obviously desperate <coughs> for the, the short stack to be all in right. as soon as possible. So just trying to make sure the blinds go up before they get to him. As I say, by my reckoning, it was around 10 or 15 minutes left of the level. Like those little nuances, Ollie, we see of, of just doing that that tank. It's, it's amazing how far poker's come. I mean... Think how good poker players have got. But yeah. There's all these extra little bits we can do, these tiny little edges mm -hmm. being pursued. And he's doing it for the benefit of everyone at the table, apart from the big stack and the short stack, effectively. Yeah, the big stacks want to get in as many hands as possible under current conditions. Oh, they're def they're desperate for Hordvin to double up when he does get these chips in in a minute. But not go any further than that. Like, 10 big blinds and below is exactly where you want to keep it, him. It makes it even harder for the rest of these guys. <laughs> Obviously, we see now um, Barker must be down to what, high teens after peeing that queen 10, calling a C-bet. So he'd be the next shortest. We're going to change, though, when those blinds go up to 100, 200 very shortly. <laughs> there is Gord Bean. He either wants to get a deal with premium or trash at this point, because there's always a chance of a bust out. There's always a chance of a ladder up. You can just get super cold decks. And you can get players getting a bit too jiggy. There's nothing worse. This is so grim for Sugar Island. Than when you find yourself playing some absurdly big pot, well aware that there's that 11k pay jump and a five big blind stack <laughs> lurking. Sugar Island. Well, of course, take his chances with King Jack suited, yeah, I mean, raising the cutoff, but doing so under the big blind of the chip leader. Yeah, you s you say of course. It's I mean I would, but it's it's pretty close actually because you see, or she didn't here can just drop the hammer on us here, and then screwed, and he might just do that with two threes here. He has masterclass thus far, Ali. <laughs> You were all, uh, you raised blind. <laughs> <laughs> Speech play as though. Okay. Oh, I wait. Yeah, always following. He just said he's going to wait. Yeah. Just trying to get those blinds up on the short stack. So the short stack had 745k left if he gets it up to the 200 big blind. When they put that in, it's going to be over half the chips in on the big blind. But again, this is like... I I do raise in Jugard and she's there with the King Jack of Hearts Ali, but I see him is a bitch. Maybe the <laughs> <laughs> the worst hand I do it with, just because that's going to happen at reasonable frequency. You can see there was a pair of threes. It wasn't out of line, but it could be all sorts. And our opponent's just going to bluff us a lot post flop as well. Yep. Sometimes he doesn't raise us. <laughs> Could've been loving that. He saw a raise from the twenty big blind stack of jam. From the biggest step, yeah. Oh, maybe, Hoping. maybe, just maybe he's open ace king and uh, calls it off against the hand like threes there. Not to be though. Gets a shot at the ladder. Bro, he was saying you were uh, online pro. You play on stars or GG? You used to play a long time ago on stars. <laughs> Looking for some intel, apparently. Chatter about whether or not. Mm. There's some What's online handles that <coughs> might be familiar to some of these guys who obviously are playing tournaments both live and online quite often, especially those that work their way down this far. You do have to be fairly technically sound. Yeah, conversations between Ketza and Horshidian here. The two chip leaders. They're, just, they're playing a different game. Yeah. And yeah, Ketza's just loving life that he got that seat draw. The other, oh. other way around. 
would have been very so problematic for him. Yeah. Mokrani, I don't like this, Ali. <coughs> Again, it's just a hand that's pretty hard to play. Best case scenario is we get folds and we don't block any of the the big hands. You know, traditionally we're down to sevens and it's a good hand. And it is a good hand. Just this situation, I think. It dictates you want to be folding. Mokrani disagrees for the time being. As you see Shugrallin again, the guilty party when it comes to trying to <laughs> incinerate this clock. And obviously, Hordbean will be irritated by this. But And he's actually burning a, a time bank here this time to do it. Which to me seems a little <laughs> wasteful because I think Hordbean was under the gun plus one. Right? So I wouldn't waste a time card here just because this hand could take ages anyway. And you can always waste a time card the next hand if you wish to. So it seems a bit unnecessary. Well, I think... If this hand takes five minutes, you just wasted a time card for no reason. Yeah, obviously, though, it is fair play considering oh. that it comes at a cost. If time banks have to be expelled, so he, you can't really take that much issue. But if he did this the next hand, Ali, when... When Corbin's under the gun and then the blind levels can go up the when he after. comes into the big. If, it's, if he's, if he's going to be big by next hand, I get it. But he has a whole hand. Like, he just used that 30 seconds the next hand instead. And it, I say this hand might have taken five minutes for you know. I mean, I'm no pro. I'm wasting time. But that seems like a... So there it is. 100, 200,000. That's what we're playing now here at this main event final table. Dilution impacting everyone. Yeah, I wonder if he was doing it just so that if he does jam under the gun, which is quite likely with four blinds, that which is much more likely to get called, I suppose. If he jams 725 into a 150k big blind, far more folds, jams it into 200k big blind, far fewer. So that must be the reasoning there, Ali. $34,300 the on tap payout, 45.6. Sizable jump. If you can pop your head up into the top eight. That's <laughs> <laughs> where it gets fun. Obviously, Panetti third in chips. He does get to play some hands still, of course. But it still has to be a tight range for Ace King. Let's see. Can I fit into that build? Christoph Panetti. Yeah, man who came second, I believe, to Arkan's first place in that high roller a couple of years ago <coughs> here. <coughs> They've got some fun table experience, can actually cover. I. I you know what it's like, Ollie, when you do a lot of fun tables, but I kind of remember it. Just kind of lingering in my mind there. Four point three. Or four point two. on the button, baby suited connector. This is not the man that you want to see contemplating involvement. No, but this, but this is why nice that Panetti's got a hand like Ace King because if four Shidian does go after him, obviously he can just send it in. He wouldn't enjoy it, mind. Cats are the same. It comes down to their perception of is Panetti going to adjust correctly here? Is he going to have a tight range or is he still opening his normal range of 40 plus blinds? Panetti, by the way, very seasoned with results dating all the way back to 2008, playing under the Swiss banner with 412,000 plus in career live tournament earnings, best cash, 173k plus. Wow, what on Ketzer. That was certainly a consideration at hand, Ali, with King, Queen, and the small blind. I thought maybe we get a bit tempted to punish, yeah. but I think appropriately Ketzer giving Panetti credit for being absolutely as tight and narrow as he's supposed to be yeah. when opening this particular pot with both of them behind him. Yeah, I mean, like I say, he does get to, he does, does get to play still quite a few hands over 40 big blinds deep, but recognizing that he's probably not opening as wide as he would do in normal situations without just... Uh, that chip stack. Well done. 
As always, everyone impressing. This one's significantly less attractive for Panetti. Erjan, two aces already into the muck, but the ace queen cannot find its way there. As understandably, he takes us upstairs. The raise to 550,000, by the way. Yeah, I like uh, we got the short stack in the big blind. So if the short stack finds like the bottom few percent hands they can fold to this, if it was against a min raise, they're just going to have to call with everything. <laughs> What does Hadi have? Yeah. Wow, eight go. deuce off. And he's already got two big blinds invested. Yeah. One is an any, one is a big. If yeah, he folds... The, an the ante, of course, is spent oh. money, but this is actually pretty grim. There's 200 in there. He's getting three to one. So obviously, he's ever getting the right price in these spots here, are we? Wants to think Up against it over. pairs, though, he's in big trouble. And of course, he still has that value. If he folds here, buys an orbit in which you can find a hand, and there might be a bust out. I think he might just fold it. Oh, no. <laughs> this is grim. Cool's here. Slams it in there, obviously begrudged yeah. to have been dealt about as poor a hand as he could be here with the eight dues. Two clean cards. 1.5 BB. 1.5 BB. Kind of explaining his decision just in case any eyebrows are raised. I think the rail are back there. Yeah. Some supporters looking on, obviously cheering their man on, <laughs> hoping that this 1.35 million chip pot will head his way. Obviously, there are eight others who are rooting for quite the opposite. Eight high board, though. Looking good. There's <laughs> John not entertained. <laughs> Certainly even he can sympathize with the decision. We go to the turn, which remains clean. And all Hordbin needs to do is avoid an ace or a queen on the end to double and deny the field the pay jump. Right in the middle is that king. So Khorbin will take a seat. Off suit. One point, one and a half TV. On big line. Terrible for the rest at this table, bar the two big stacks, of course. I was thinking to fold and wait for one more round with one BB. In these small final tables, you have to gamble. You have to yeah. gamble. No, for... Uh, <laughs> pay jump, pay jump. <laughs> yeah, terrible news for those sort of 15 to 30 big blind stacks here, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> just continue to be handcuffed. Nishan. He's only doubled up to Imagine now I win this solo. six blinds. Yes, well, <laughs> Miracle. <laughs> I think Shu Garland's got 3.7 million chips. Yeah, I, I wonder what makes you think that, uh, James. <laughs> the <laughs> graphics, of course. Doesn't take sign language to s work that out. Really? I did have a chance during the break to kind of watch the final table assemble and... These guys do have a lot of supporters. I mean, there are very few lone wolves that wander about the Merit Complex. There's so many actual friendships that seem to either work their way as a grouping over to Merit to play their tournaments or be the product of just coming time and again and starting to get familiar with folks yeah. who are making deep runs and, you know, doing their thing out here. I think a lot of the latter there. I to say, a few stops ago, I think I described this place as the world's biggest small poker room. Yeah. Has that feel? Everyone kind of knows everyone, even if it's not the most depth. But yeah, it, almost like coming right to school every six, seven weeks when they have a festival here. It's yeah. like, oh, hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah. You know, how are the holidays? Wife and kids. How's the girlfriend? Yeah. Now I'm through betting you. What do you think about <laughs> that? Ace King. I think the Lebanese nationals in particular have a, a lot of fun with it. And this is cruel. This <laughs> is cruel. The eight deuce doubles. Now all of a sudden, Cordbean looks down at an ace queen. 
a Barca open. Very understandable, his desire to get it in. And the hand that he snapped off a moment ago is the one that is dominated and in his possession on this occasion. No, much better. <laughs> much better it is. It's a much, much better hand, but oh. no use against this hand, Ali. No. Maybe Queen Calm. 3.1 million chip pot. Again, Horbin looking to stave off elimination and again behind. <laughs> yeah, the rest rooting for him. Except perhaps the chip leaders. <laughs> well, even they don't like having a 15 big blind stack in here. Comes You're right about that. A king in the window was bad news, at least a queen behind it. Along with the ace of spades working for the time being. Now, paths to a chop if a 10 rolls off. Queen, the only direct winner. Hoping we'll to take the chop. Absolutely he would. Can he hit it? No. GG. Five of clubs, so not even an orbit in. And Hadi Hordbin of Iran <laughs> dispatched James in ninth place. Yeah, they gave him a little sweat. Let him get there where they do. They will yeah. deal a mace queen next hand. And start anyway 34,000 and change going to Hadi who's made some deep runs here plays the cash games as well will add to his career live tournament earnings of 123,000 but just a modest tick up from his all-time best live cash which prior to this was 29,500 obviously 342 up top we have designs on a bit of a better outcome but Coming in with five bigs, we always know it's going to take some spinning. And unfortunately, just one double was all he could muster. So then we proceed. Eight players. <laughs> kind of reminds me of, I mean, this was a far more tame example, but I remember when James Aiken had made the final table of the main event, Ollie. I don't know if you worked that one. <laughs> They've been 2009, I think. Okay. And he came in as the shortest. He jammed King Queen, got called in one spot, and re jammed in another by Ace King. He spiked the Queen to triple up. Suddenly, uh, he juices a go, and you're thinking, oh, here we go. This is the start of something special. Then they deal him Kings. No. He gets it all in free flop. Aces thinking, here we King. go. What is it? Yeah, Aces. Just oh. They gave him the. That's the coolest time to do it. Still finishes ninth. They give him the, they give him the triple up. They give him the kings all in. Yeah, that is very cruel. And you yeah, go ninth anyway. Otherwise, he'd have been right up there. Not quite comparing doubling up with eight deuce to six blinds here and then getting a screen in is quite the same prospect. <coughs> versus Kings at the World Series of Poker main event final table is cruel and unusual punishment. No question. Of all the times, of all the stages, after all those hands you've played, all the struggles, all the big laydowns, the beats you've endured, perhaps a few you've dished out, and you meet your end in that way. That's What's emotional. What maybe makes it worse is this was back in the days of November 9th. And oh, in the yeah. interim, it's so like, yeah, not only did he have months off, but in the interim, he obviously had the World Series of Poker Europe when it was in London. He made the final table. No stop. Finished ninth. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> How's that for cruel? <laughs> Two time main event final tablists. There are very few. She made mm -hmm. I had to double check that. Maybe he. He definitely had something in the interim that was pretty cold. <coughs> I think it was that. I may be misremembering. I'm, I'm getting old, Ali. Had a recent head injury. Of course, <laughs> we were talking about that actually during the prior frame. No injuries here. As for Shidian's choice with Ace Jack, very much predicated upon the hand and nothing more. Zhugralin, though, showing that he's willing to use these time banks in order to attempt.
to force others perhaps into some higher blinds. But the, we just had a level no, up, so it's an hour. So why yeah. why now? I mean, is there really much to think about with King-8? Yeah, maybe we trying to work out whether it's worth playing. I think we're just best served with the fold here. Especially in in a merit field where players are less fearful of ICM. <laughs> I think you want to go a little tighter. Yeah, I just checked on the head of my volley. He was ninth in the main uh, in Vegas and ninth in the WSOP Europe in the same year. You know, Mark Newhouse and Damian Salas mm -hmm. are the two names that I can safely say have been at the final table of a World Series of Poker main on more than one occasion. Yeah, obviously Mark Newhouse famously finished ninth back-to-back -back years yeah. he? after a yeah. rather famous tweet as well on day one of the second year where he said he was not expletive finishing ninth again. <laughs> <laughs> poker which, gods. which might go down as, like, given what happened, one of the best poker tweets of all time. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll take ninth back-to-back -back years. Oh, yeah. Tens. Barker will take it. At a considerably... Different <laughs> main event, but certainly one that, as you and I have had the privilege of observing, has been not at all shy on memorable moments and entertaining action, courtesy of these warriors that we still have in this Coliseum. Kets are among them with Ace 3 suited now. Yeah, and Ollie, I mean, the most important tournament of the world <laughs> is the one that you're playing at the moment. I like that attitude. You just. A lot. You know, some of these guys <laughs> would have played for much bigger, but you're right here, right now, playing this. And yeah, I love this from Ketzer. Just going after Barker. This is super aggro because it is an under the gun open at an eight handed table. There are some short stacks in the mix though, and he's just well, perhaps thinking Barker off 35 blinds. Here, here's the interesting thing for me, James, is that Barker stepped away from a king queen. Granted, he was in the small blind, but against an under the gun open from Panetti. Mm -hmm. Different stack depth perhaps, but against Barker, he decides with an ace three suited to play it as a three bet. So ideas to collect, things to observe. Yep, that's a good point. It would be a perception that he thinks maybe Barker opens perhaps too wide. And of course the hand itself, ace three suited, just blocking most of Barker's really strongest hands, aces, ace king, ace queen, that want to carry on. These two tens are kind of hating life. I think we just have to call here, Ali. I don't think we can fold here having open off 35. I mean, listen, if, he it wants was, to. if it was someone else other than Korshidi and Arketzer specifically, right. I think we maybe have some different sentiments. But these two guys, we know that this behavior is what we should be expecting of them, what we anticipate will be the order of the day. And so, you, you know, you sympathize with Barca because he's... He's looking out and thinking, ah, I'm not the shortest stack here. There's a lot of money to be made if I can just ladder, but yeah. tens are tens, and so well he will hang tough, but going to play it's it as a flat, James, are yeah. you okay with that yeah, decision? Oh, we, we cannot jam here. Okay. We'll torching it off if we jam. Whoa, my word. Wheel on the flop for Ketza Barker. Wow. Best of luck, my friend. On a board where the ace kings, ace queens do... Have a his, you know, do have a tendency to barrel off here, given they have a gut shot to the wheel. Bark has just been dealt a horrid spot here. You know, there's a fire extinguisher that, for the very first time, I'm observing inside the booth here, and I'm <laughs> very tempted to snap the pin on that thing and just douse the screen, because you need to douse the deck. This is just merciless. As Ketzer C betting 375,000, obviously. This is not the part of the deck that he ever assigns to Barca. Well, Best case, ace, x. What, do you think deuces, fours, and fives no, are calling? No, but I'm no thinking, the, you know, the, the ace, deuce through ace, five suited, certainly potential. You think that Barca hangs tough with those hands? Oh, sorry, pardon me. I thought you meant he's not doing Ketzer on those. I apologize. No, yeah. Ke Ketzer's not thinking Barca's in this neighborhood Correct. whatsoever. Sorry, I, mis I mis misunderstood what you were saying. And, and Barca well aware that his call of the three bet obviously screams strength. Yeah, it's going to be hands like this. Obviously, for that small flop bet, can obviously be all the ace highs he continues with as well. The yeah, ace 10, looking ace for a three. Suit, well, not ace ten, but like certainly ace queen. I think ace king just always jams. Maybe ace king suited peels. But the ace queens will still be in there. And this is dead man walking now without a ten or a pair on the board. There is no path to a victory for Barca. Pot 
at 4.6 million. Yeah, betting a, about a third pot on the turn. Parker, I don't think can go anywhere yet, Oli, because, like I just said, he still has his ace highs that continue mm -hmm. to that size in the flop. Next part of the range that qualifies is certainly hands like this. Whoa. Oh, no. Check raising. What is this? This is like a find out where I am. You know what, James? He's not. He needs to put Oddly a bit more enough, in. but but hang on a second. Oddly enough, a checkman raise here. No, if no, Ketzer plays it as a jam, <laughs> perhaps. Do you think there's a world in which Barca yeah. looks up and thinks this is Jack's plus all day, every day, yeah. and simply folds even, to tens? Not even Jack's plus. I mean, yeah, he folds to a jam here. He has done the old race to find out where I am. Uh, well, I you hope know? Uh, Ketzer might recognize that that's still possible. Obviously, all the hands that Barker has value here, say he has sets, set of nines being the most likely, he's still going to get those on the river as well. So there's no reason, I don't think, here to do anything but cool, unless he thinks Barker's doing something crazy funky with a flush draw and wants to get it in here in case he doesn't bluff the river. I don't see it. I I'm with I you. I just don't see I it. I think Ketzer's clear path here is just the cool. And by the way, if Ketzer does make this flat call, it is certainly... Yeah, he has emblematic of just how sound he is. <sighs> Look at this pot, Ollie. Eight million chips in there. And now getting Barker called. Dead. Yeah, Barca has serious concerns about what he's up against. Yeah. Best case scenario, it's Ace yeah. X diamonds. of diamonds. Yeah. I mean, really, that's the bottom end of the range that takes the heat on the turn. Granted, it wasn't oh, all that hot now. That's save him. Okay, that should save Barca now. On the river. The only hand he could beat that causes check raises is a, exactly as you say, Ali. I don't know that he was doing much betting on the river anyway, James. No, he but he might called. have to check cool some rivers. Yeah, this one I think he can get away, but let's see what Ketzer dials up. I can't imagine it's going to be less than the full 3.2. Correct. Although every now and again, dare I point out, we've seen someone bet less specifically with the intention as of getting called and retaining that player yes. as a deeply short stack, yes. in particular by the big stacks. It's a very nuanced sort of deal. Yeah, you're, but you're right, Ali. And this is a perfect spot for that kind of move. And I think that's what he's done here, actually. He's oh, bet really small. Man. He's actually bet considerably small now. He's just desperate to get paid off here. He thinks he's up against this kind of hand, I think. And he is just giving him the, you can have 1.5 to spin up, pal. Best of luck. The parlay of the flat on the turn in the face of the check raise, and now this sizing on the river speaks volumes as to the caliber of player we're observing here in Felipe Ketzer, James. Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, you played the way. You played your hand in a way that you've massively over Oh, he's called! I don't like Kelly, but he's called. Flopped wheel. Can I throw up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you certainly can throw up if you wish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Prefer not to be toward the felt, but in any case, cats are unbelievably fortunate there. And really played it to perfection. Oh, absolutely. I thought perhaps the check raise on the turn would be a path to an escape for Barca, but really the only escape that was afforded him was the sizing on the river by Ketzer, who makes the maximum and retains Ali. In that frame there, you see over two thirds of the chips in play. <laughs> Just in those, those two, two guys, seats. yeah. Sammy would Barker. you lay a price that it would be those two heads up with eight left? It seems reasonable. Hard to get the the old reverse forecast though. I mean, you know, you're looking out. You're saying it's two thirds of the chips in play. Obviously, we should expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the favorite combination. It's certainly not a favorite. No. So much play to be played. Ali, we've seen plenty of finals before, but neither of these players can get to heads up, potentially. You've seen it all before. Well, I thought you had, and then you saw yesterday's play, and it blew your mind. So, I'd never seen a day <laughs> like yesterday, ever. <laughs> I just saw you tweet something to that effect for the yeah. link to yesterday's stream. Told yeah. everyone, just watch it, trust me. Yeah. And then people took umbrage with the fact that I had linked an 11 and a half hour stream. <laughs> yeah, so then the I, did, I did take a photo, by the way, of our highlight oh. sheet and post that in the same thread so that people could shuttle around and okay. find the choice cuts. Ah, I like you doing your own work. You know. Ketzer, back at it. Jack 10, an opener. 
Mograni with ace 10. Delightful spot here. Off suit, though. Oh! Jamming over the top. Two and a half million. A little over 12 bigs. Seems all right. Y against this range, yes. A little scary in the, you know, Valka's on six blinds. I mean, is it, ICM, thing. is it ICM irresponsible with the pay uh, jump of, you know, 12 I think, grand? I think we've seen already that Mokrani set out his stall early. He, yeah, yeah. he raised up with those sevens. He called the open with the queen ten. I don't think he's too concerned with ladders. He's playing chip accumulation game still. So this is going to fit the MO. Would I advocate it in a what wins us the most money strategy? I think probably not. But if we're trying to maximize our chance of winning the tournament, it's fine. So, uh, that's a small that's blemish. thing I love about this play. You don't, like, most tournaments you go, people are just trying to maximize their dollar equity. It's some exceptions, but here there are another players who are just, they're just desperate to win one of these tournaments. They just want to win a merit event. It's not necessarily all about the money for them. You give up a few dollars to perhaps leave with a trophy. Especially when the trophies here aren't that big, Ali. It doesn't cost you a lot to take it home. <laughs> you can fit in the carry on. There have been some obscenely large and not easily transportable trophies throughout the course of the years that I've always wondered, what do people do with these things? I'm, to told, to I'm told that they just bring them on board the plane and stick them in the overhead. I had like to, I mean, brags, but yeah, I had to pay for another case and <laughs> ship my trophy home. Every, every, so, I mean, it comes in a case. It comes in a, a box the size of a suitcase. Yeah, it also comes with more than enough money to ship it. Yeah. Just so you know. It, was <laughs> it didn't hurt. They should include shipping, by the way. They should take it out of the prize pool, whatever the cost of trophy shipping is. I don't is. want to encourage people to take money out of prize pool. No, but I'm just saying, you know, what is it? 50 bucks, 100 bucks? Like, I think nobody will miss that. Jugralin. King Jack offsuit. Is that a Chelsea kit? It is. How do you feel about it, James, as a big Premiership fan of Brighton and Hove Albion? Well, there's certainly a big rivalry developing between the two teams. I was just, there's a reason I ask. But right now, I think most Brighton fans are like... Hey, Chelsea, thanks for the money. Yeah, there was a transfer fee that they collected, which yeah, I'm sure is going to serve them quite well. Obviously, they stole our manager last season. We were upset. Then they took our two best players. They took our best player from last year and our best player from the year before. And they took our out of <laughs> favor goalkeeper. And I'm they've overpaid for all of them. Uh, I'm sure that they regard Brighton at this point as sort of the uh, farm team for their, yeah. their club. But... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, the, the farmers are driving around in Rolls Royces <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Bloom and company, of course. Shugrelian's open with the King Jack. Barca briefly <laughs> thought about it with the King 10 suited. Was well served to get out of there. Yeah, just committing here. Notice it's obviously putting half a stack in just in case action kicks off behind. I've been very impressed with uh, Shugrelian. James and all the occasions in which I've watched him play just seems so technically sound. Very much in his natural environment, dare I say. Mm. <coughs> and you don't get a lot of players flying the Kazakhstan flag in global poker tournaments. Obviously not the most populous nation to begin with, but just in general it's nice to see poker reaching into Central Asia. Oh, People talk about different sports and different activities being global. I can't think of one that's more global than poker. Maybe chess. Because it's been around for so long and never but poker surely right up there. No, I mean football has to be far and away the most global sport. I oh mean. yeah, but that's a real sport, Ollie, where you have to run around <laughs> and kick a ball. <laughs> it's not one of these sports. Gentlemen. <laughs> Champion. Champion, gentlemen. Champion, gentlemen. <laughs> Brief hold up here. <laughs> look at, look at cats are just you know black coffee. Day at the office. Yalla, yalla was likened to a Bond villain by 
David Lappin, I understand. <laughs> he just, you know, that me. Anyone who wears a turtle neck, I just describe as a, a Bond villain. It is <laughs> very Bond villain chic. <coughs> I've seen you adorn in such ways. I have. I'm a fan, I confess. Bond or turtlenecks, or both? Both. Although I like the more recent Bonds. I'm not a classic Bond guy. I think really? View, view to a Kill, maybe? Uh, was wow. View to a Kill wasn't great. Is that the one with the blimp? In, uh, yeah. yeah. I think it's because it was in San Francisco that I liked it. Oh, you liked that one? Okay. Yeah. 450, as Panetti like likes the look of Ace Queen. It's like me, a big fan of The Rock. Not the actor, but the, the film. Oh, yeah. Escape I like from the Alcatraz. Rock. Yeah, Anything yeah. with San Francisco and you've yeah, it's got I you, mean, yeah? That's where I'm from. Why wouldn't it be? Ooh, Horshidian on the button. Ace 10 offsuit here. Remember, mm. Ketzer showed respect to an under the gun open from Panetti in orbit ago. Will Horshidian do the same? I think this is one we do want to attack with. We've seen Panetti open a, what, three hands, I think, maybe. I'd be taking the spot. And I like it. Making yeah. a uh, 1.4. I thought it was 1.5, but it's all good. I might go slightly larger, actually, just because Panetti is supposed to be playing pretty tight. We want to make it really hard for him with hands like this. The offsuit combos. I mean, now we, you know, oh, he, he has to kind of proceed as a call, but he's hating life. Because all of a sudden, he could bust out in eight. <laughs> that he could. He looks like he might fall. Wow! Okay. That is extreme deference being shown to ICM it, pressure. Exactly. By Panetti there. He hates to do it. He knows the ace-queen performs well against the range, specifically with the button three-bet coming from mm -hmm. the chip leader. But even he cannot escape the laws of ICM. And being the player that he is, as I pointed out, results dating back to 2008, he's been down this road before. Mm. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And when you're looking out at the stacks and the pay jumps and the 342,000 up top, it's okay to step away. Yeah. I don't hate it, Ollie. It, it looks a lot worse than it is. You know what's interesting? Is the same sort of player profile that caused Ketzer to concede with King Queen, granted small blind, to Panetti instead of three bet. It's the same thing that you can leverage to, to tell yourself if I do three bet, I've got a guy who's also capable of laying down. Yeah. Because he recognizes... Yeah. But the, the, the counter to that point is, if he's folding the ace-queen here, well, so obviously last time the open was Jack, I believe, was it Ollie? Last time he opened? Mm. Well, ace-king. Ace no, he had ace-king ace -king, and then yeah. ace-queen. Yeah, but this just goes to show. So he's folding ace-queen there, but in his mind he's thinking, well, that's kind of like the worst hand I've got here. Like he's just not opening anything light. So that's the reverse strategy for it. So you can try and take advantage of me if you want, but most of the time I'm going to have a hand I want to play for all of it with. There's two ways. You either have to incorporate some flats and four bets, or you just play a lot tighter in those seats. And he's back clearly in the lot play a lot tighter strategy. Back to back Queen Jacks, the suited variety for Air John, the opener. Dominating Panetti's Queen 7, I don't think. Christoph. It's going to be all that interested in continuing. But we defer. <laughs> all smiles in Camp Air John as he's able to get one through. <laughs> Those do feel like big accomplishments when you're seated to the right of the two big stacks. <coughs> Just difficult. 
seat draw there. Barca, obviously, direct right of the two big stacks, the worst spot to be in. around to Ketzer's cutoff, 6-3 suited. Keeping his bearings, looking up at the tournament clock. Haven't called Hasbani's name as yet here. He's been fully a spectator. I think, did he get one? Did he play one hand, I think? Got one through, maybe? But yeah, you're right. Only 17 hands in there, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like more. Somehow, yeah, but... Because there have been some fun spots. Yeah. Obviously, the hands at the start of the frame taking a lot longer because there was some clock manipulation going on. Sure. Um. Panetti getting to leverage his chip advantage in this exchange. to run this alley. No, the sizing, by the way, well yeah. over 3x here. Yeah, these are the ones that you're just trying to dissuade that your opponent from ever peeling. You're trying to make them decide for a jam or, or fold. And those facts are not lost on Mokrani, which is exactly why he's mm -hmm. deliberating yeah. with this ace-8. I, I like that. I think the, the super premiums either limp a lot no, or raise a little smaller <coughs> against the 15 big blind stack, I think. Once he goes this size, it's very much trying to dissuade calls. It's more the garbage. It's this this hand is just one I wouldn't necessarily expect to see in that range from Panetti with the ace deuce. That hand tends to like to limp more. Carry that all of that early, of course, with balanced strategies, that kind of stuff. More. Three million one hundred seventy-five. One two five two eight. Three million three one hundred seventy-five. Two million three, three, three. million one hundred seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> someone said two million. My crown is like someone correct him Excuse quickly, me? please, and yeah. say three. <laughs> Definitely would rather just get a fold here. Certainly be up against hands with better equity than this ace deuce. Well now Panetti looking over after having asked for this count. Ace Deuce just doesn't perform all that well against virtually any two no. that we would expect Makrani to be jamming here. So, if we're going to get this in, Ali, with the Ace Deuce, I think we're much better served with just jamming for the 15 blinds. Make hands like Ace Agreed. Eight, maybe fold. Agreed. Dissuade hands like you know Jack Ten Suda that might have just jammed here over our open <laughs> from cooling. Nice pick up there for Makrani. And he obviously a bit irritated by the development, but Bring me cold water, please. can fight on. Queen three in succession. All find the waste basket. Gets her. A seven off suit. Mm -hmm. 
to go. King nine suited now for Jugrel and James 3.3 million back. He's already got 400 in there in the form of the big blind and the big blind ante. We saw him deliberate with the king earlier yeah. in a similar spot where a pot had been opened. I think this one, I, I'm not 100% sure on the chip stacks around. I think this one we do want to defend. I think we've got a 1.5 million stack maybe. Started this one with about 18 bigs. Yeah, this hand just plays with a nice enough equity in. Ketz is obviously going to be a very light opening once the chip leader falls on his right. I say chip leader. He, I guess he may just be in front now. But either way, the two of them have got all the chips. Oh, wow. Plays it as a jam. Like it. Because you can make King-10, King-Jack fold here early. Yeah, it's risky, of course. Fact's not lost on him, but he summons the courage. And he's now, obviously, you can make an ace fold as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, ace-9 no, no. might fold here. Will fold, in fact. No, Nicely done by Jugrolin. <laughs> Going after that super wide range. <laughs> you know, I need to fall. <laughs> day after day, they come for your lunch money, and then one day... You show up at school and you tell yourself, today is the day that I'm going to stand up to that big bully. Was that the day you broke your arm, Ollie? I, I was the bully. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I can't see it, but sure. No, it's not my ammo. I see, I see you being the, the smart-ass kid that got the occasional smack. Somehow I, I was definitely the smart-ass kid. Somehow I avoided the smacks, though. Oh yeah, too smart. Or just fleet-footed. <laughs> yeah, I well, know oh that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not today. Barco with just five blinds and an ace. It's under the gun, it's eight-handed, <laughs> oh, no. it's grim. But he may just decide to run it. Going to be in the big blind next hand, of course. Going to be posting one, having four back, one in. It's not even a spot where you could kind of do the half a stack thing. Because half a stack is barely a raise anyway. <laughs> Just to maximize the old fold equity. You know, as, the as the stats go around, uh, I like that Shugrol and Jam even more because he's a little bit adrift of the rest. Only the one super short. Recognizing that light opening range. Cats up. Oh, Panetti. All right. This is probably definitely one we want to play. How do we want to play it, though, That's in the cutoff with Ace Jack? As a flat, it looks strong like enough as is. Panetti's looking, inquiring into the big blind stack. <laughs> yeah, you don't really want to get no. squeezed, but you don't necessarily expect a lot of that to go down either, but just because of the laws of the implicit collusion, wanting to have multiple right. stacks up against the all-in player to but eliminate them. Yeah, exactly that. We have to play it. I'm not sure if I'm all in. Oh, he oh, plays he just, it as a jam. Yeah, I'm just see what the James. stacks are behind, because that might be just fine. Yeah, four million, four million, four million, I think. So yeah, the twenty blinds. It it just makes it like a ha what's a hand like ten's gonna do now? Right. I have to fold. Especially when you're guaranteed a visit to the roulette wheel for Barca <laughs> yeah. and that possible pay jump realization. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, for Barca here, who ran tens into ace three unsuccessfully, <laughs> is dominated on his feet in a 2.6 million chip pot, hoping. Oh, perhaps some prayers <laughs> may be answered if a four or a five trickle off the deck. <laughs> Anxious moments for the Frenchman. Seven. Doesn't help, so it's going to be the seven outs. And that's not one of them. 
That'll do it for Sammy Barca of France. 235,000 in career live tournament earnings, 131K, <coughs> his high water mark. Not going to be bettering that here today I, I <laughs> as GG's. the eighth place finish here in the Western Series main event. We'll award him a tidy 45,600, but nothing more as the field realizes a roughly $12,000 pay jump courtesy of the second casualty thus far here at this final table. So then the beneficiary is Panetti, seven remaining, and that 700K that he got bullied off of rapidly restored, and yep. then some. Yeah, nicely done. Down the at the right moment. Gets to knock another one out. Everyone climbs up the ladder a little bit. 57K in the guaranteed payout. That's nice. We're getting through them, Ali. The all-ins are not running too good. It's the case with two tables left. Myself and Dave are in here, and it's every time. My, pardon me, myself and you were in here, weren't we? And every time there was an all-in, mm -hmm. we lost a player. Air John. Limping the small blind mm -hmm. with this 10-8. Obviously absent Barca. He is now directly to the right of the two big stacks. And these garbage hands are the ones that like to raise Ali, they especially sure when you're the chip daddy. That's what he's going to do here. Wow, Ajan springs the trap with 10-8. He knew what he was up to. Limp jamming it over the top. Well played, sir. Well played. That happened so quickly, it caught me very off guard, I, James. I, it's funny because I thought... I didn't want to say it beforehand because it, it's not like silver approved, but I thought we might see it as an exploit. And I look, I can raise blind, I look, I put them in two, and I raise. Problem. Raise blind. You problem. I mean, it's more fun if I raise blind. Yeah, had a chance. Ballsy. I, I, I love it. Check seven you know I love it, Oli. And it's very unexpected, but so I, profitable. I mean, when it goes wrong, it's a disaster. Right. But, but you know, I mean, you're taking your chances. It's calculated risk. Yeah, I just love the adjustment. You're thinking this guy's going to raise way too wide. Look at that Panetti folding two fours. I like that. He certainly is approaching this in a very good way, Ali. I agree. Yeah, I, I like, I just like the adjustment. I like when people play super exploit, Ali, and he's got this bang on. But this man's going to be up to no good very often. Why you fault every time against me? <laughs> I, I have a bad card. He's better than me. I guess you can tell your chip to change position <laughs> to the second place. He's better than me, bro. Why I, I wait good cards against I'm lucky, I'm lucky. I wait. He's good on the internet, you know? Ah. Not in real <laughs> 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 In real life, I guess you're better. <laughs> Try again. Why'd you give him a walk? Oh, he's a good online player. Yeah, but <laughs> what does that mean here? <laughs> Love it. Zugralin just trying to stir the pot between the two guys who got over yeah. 100 blinds. Why don't you guys get it in? <laughs> get Ace, King, and Tenzin. Go on. I dare you. So. Well, Shidian, by the way, is saying, uh, no, he's better than me. Yeah. A lot of times... That's disingenuous, but yeah. perhaps, I mean, certainly. No, Ketzer's looked very steely in all situations. Yeah, I I think Ketzer coming to the final table probably, as I said, the my favorite, my favorite yeah, probably the most accomplished or the most, most competent <laughs> table on wood in that stack okay. to the left of the other big stack. Mm. Great cool. position. Is Shooting going for it again? Cutting out chips. Oh, he has just called this time. Okay. Can't free bet the guy every time, can you, Ali? You've got to show him a little bit of respect. So the flat from the suited connector by Horshidian. 
It's going to feel a little peculiar to Panetti, who has at least the Queen of Diamonds. Interactions with the Seven of Diamonds for the button. Panetti. feel like he was going to check almost everything. Yeah, you, he. this is the thing in these situations. You do have to play every hand super cautious. So, so many more hands that would normally that that's all lead become check calls, check folds. You always want to you want to shallow the oh sorry, deepen the stacks. If you can get one less three of betting in, it's good for you. And here we go. Shudian just gets the bet very wide here with three in a row, three to a flush. Seems a reasonable one. Panetti, I assume Panetti has another diamond behind there, having open under the gun. All two queens. It's a hand like. Ace, Queen of Diamonds going to continue here. Two Queens continues. Let me start looking at the Queen, Jack of Diamonds. Queen, Ten of Diamonds type hands. They may want to call. It's <coughs> tough, but against the player playing as <coughs> liberally as Shedian. He might just do so. Well, he does call once. Oh, Diamond on the turn. Delivering the flush draw to Horshidian's doorstep. Panetti may have a better flush draw. We don't know. Yeah, but much harder now, of course. But he, but he could be in there with King, Queen. Could have yeah. King, Queen of Diamonds. Certainly has queens at this point. Yep. So ace queen now less likely given maybe the ace queen off. Unless it's ace queen with ace of hearts, maybe. Yeah, it's really specifically those three hands I have to imagine that Ye Panetti would be producing at showdown. Qu qu queen jack of diamonds maybe takes one off on the flip as well, or queen ten of diamonds, then yeah, ace queens, king queens, and queens. I mean, I've named basically every combination of queen eggs you could play here. No, but, but I mean, you know, just. Nice. Shedian recognizing that's actually not a good card for the barrel. Oh my word, we could have flush over flush here, Ollie. Well, the river is a much better card, and what a delightful mystery for us to not know what that side card is for Panetti. If he reaches for chips and bets, then surely we have to imagine it's a queen high flush. Yeah, I could go small with ace queen. I could go small even with king queen, like a block size. Let's check it. Oh, Shedian now. Has played. He kind of. He probably expects his opponent would think he'd bet diamonds on the turn. So I think it's going really big here. Why are you faking like you look at your strike and then it's like, why? Mm. I think to value, but no. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. You know what's crazy is that Horshidian mm, actually big. trying to disguise the Love. strength of his hand. Love the bet. By asking the question of Panetti. <laughs> Bang on pop. Love this. You're supposed to buff big hit. You don't really have many flushes. Like I say, you think he would barrel that flush draw on the turn <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Panetti will have to call with a screen. Okay, uh, I think... Queens? Queens or king-queen. Has, has to be queens, maybe king-queen. Yeah. As Those played, are. there really are no other explanations. <laughs> <laughs> you value the different... <laughs> <laughs> oh, a good king. Okay. Ah, there you go. Said it a good king. So a brief pause, giving us an opportunity to look at the updated chip counts, the shortest... Among them, belonging now to Antoine Hasbani. Yeah, and Panetti now really in a much more difficult situation. You see there a clear band on his own in third place. Yeah, I mean, two big stacks, neck and neck. Panetti on an island, and then Erjan Chugralin Mokrani, the next band down, and sort of Hasbani, a click back of that. They're all actually kind of in that have to, have to fold a lot, but particularly Panetti, because... He needs to outlast a few of those guys before he really wants to risk busting. This music is getting me going, Ali. It's like the final shootout. Should I leave you alone in here? Or? Not, that, not in that way, Ali. Okay, <laughs> just... <laughs> Thankfully. Different kind of pistol. <laughs> <laughs> so why you don't raise me play flip, so? I believe Panetti inquiring as to why it is that Horshidian did I not three bet him pre-flop. I think was Horshidian's claiming he had a really good hand and there's some back and forth there. So right. whilst, whilst we're listening to the music, there must have been like a... Oh, yeah. what are you saying? You had like ace-queen, ace-king? A little king? debrief, yeah. yeah. Right, come on now. 
We know that's not true. I tell you what, Keto's getting folded to enough here by Horshidian. There's almost like a mutual respect here. He's not taking every spot he could. Letting well, to get a few raises in. Here he goes with Jack 4 offsuit. Panetti, ace 10 in the big. Again, just has to play every hand so cautiously now, even more so than the hand before. Don't see any reason to do anything but call here, are we? Again, just play passively down the streets, even with some strong hands. And out flop the ace 10, as Ketzer's done here. Yeah, see this hand for Panetti? These are the, usually the hands you want to continue with. Like ace 10. Oh, Ketzer just checking back. This is a bit grimy, but the Queen of Hearts gives him. Baby flush draw to go with the jacks, but Panetti presented with the Broadway gutty. I don't think he's going to be interested in barreling, as we can see the check, predictably. Bobby Lord pairing queen Ketzer. on the end. Ketzer check both flop yep. and turn, James. I, I think, obviously, just checking flop is an exploit. I think you just want to bet the flop for most hands, but deciding with the top pair and a, and a low, low heart to check back. Turn makes a lot of sense. It could have been really small on the turn to try and get value from a big heart. Checking back. Trying to perhaps elicit a bluff. But Panetti may be thinking he's up against a, a worse ace high here as played. So happy to check. And now faces a decision on the end. But you're just suspicious. Like, why is Ketsu, who's got a big stack, not just C-betting the flop? Like, surely if he's bluffing Ali, he would just bluff flop. Fair questions. Netty putting him on something maybe like eights or nines. All this bad jack. <coughs> Must feel like he's getting roughed up a little bit. You know, you do suspect well, some abusive behaviours, but it's a good fold. Yeah, it's easy to fall into the trap there of like, well, I've got a really good hand here, and my ace side the way this was played out. And Kid yourself that this guy's bluffing, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. It has been a very blemish free resume thus far for Ketzer here at this final table. Gideon, pocket fours, hijack open. <coughs> Another time. It's never easy for Panetti. Pocket nines in such great shape here. Yeah, I think we just want to call again. Disaster to blast in seventh. You know, we we can be up against all sorts in a in a three bet like works a high percentage of the time, but just w the times it doesn't work is disastrous. And Mokrani with two threes in the big blind, you see, incentivized potentially to jam when Panetti just calls. But Panetti is still going to call with some very strong hands like this. So I think best just to flick it in, try and catch that three. Yeah, the small blind fruit does feel ripe for the squeezing. Yeah, it's not it's not normal small blind fruit though. It's, <laughs> it's small blind fruit peeling again as the third stack peeling against the chip leader. Yeah, it's a very different scenario. Oh, I love poker so much. How this all changes around depending on stack sizes. Now the ace ten deuce board. All three players have got a flush draw working in mm -hmm. conjunction with their pair. Obviously, there will be some deference on this board texture by both blinds over to the big bully with 21.9 million. I like a bet here, Ali. I think 
Panetti's never going to really raise you. He definitely makes him better fold. Four hundred and fifty k. The c bet sizing into one point four. Yeah. Facing two over cards, a drift with the spade. Yeah, this is I could certainly see both these guys finding the muck. Yep. Yeah. I think that's exactly what's going to happen here, Ollie. That's why I like the bet. And Panetti's going to have even some ten x that doesn't want to play. Nicely done. Well, very well played by. Wish it didn't. Well played by all three. Mm -hmm. it's flawless. There was some potential for some missteps there. But. You know what I'm upset about, Ollie? What's that? Actually, there's two things. One, you might agree with me, and one, you're going to groan. Number one, no one's rocking a merit card protector. Those, oh yeah, those turtles are out there waiting to get used. Okay. Ah, blinds up. What's the other? Well, let's talk about blinds up, Ollie. Look at that pinch it has on the stacks. 125, 250 what we're playing now, and you're absolutely right. Even the big stacks diluted somewhat. Obviously, 90 bigs roughly for <laughs> each of them. They're not concerned, but Panetti down to 27, and then sub-20 big blind stacks in four spots here. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, I, I thought we were going to be in for kind of a boring final table to start with, given how deep it is. But because of the distribution of stacks, we actually have got to a really interesting ICM sensitive. I mean, it was always going to be ICM sensitive, but it's ICM sensitive and shallow, which makes it a lot more exciting because suddenly all these stacks sub 20, there are a lot of interesting spots, whether we just open jam, whether we three bet jam with certain combos. Nearly. Oh, we should not that's a good hand. Ace King up to 500. And when these big active stacks are dealt in, that's when trouble brews. English big you in the hand. <laughs> yeah, Panetti, no interest in these two fours, surely. I, I, I like how he's approached this. He's actually run pretty bad. If you look how his chip stacks dwindle a little, little bit, but. He's been dealt a number of not super hard spots, Ali, but tricky ones. Oh, hang on. He's reaching for chips. Four. Five. This, this one I don't like. Oh. Hmm? He's changing his mind, perhaps. All those sub twenty. Yeah, well done. He, I think his initial thought was to fold, then he almost went to play, and then thought better of it. One four would have been busy, by the way, as we just observed, finding the muck. Pico on him with a hand that does play okay. Obviously, one of those sub twenty stacks. They're all pretty snug. Slightly looking at ladders more than chip accumulation, but against the range, it's going to be super wide. So I have to run the 9 6 and find the best of it on this flop. 10 9 3. Second pair, backdoor clubs. That's what your Grawlin's armed with here ahead of this ace king. And Horshidian playing as a check back here, James. And like being it. delivered an ace. Not just any ace, are we? Ace of clubs, which does give Jugralin a flush draw. <coughs> I mean, must bet for Horshi to here with range at this point, having checked back flop. I do kind of like a bigger sizing. And this has just gone half pot. You can go a little larger even. Well, and it's going to have a lot of hands that still want to continue on this 10 9 comp complexion.
call and a miss on the end for Jugralin. Now will Horshidian go for value? The Jack of Diamonds a little bit pesky for the Ace King. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we do anything but bet. We just go on all in. Chugoran is going to have plenty of Ace X that can pay us off. Maybe some of the strongest 10 X. I don't think we're too worried about straight to bar 7 8 and Queen 8 of clubs and then. Everyone winning, but I want to see your cards now. Oh. Not everyone, Lord. I want to see them now. <laughs> Is this him sort of explaining a potential check back with a hand yeah. as strong as ace king? Yeah. So and if we're funny because he's if we're to believe him, and that it is truly the product of saying I'm willing to leave meat on the bone and not value bet this ace king just because I really want to know what you're up to, he made an investment there. But maybe from the light to reflect. Yeah, I don't you really got different thoughts. Thing. I don't really think that's a thing there though. <laughs> But it's quite funny if he says that and then bets, because he's basically saying, when he says that, he's he's saying, if you call me, if I bet and you call me, you're you've got worse than me. <laughs> it's like there's another way. The other way he sees his cards now is he bets and Trigolan calls with a better hand, <laughs> right? It's kind of funny line to say. I expect it won't be the last that he delivers. No, there's been a lot from him. Chirping, as Bonnie does not make a meal of pocket threes. Oh, no. Forgive me. He is declared all in. I thought mm. it found the bin. That one snuck up on me. <coughs> it's had enough. that way. Kets is raising super wide, which is correct. 2-9-75. Our blinds just gets a can't call this. It's supposed to be much tighter range than this, and of course, doesn't hurt him to keep these short stacks in. Nice pick up there for Hasbani, who has been perhaps the least involved player, dare I say, here at this final table thus far has enjoyed a couple of ladders. <coughs> Pocket nines. On the heels of the threes. Yeah, I think just jamming here is yep. best. Or <coughs> maybe making it two million, but. Yeah, like a pot committing size. Right. In case of emergency. Macron is going to be a customer here. And here we he go. is covered, by the way, James. Yeah, but Hasbani only just covering as well by, what, three blinds. Mm. See, Macron just taking a moment to get the count, trying to, I guess. Feign a bit of weakness. I'm not sure. I don't think we really want to, end, really want to incite anyone else to come in anyway. Because hmm? we can be dominating Hasbani here. 4.1. Should <laughs> you? 4.1. Yeah, yes. Of course. Nice hand, but. Obviously, this action only it's shrunk up massively. Would have been interesting against just the open jam. 
16 blinds. But with Mok Mokrani, he's just got his check beat here nearly always. You're lucky if maybe he's got 10s. So the ace jack suited would have liked to play under normal circumstances. These, not those. As Mokrani finds himself behind by about 9, 10 percent. Yes, moments for him as the covered stack here in a 7.1 million chip pot. Can Hasbani go back to back and be rewarded for his patience? The flop will bring it into focus, and that focus is upon the King of Diamonds. A shake of the head there from Antoine as Mokrani is well out in front. No diamond for Hasbani either, just hunts a nine alone for the time being. Ten. Under wow. normal circumstances, the jack would have worked. Of course, Mokrani blocking with the ace. No straight draw to speak of. Yes, Bani is Ali left with just three blinds and is in the big blind next hand. So oh. the others would have liked to see a ladder there, but there's a very good chance they see a ladder on the next hand. Yeah. It's nice to see two of the smaller stacks getting it in there for the rest. <laughs> so demoralizing, isn't it? Huge flip there yeah. for McGrani. I, I can't even begin to calculate the equity of that. You lose, you're out. You win, you're a a away from the bottom, kind of tied third place. Could be a big dollar value there. No, no. 850. Oh, pardon me. Haspani was under the gun, not in the big blind this hand. Has decided to put it in. Very much making sense, Ali. He's found a big one. King, queen. Should crawl in. Thinking about it here with an ace. Wow, he is going for it. Thinking I'm, I'm a little in here. surprised, yeah. Yeah, he th I guess he thinks Hasbani is just putting it in with any two. Well, looking to avoid two random oh. cards the very next hand in the big blind right. with the big blind Annie. So, Jugralin pouncing with an ace five. But, I mean, he was Hasbani was going to get called here. Jugralin could have allowed it to happen behind. Right, because he's big stacks, sir. Yeah. Oh, my word, we could have a double elimination, Ali. Horshidian waking up with ace queen suited, and this is not what you want to see when you're Jugralin. These are the risks. And obviously, worth noting, Jugralin does have more chips than Hasbani. So when he does this, he would secure the ladder up if Horshidian wins the pot. But there are obviously scenarios where he goes out here and Hasbani doubles. <laughs> wow, I think this is a little optimistic. So, a double elimination potentially on our hands. Note that Khorshidian dominates both Hasbani yeah. and Jugralin in a three million chip pot. Yeah, Erjan sitting there going, this is quite nice. <laughs> Just let her up two more me? spots here. The dream for him. Seven left, 56k, 57k, pardon me. Five left, it's 85k. Look at the rail. Jugralin needs to find a five. And oh. he's found not one, but two oh. of them. The injustice. Wow. Ace of hearts as well, just in case. Yeah, no route to victory for the other two here. Hasbani could make the running kings. Yeah, All right, are we? Now he draws dead, of course. <laughs> Four of hearts, no less. Hasbani's queen of hearts won't do the trick. And five's full. Look at the Kazakh boys celebrating. Wow. Not to be overlooked, of course. The lack of mercy being shown to Antoine Hasbani James, who GGs. took pocket nines and king queen in back to back spots and ends up a seventh place finisher. Certainly made the most of what he was given. But the Lebanese national with 144,000 in career tournament earnings coming into this one will haul in 57,000. $300 and leave us with six-handed action and a pay 
out of 69K secured. Next jump, 16,000 and change if you can work your way into the top five. <laughs> Chigualin, wow. What a move over that was. Finding the five, not just one, but two. Was about to be out in sixth. Now is a healthy stack. Nolly, things are getting pretty deep all of a sudden. Makarani, seven million. Chigualin, around the same. Arjun now the shortest, I believe, with 4.2. Obviously, we've got the two 20 million plus stacks here. Do you know how much you have? Feels like we're playing this final table on two times speed. <laughs> you know, I don't think we would have expected to be playing six-handed as deep as kind of a lot right. of these guys were. But, you know, every hour those jumps come. Shorties haven't been able to spin, really. Yeah, losing three players in the first hour and a bit. So it perhaps. wasn't something I was going to predict. Well, listen, we thought we were going to lose two in that last pot instead, somehow. Yeah. Drew Garland takes a bite out. The all-ins have run fairly bad, I suppose. The situations haven't been kind to the short stacks. <laughs> that one, the first How deviation. Although we still oh, lost a player in the hand. Thank you. Yeah, there was still one bust out, but of course Shidian would be a bit disgusted by ace five versus ace queen not delivering two pay ladders. How amazing would that be? He just picked up. He'd have another seven million on his stack. Be just under half the chips in play. Yeah, a bit of a runaway freight train scenario potentially, as he would put. A good bit of distance between himself and Ketzer, who obviously wants to keep pace and not end up one of the abused. Yeah. I mean, Ketzer obviously still with a nice spot, Five. given that he has a whole host of chips and the, and the right seat to have them in. Shukralin maneuvering. Well, now. he's performed well when he was dominated, as we observed moments ago. Yeah. This Can he get away with it again? A7 suited, a raise to 500,000. Erjan, he's king suited, 4.2 million behind. Seems like an easy one to jam this early for 17 blinds. Does not jam, though. Oh, just okay. makes uh, it a cool 2 million, yeah. Again, always just giving yourself that out in case it goes berserk behind. Look at this Panetti with ace king. Suddenly he's been dragged into the mix and we'll like this spot. Ace King performs very nicely against Urjan's sort of sub-20 big blind rejamming range. However, of course, he will be looking at this thinking, wow, could I actually bust out here if Shugodon wakes up with it? But by jamming here, of course, with his Ace King over that three bet jam or effective jam, Shugodon would just have to fold so much good stuff here. I mean, does he? would he want to call off with Jax? I don't think so. <laughs> Wait, can I Another ace king behind for Panetti. Oh. We saw just him saw, moving all in. I just in. saw Shukralin slide forward a bunch of chips, but it was just to get changed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is he just you snapping this off with yeah. ace seven? No mm -hmm. shot. So, to you? the chips do oh. get in. Double Seldom will it be something other than a chop, but Why the advantages are Air Johns. Why have you said that? Would you like to book a non-chop outcome? No, but okay. Just don't mention it. All right, you're right. Not necessarily. There's the King of Diamonds working for Panetti. Hang on. Still not. Still not He's got the free roll. Don't do it dirty, Ali. <laughs> Why do you mention this? 9.3 million and a big advantage suddenly for Panetti, who covers Air John. Not like this. This can't happen. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe, everyone. <laughs> John looks like he was pretty comfortable throughout, but I, for one, was certainly ready to take responsibility. You, you, when you see the four flush happen, sometimes these ace king, ace king is one thing. But when, when the other player had ace king suited, it feels just even more unjust. It's like, you know, I'm going to ask you if you can think of the dirtiest. Both players had the same oh, hand. Come on. Go ahead. There's only one. El Jefe and Conor Drennan. and yes. Aces v Aces. Million dollar buy in tournament. It's going to take something to top that. Is it the worst beat of all time? No, but it has to be. The, it, if it was queens v queens, it wouldn't be exciting. It's aces v aces in a million dollar buying tournament, and one gets there. And also, let's be honest, the one who doesn't need the money out of the tomb. <laughs> like if yeah. There's, if there's justice in this world, 
Yeah, the, the young, aspiring poker pro yeah. <laughs> would win that one. As opposed to the billionaire. Owner right. Of poker Go, Carrie Katz. You know what? Remember what year that was? 2014, 15, yeah. somewhere around there? I think it was the first one, wasn't it? So Yeah. It was the first million dollar tournament. I remember when they announced that tournament. Everyone had their opinions of it. And I was like, well, let them do whatever they want to do. It's not going to affect me. Was that the one eventually won by Antonio Sfandiari? It was. Yeah, yeah I thought, well, ah, let these people play a million dollar tournament. Won't bother me. And this is when it was way bigger than anything that ever happened before. Next thing you know, Ali, I had about 40k in action in that tournament. <laughs> I didn't get anything back. Considerably l smaller investments being made by you as evidenced by <laughs> the way in which you hitched your wagon to our Andrew Headley here in this main event where he finished 30th, our fourth member of the booth, which is a three-man rotation. Yeah, so you didn't get to share the booth with him this trip because you and he were effectively the same yeah, person. Yeah, tagged out. The two A's. Listen, fruitful for him yeah. and for you, as it turns out. Meanwhile, blind versus blind here between mm -hmm. Makrani and Jugralin. Disinterest thus far on the 10 10 5 board. Goes check, check. Three on the turn. Don't think we'll be seeing chips. This is like the first normal game. hand we've seen for a while. Just a blind on blind encounter. Limped. Wine ranges. Players having to think about how they want to approach this. And look at this Makrani going for the delayed bet. Bluff. The thing is that once you, yeah. say, when that, you say that, yeah. if you make the call, obviously it, it really affects the action. Yeah, they've been yeah. very talkative this table. I think perhaps like just feeding off the fact that Horshidian is doing a lot of talking himself as a chip mm -hmm. leader and has been all day, making kind of loosening up the chat at the table. It's nice to see. Yeah, that one million one drop Ali. Okay. Had a obviously Antonio won it. A key pop for him with about 13 or 14 left because he got aces versus Jason Mercy as kings. Yeah, a little piece of... Uh, That's where some of my, my money was, yeah. Like in the, in the kings there. Was nice. In Thanks. the money, though? Nope. Ouch. The worst thing is, I told Antonio when I saw him about a week later, I went, oh, you know, can't yeah. believe you got aces versus kings. I had a piece. And he said, why didn't you have a piece of me? <laughs> he was selling. I, he didn't tell me he was selling. Uh, <coughs> didn't know he was playing. He goes, oh, I just sold you a piece. I'm like, thanks, buddy. I still, to this day, and I've known the man a long time, and I know people that know him, have no idea how much of himself he had. Yeah, he's None. You, you never was will. It, was it 10%? Right. Was it 50%? Yeah. You know? Cards close to his chest. I mean, he's doing all right for himself, but, you know, that. just how big a launch pad was that particular cash? By the way, it could have been a launch pad for some of the backers, potentially. Right. Knows. Gets her ace deuce suited. Obviously, my boy Trickett got second in that one as well. Raise nice. take it. Did he really? Yeah, it was Trickett. Oh. Well. All right. Mike Sexton min cashing. Or he's get, he might min cash plus one spot. I remember Mike Sexton saying that Sam Trickett is his favorite player in the world now because <coughs> on the bubble, Sam bursted the bubble and did it in the most unnecessary sense. I think he just like called off with King 8 for a jam, or jam from the small with King 8 against the big blind. I can't remember exactly what it was, but the bubble just took no time. Four million around, yes, my friend. Hmm? Four million. Four Mike got five. his $1.3 million dollar cash. It's always nice. Pull 300k. Obviously hoping for better ROI when you put that much on the line, maybe, but not a bad day's I work. I think if I remember rightly, Mike actually got in in a Kind of a weird way, I think. Super high value. Might have been a really high value VIP free roll satellite kind of thing to get in. The guy who won it managed to engineer it, so Mike played it for him, and Mike was playing on a free roll, I think, for 20% or something like that. That's even nicer. Oh, yeah. Might be wrong with that. But. Meanwhile, on the topic of nicer, upgrading to ace-king here. You saw a pause out of the jack-nine. That 
Certainly feels Ooh. more like posturing than anything else. Jugralin, though, on the button, ace 10. And we've already observed the yeah. way in which he has been willing has. to react to Ketzer. And it's on display yet again here. 5.5 million, Ooh. ripping it in. Air John, ace jack suited might have been the one to do it. But oh, wow. He's seen Whoa. enough. Air John in there as well. Remember, he's the guy that limp jammed against Horshinian. And Ketzer, look at this. He's going to laugh, but let's see how he figures this out. That looks super strong from Erjan, just casually flicked it in. Asking for a count, I mean, listen. Double problem. Even if you have some concerns about what Erjan has, look at the upside here, which you Gralin's money in. I, it, uh, you block aces and kings. I can't believe I'm saying this. Don't say he should fold. But this might be a spot where we can fold. Just because Erjan snapped that off. He's never got ace queen. He's never got tens. He's well, he's not supposed to have ace jack either. No, you're right. You're right. MPO adjustments. But I, I, I can see a world where Ketzer folds it. <laughs> uh, we can't discount Shugralin as well, jamming 21, 22 blinds. But look, you've already got a little bit invested. You've got yeah. 21.6 million back, and you've got a shot at an almost triple up here. Yeah, and this could be like a two-pocket pair situation where you're a great shape. I Obviously. say triple up in relation to your investment, so not oh, the entire stack. He's going to fold it. Oh. Wow. 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 Incredible. Look at this situation for Urjan. He's got ace-king to fold, and he's up against ace-ten. Wow. Incredible. And note that Jugralin said ace-queen because he never imagined ace-king would have got out of there. Right. So Erjan earns himself domination of Jugralin by flicking the call in the way that he it, did super. with a hand that really should not be involved. If he tanked, the ace-king calls. It's the fact that he called so fast. Ketzer just thought it had to be super strong. And a king-king-10 flop. Jugralin finds the 10. This is unbelievable. Would have had them... Basically dead, Erjan would have been drawn to a gut shot. What on earth is going on? <laughs> Heart on the turn. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> handshakes, perhaps a little <laughs> bit friendly. No, just Enough a friendly draw development. Gutter to Broadway. A jack would do the trick. Instead, it's a black seven. Wow. What an incredible turn of events. This should be two players out. The second time we should have had a double elimination here at this final table. And instead, once more, Jugralin improbably with a dominated ace ends up I, but I, the beneficiary. I'm on board with the fold of the ace king. I understand why he's done it, Ali. It's not as mad as it looks for 20 blinds. The pace that Urjan put that ace jack in with Create a scenario. He got ace king to fold. He was up against ace 10. Go out on the flop, but actually had decent equity going to the river. Jack, queen, or heart would have done the job. Whew. That's a merit hand if ever I've seen one. How much you play? I have 21, 22. Down to five. 22. Ali, this is going fast. I'm going to need a moment just to process what we saw there. What the F was that? Panetti, two nines in the hijack. Wow, the situation has changed a lot for him. He has secured those ladders up. Everyone now guaranteed 85k. But now he's far from the uh, man in the middle. He's actually towards the bottom of the counts all of a sudden. Predictably taking us upstairs is Panetti now. Yeah, and raising big over 3x. Jugraden <laughs> <laughs> wisely folding the two sevens. So quite over 10 million in chips now. He's got it in with a weaker race. Two occasions.
Fetzer, by the way, still just shell-shocked at the lost opportunity to secure himself and the rest of the field. Two pay ladders. Instead, only one, much like Horshidian before him, was able to be secured as Erjan did pick up 69,000 and change for his efforts. James not to be overlooked. 85,700 for everyone from this point forward. Eric John, by yeah. the way, has tasted victory before. He won the 10K high roller back in 2021 here for 377,000. Did Mustafa, 430K in yeah, the tournament earnings. That's the one that he beat Urjan heads up in the manager's departed. Yep. That was a Party Poker Live event. Mm -hmm. Duke Rollin, what a spot he's got himself in here. It was all in with Ace-5 against Ace-Queen, then all in with Ace-10 against Ace-Jack. Now has over 10 million chips, Ollie. Clear third place. Just incredible. 6.7. All in. All in. Declares Ketzer. Panetti. Hoping to wake up with one. Already down to five. On in what, like thirty five hands? <laughs> Had <laughs> Ketzer taken that pot, he hauls in another 10 million. He becomes the chip leader. And he's playing forehand. Oh, wow. This is what an incredible run that now finds himself on. Just got lucky twice. Now gets dealt this. Ali, there's just no way this doesn't go in. He took down ace queen with ace five. He took down ace jack with ace ten. And it certainly feels as though he's about to be taking down ace king suited with aces. And he'll be basically chip leader. Bet from Horshidian. Absolutely a dream here. Yeah. I'm just trying to work out if Shugrodan wants to play this as a trap. Or whether he just kind of clicks it. I think I like click. This is an insane spin up. Horshidian's just been hyper aggressive in these spots. Earlier on the final table, we saw them. He hasn't had any of them since because the stack depths have been the way they are. But now, finally, going after a 40 big blind stack. Three betting the first opportunity. Might blast off. Clicky sizing here may keep a lot of hands in as well. He has gone for the clicky sizing, Ali. 2.9 million. Horshidian's just going to jam this on yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to play a 20 million chip pot. Aces. Yeah, he's nice the crowd. I've got aces all in, boys. Don't get cocky, by the way. He has no idea what he's going to get shown. Obviously, hey, he doesn't <laughs> care. <laughs> He sees the ace-king. It's the dream scenario. Sometimes aces lose. Ace-king obviously is a dream scenario, but... 22 The range million. was always super narrow to be playing this 22 million chip pot, as you pointed out, Dempsey. So improbable, and somehow Jugralin has spun his stack into a position to... Oh, my word! word! Ten jack queen No! No way! The nuts on the flop for Korshidian! Uh, I should I shoot out uh, two left uh, players to go. Wow, well, you're grown very, very much zen about the matter. Recognizing that he was always wow. on borrowed time. <laughs> that is insane, Ollie. He was I told you. So early, like, I've lost the sand a lot, so he still can lose. There right? you go. Look <laughs> at and zeroing right in on the superstitious side of the equation there. Exactly what you said. So just like that, Demir Jugralin improbably, in the one spot where he had the big advantage, ends up taking the worst of beats. Couldn't even find the chop with a king on the end. Ace is going down to ace king suited. And now, Demir leaves behind four players. He does collect himself. 
$85,700 for his efforts. The rest of the field look playing at for 114.4. And look at, indeed, that big stack of 32 million plus, James, in front of Horshidian. And look at those two stacks, Panetti and Mokrani, now absolutely in a waiting game against each other. 27 big blinds far adrift the other two, but with 27 blinds, this is so deep. Listen, if I'm Horshidian right now looking at dead even stacks at the bottom of this four person leaderboard and a pay jump of 40,000 and change that they are going to be vying for, I'm just going to attack relentlessly. You can put the handcuffs on Ketzer, who obviously doesn't really want to get mixed up with you now, despite being neck and neck with you prior to that exchange. It is just Warhammer time for Horshidian. Has he had to segregate some of his stack out into a an annex there? Or? No, okay. I think that's Ketzer's Reds. <coughs> oh, wow, look at these two guys have just seen ghosts. I mean, they weren't involved, but they had a front row seat. What on earth? Yeah. Yeah, I swear. Nice. <laughs> Only yes. I have bigger. But this Great. is my biggest life. I never run good in life. <laughs> no. But you play a lot of cash game, no? Yeah, I only play cash game. Panetti. Five six suited. As we Work our way forward. Short of breath. 500. This, you know, Panetti recognizes he's going to have to do his own bidding to an extent here as the war of attrition between himself and Mokrani is quite evident. Creating separation between those two stacks for each of those guys is so important, but so much abuse is available to the big stacks right now. I just can't believe that. The Zhugrol and Run, getting it in, bad, winning. Getting it in, bad, again, winning. Then getting it in as good as you can get it, realistically. And just being flopped dead by this man. By the way, not to be overlooked is the attitude, the positivity yeah. of Zhugrol in it. that moment. To have recognized I should have been out of here long and ago, I've certainly... And it wasn't fake. Nothing. Sometimes, no, oh, no. I was running good. He instantly was like, well... Fair enough. I got very lucky twice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just happy to have made it to fifth realistically when he was all in. And by the way, it was against Horshidian in particular that he got lucky with the ace five against the ace queen mm -hmm. to begin yep. the, the run. <coughs> and the improbable and oh so rare ace king pre flop fold by a big stack by Ketzer. Now then. Yeah. 39 hands in. I we've seen some stuff. Rashidian, button open. Not the man that Ketzer wants to get mixed up with. No, but he's got enough hand here to take a flop and plenty deep. 80 blinds. But yeah, I mean, he, he's the one that obviously is under the most ICM pressure, but so deep, that ICM pressure, not as big a factor, Ali. It's, it's very different if he was playing a 25 big blind stack with two, six big blind stacks behind, say, then really has to fold, but... Wait. As it is, still gets to play a lot of hands. Even these out of position against Horshidian in this spot. King 9 4, no pair anywhere. Gut shot straight draw for Ketzer. Panetti taking the price with the suited one gapper. This is not his board. Checked around to Horshidian.
K C bed. Yeah, Ketz of course has played this in a way that he has to continue on this kind of board. And his range does like this kind of board, the King Nine texture of it. Don't hate the C bet though from Horshidian. Penati of course has no interest in Horshidian with the best of it still. This ace high. The two big techs play out a relatively small pop. You surprised at all that Ketzer will want to peel here with a hand like Queen Jack, or obviously deep as he is, yeah. he knows Horshidian's going to be up to no good, although in three way pots, maybe less so. No, oh, this is, yeah, for sure we're peeling this. Horshidian is going to still value better, uh, pardon me, continuation better a lot. And become a, well, somewhat protected as well. It's very hard for Horshidian to go barreling here because we can easily have a king as played. A little hard to have a king as played now. Yeah, check back from Horshidi, and I'm not sure this board ran out as the one that's going to leave Ketzer looking to bluff, but... I wonder, defer. though, because he, he can certainly bet a nine here as well. He can bet a king. Does have some value hands. I wonder how much he thinks he's up against an ace high that he needs to make fold versus how much he's up against just no hand that he's already beating. I think he's gone for the latter, thinking maybe he just has the best hand. Horshidi going to be opening so wide on the button. So uh, checking, thinking you're winning, I think is actually probably the better play there. So few combos of ace high versus all the combos of nonsense he might give up with. Always feel bad though when you walk into the part of the range that you would have made fold. You would have won the pot. <laughs> that stack of chips. It's got a secondary stack and a main stack, are <laughs> <laughs> it's the reserve tank. You, you. Yeah? What? I saw you walking in JBR at night. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw you, but I was far to say hi. You were walking <laughs> at night chilling, yeah? Maybe. It's true. <laughs> you were there. Or she and Mokrani, apparently. Alone? You're living there. Yeah. Oh, okay, I saw you. You? Almost no, bumped no, into no, one no. another out in no. Dubai, which has become a bit of a hotbed of poker, oddly enough, given that it isn't quite legalized <laughs> yet. But, you know, there's private games that happen all over the world. We know this. Yeah, hotbed of activity for poker. Such an unlikely one, I, in my mind, from when I was first going there. Well, or last going there as well. But. For most of the year, the beds there are hot. <laughs> that's for sure. Stone Desert. Yeah, this is the nice time of year to be there. I've yet not been to Dubai, and I have so many people who I know who live there. They've invited me. I was supposed to go for New Year's, and things didn't work out a couple of years back. And uh, I am very eager to pay my first visit at some point. I would say I'll eat. I'll blend right in. I was basically going to say something of the sort, but I was going to insult you on the way in. <laughs> well, it's a horribly <laughs> fake influencer run over oh, yeah, flashy yes, showy yeah. place I mean, that's a bit disgusting and Nirvana. I don't want to spend any time at so <laughs> right up your street <laughs> which way point me <laughs> king nine five middle pair against backdoor diamonds and a gut shot straight draw for Ketzer who has it checked over to him by Mokrani little seabed of 350 which we know doesn't have to be attached how much to anything Right, again, just substantive attacking these uh, shorter stacks. Right. It's actually finding a piece now in this sixth turn. I think he should be happy just to check back a lot of time, but you could fire again here with this increase in equity and try and make a nine fold, maybe even a bad king. 
right where he sees it. Obviously, he's ahead of the 5X now. He's ahead of the Queen Jack, Jack 10 kind of hands that peeled flop. But just with the chip dif dif uh, difference the way it is, certainly one you could get very aggressive on. Almost turn the 6 into a bluff. Yeah. Instead, decides to play it as a check back. And now let's see. I don't know that Mokrani is going to be looking to fire here. Obviously, block under normal yeah. circumstances. But I think he can block. He gets to have some. He gets to have the fives, of course. But you just get abused by Ketzer yeah. at a higher frequency than under normal circumstances. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you agree? Uh, the thing is, you, you, you block, you open yourself to, up to a big raise. But it's hard for Ketzer to really rep too much if he does raise big here on the river. But uh, yeah, I, I do like defaulting Ali in this situation to so just being, hey, it's four left. I've got to respect ICM. I'm in a tie with my man on my right. Yeah, the shutdown there from Ketzer, by the way. Barreled with air and then made a six and checked back two streets. Well, there it is. We're playing 125, 250 with four left here in the Western Series. Main event, which has left us just as breathless. <laughs> it really has left us breathless, Holly. I mean, honestly, crazy, crazy action. We've rattled through the first half of the final table, first half of the field of the final table in record time. Everyone now guaranteed 140K, 114K, pardon me. This one, Ali, I still suspect it's going to take us some, a long time, but I never thought we'd get down to four this quickly. Who knows? No. Agreed. Very rare you'll ever see a tournament this deep, four-handed. I mean, obviously, you've got a lot of experience with the World Series main event, but... Big blind average. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no discounts here. And Mokrani and. Good try, good try. Panetti Sorry, certainly good. showing an understanding of how to navigate the situation. Perhaps Panetti more. When there were eight left, he was kind of in that difficult spot. I'd say Mokrani at the start of the final table showed yeah. a willingness to. Perhaps battle a little bit more. I mean, fluid and dynamic scenarios. At every final table. Well, well served to ensure we make adjustments in light of. suited on the button from Okrani. second. He'll leave it to Ketzer, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah <I> mean, <laughs> it's just his place on He's just desperate to not let anyone take a liberty here. But this is what I was just saying. So I think Mokrani is the kind of guy that out of, out of the two shorter stacks is the one that perhaps is more willing to die. If I was a betting man, I'd say that Bonetti's going to finish in the top three more than Mokrani. But on the flip of that, Mokrani probably has more chance of winning this tournament. Than Panetti, just with their two approaches. So Ketzer does come along and flops beautifully on this board. 6 3 3. 
And as I heard you say, willing to die, James, I think your career stretches back far enough to remember the name Amir Vahidi. I you used to say that. Every time I say it, that's who I'm, that's where it's come from in my mind, clearly. That yeah. World Series book and main event. Very right. well-known Iranian-American oh. poker player from back in the day who used to say, in order to live, you must be willing to die. And that willingness perhaps being displayed a little bit here by Makrani, who with the king do suited, has decided to see bet 750K. Yeah, quite a large C bet on this flop texture, Ali. 336 doesn't rate for the big blind to hit that often. You can bet smaller, uh -huh. but just going for these bigger sizes, making it harder perhaps for Ketza to bluff him. Giving him a, making him bet a lot more if he does want to bluff. Yeah, you could have seen bet this for 350. Cats has got, you know, 7, 9, Jack 8, all these hands would just fold. Of course, the, the benefit of this is you do make the king highs and the a size, I think, fold. Maybe not all the a size, but some of the a size fold. And when you've got king deuce, that's obviously a great thing to happen. He does have ability to barrel on a 4, 5, or diamond as well, you would imagine. As it is, Ketzer continuing with that 6. Understandably, and now look at this turn card, the ace. And it's peculiar because when Mokrani sizes up as he does on the flop, I think it may reduce the frequency with which Ketzer would assign him ace high in particular, yeah. which would have connected with this turn. So kind of working against him on this run out. Look at this. Oh. You know, I, again, I think what I just mentioned has quite a bit to do with yeah. Ketzer choosing to play this as a lead for 900,000. I think he gets to have more of the ace high I in this spot. I think you're right, Ali. Oddly I think enough. that's a really astute observation. Really astute. And Mokrani can't do anything. Handcuffed. He does have King I think High you're for what it's worth. I, I think, mean, I think you're learning stuff, Ollie. <laughs> Maybe you're learning stuff, James. <laughs> You see it's discombobulating for Makrani, but the trouble is if you give off too much confusion here, uh, you know, Ketzer could utilize on the river. Credit to Makrani for thinking there, yeah. Obviously, maybe there's some four, five, five, seven. Yeah, and credit for Ketzer for choosing to play it as a lead instead of allow Makrani to see a river. Yeah. That obviously not a, a way you could play the hand if it wasn't for the fact that we're kind of full left, applying pressure onto Mokrani with another... Again, I can't call them short stacks early because they've got over 20 blinds. No, you're right. But you get the gist. That I do. Amazing, actually, Ali, thinking about it, we, we've gone down to just four players. But apart from the aces, we haven't really seen any other big pairs get involved. I'm trying to think back. Mm. Oh, there's been some tens, I think. Mm -hmm. Some queens. But, yeah. I think you're right, James. What made you think of that? <laughs> King Just nine suited. It's so hard to get it down to four without, you know, the big pairs getting involved. You never know. That's huh? usually the <laughs> thing that gets everyone excited. Horshidian, <laughs> 550 to go. Ketzer has medicine. Places oh. as a flat, and no sooner do you mention it. Oh, there they are. Up pop queens here. 
And you got both big stacks involved in what this could be perceived to be squeeziness out of Panetti. Yeah, but I, again, I think here we're just in the realm of maximizing far liquidity with Mokrani on that short set. We're playing a different game. Those two are playing one game. These two are playing one game. Well, I'm just getting ahead of ourselves to what I would presume is going to be a Horshidian fold to whatever the three bet sizing is. I, I think it might just be a jam, Ali. For oh, yeah. And then it gets back to Ketzer, and Ketzer might be asking some questions about what he would do this way. He's actually gone for the more in juicy sizing, implying there's some fold it could see there. No, no. 2.2 million. 2.2. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Ali, but just the way that Panetti's played, I don't think that he's the kind of guy that is doing this particularly light. So I think Ketzer will just get away from it, recognize that Panetti's not really in a game where he's supposed to be doing this stuff light. I, I, I'm very impressed with Ketzer. Like I say, I mean, the ace-king fold... We saw it was clearly not correct in, in their cards we were up against, but I think it's very, very good reasoning to find it. So digesting. It looks squeezy, of course. And I think he recognizes Panetti's a player and would obviously be willing to make moves such as this, not necessarily with hands that always have ace-jack suited in a bad way. Is he going to take a flop? He's going to take his time. <laughs> Guess what he's thinking is Panetti doesn't have many hands that ever want to three-bet cooler off. So therefore, this is weighted towards the bluffs and then the absolute top of range. I didn't suspect Queens would even be looking to three-bet call this off. I thought that hand might just jam. I wonder how Ketza has solved this case. Yeah, good fold. You see he's bothered by it, though. You know, yeah, he's, he's a bit curious. It, it kind of, it's only the second time I think he's peeled from the small blind in that spot mm -hmm. and then gets squeezed when you've actually got a really good hand. But Ketsa does have a lot of really good hands when he peels the small. He doesn't get to just three bet, play a big pot against right. the tip leader. That's exactly so right. And Panetti's supposed to be mindful of that. So the squeeze is supposed to be pretty tight. And like I say, for what I've seen of Panetti so far, it doesn't strike me as the guy who's going to be willfully going for it there with like an ace five suitor just three betting. Because Mokrani has shown a willingness to get involved, Ali. We're seeing the opens with hands like King Deuce. We saw the hands at the start of the final when he's flatting opens with Queen 10 and the like. So if, if I'm, if I'm Panetti there, I'm thinking, right, Mokrani is going to potentially bust here in fourth. And with the chip stacks the way they are, his only goal here, realistically, is to get to the final three. We get queens, obviously we're going to go with it because it does massively increase our chance to win the tournament. But his stall is set out. And I'm I've been really impressed with how he's actually navigated this final table so far, Panetti. As have I, and I don't know that it's surprising. One look at his hand and mob and you realize this is standard operating procedure for him. And Ketzer can rest assured, you know, if we get to a point where stream catches up and word comes down to him that it was top of range that performed in that manner out of Panetti and not something frisky. <coughs> so Mokrani. Take a twirl with Horshidian. Flops himself a wheel, Gunny.
K bet after the check in the 10 high. Easily folds. I need pots like this, James. <laughs> Just for us to breathe. I swear. <laughs> Just, you know. No complaints, by the way. I mean, I stand behind this last two days of coverage yeah. of this event have just been explosive, absolutely dynamite. Love to see it. Crazy, crazy action. We we build up the action, Ali, so often here. And then this festival has really gone up another level. Yeah, after this big race, yeah, yeah. yeah. Delivered on a scale that is well beyond what we ever could have hoped for, quite honestly. <laughs> on the button. Taking us up. 550, the figure. Mokrani, ace 10. He's been waiting for an opportunity to nibble. Yeah, I think against Panetti as well, you just move this in. he does. I mean, he's moving this against anyone's raise, but it's always nice when you take chips away from Panetti, kind of equalize those, equalize those two stacks a yeah, bit. Yeah, that in particular is the most important entity from which to cobble away tokens. Well, so this is a spot Panetti does get to call off a little bit wider as well, of course, because he gets to knock someone out potentially. It's the two fois qu'il me fait light, huh? <laughs> no? He suspected that it was a light jam, but an honest shake of the head from Mohamed Mokrani, who ever so slightly trails Christoph Panetti here at this Western Series final table, which has delivered on all fronts and the delivery of chips to the doorstep of Horshidian to the tune of 113 big blinds. We'll head for the 150-300 level. He'll sit with 34 million in chips. On tap payouters, we bring you back here into the booth. Ali alongside James, 114,000. The jump up to third, not at all negligible. 41,000 roughly, James. And boy, what do we say about that? <laughs> what don't we say about I that? I thought friend? we'd come back to the studio with seven or eight left at the first break. Really? Instead, we come back with like a 70 big blind average. Yeah. And a lot of the chips have moved to the same seat. We've got a runaway chip leader. Yeah, that we do. And, uh, you know, we've got our, our breath held here kind of in anticipation as to how these four are going to go about their business with the blinds moving up. We will take a break. And when we come back, we'll answer that question from right here at this Western Series final table. Stay close.
shops ago, I think I described this place as the world's biggest small poker room. Yeah. Has that feel. Everyone kind of knows everyone, even if it's not the most depth. But yeah, it's almost like coming to school every six, seven weeks when they have a festival here. It's yeah. like, oh, hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah. How are the holidays? Wife and kids. How's the girlfriend? Yeah. Now I'm through betting you. What do you think about <laughs> that? Ace King. I think the Lebanese nationals in particular have a, a lot of fun with it. and This is cruel. This <laughs> is cruel. The eight-deuce doubles. Now, all of a sudden, Cordbean looks down at an ace-queen, a barca open, very understandable, his desire to get it in. And the hand that he snapped off a moment ago is the one that is dominated and in his possession on Are this occasion. Fun? No, much better. <laughs> Much better it is. It's yeah. a much, much better hand, but oh. no use against this hand, Ali. No. Maybe Queen Com. 3.1 million chip pot. Again, Horbin looking to stave off elimination and again behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rest rooting for him. Except perhaps the chip leaders. <laughs> well, even they don't like having a 15 big blind stack in here. Comes You're right about that. A king in the window was bad news, at least a queen behind it along with the Ace of Spades working for the time being. Now paths to a chop if a 10 rolls off. Queen, the only direct winner. Well, if he would take the chop. Absolutely he would. Can he hit it? No. Mm -hmm. Five of clubs, so not even an orbit in. And Hadi Hordbin of Iran... <laughs> dispatched James in ninth place. Yeah, they gave him the little sweat. Let him get there where they do. They will do the Mace Queen next hand and that's that anyway. 34,000 and change. Going to Hadi, who's made some deep runs here. Plays the cash games as well. Will add to his career live tournament earnings of 123,000, but just a modest tick up from his all-time best live cash, which prior to this was 29,500, obviously. Oh yeah, too smart. Or just fleet-footed. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, no, that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not today. Barco with just five blinds and an ace. It's under the gun, it's eight-handed, <laughs> oh, it's no. grim. But he may just decide to run it. Going to be in the big blind next hand, of course. Going to be posting one, having four back, one in. Not even a spot where he could kind of do the half a stack thing because half a stack is barely a raise anyway. Comes <laughs> to maximize the old fold at critique. You know, as, st as the stats go around, uh, I like that Shugral and Jam even more because he's a little bit adrift of the rest. Only the one super short. Recognizing that light opening range. Gets up. Oh, Panetti. All right. This is oh, definitely one we want to play. How do we want to play it, though, That's in the cutoff with Ace Jack? As a flat, it looks strong like enough as is. Panetti's look, inquiring into the big blind stack. <laughs> yeah, you don't really want to get no. squeezed, but you don't necessarily expect a lot of that to go down either, but just because of the laws of the implicit collusion, wanting to have multiple right. stacks up against the all-in player to but eliminate them. Yeah, exactly that. have to play it. I'm not sure if I'm all in. Oh, he oh, plays it as a jam. Yeah, I'm just seeing what the James. stacks are behind, because that might be just fine. Yeah, 4 million, 4 million, 4 million. I think. So yeah, for 20 blinds. It, it just makes it, like, a ha what's a hand like 10 is going to do now? Right. I have to fold. Especially probably. when you're guaranteed a, a visit to the roulette wheel for <laughs> yeah. Barca and that possible pay jump realization. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, for Barca here, who ran tens into ace three unsuccessfully. <laughs> He's dominated on his feet in a 2.6 million chip pot, hoping. Perhaps some prayers <laughs> may be answered if a four or a five trickle off the deck. <laughs> Anxious moments for the Frenchman. Yeah. Seven. 
Doesn't help, so it's going to be the seven outs. And that's not one of them. That'll do it for Sammy Barca of France. 235,000 in career live tournament earnings, 131K, <coughs> his high water mark. Not going to be bettering that here today as GG's the eighth place finish here in the Western Series main event. We'll award him a tidy 45,600, but nothing more as the field realizes a roughly $12,000 pay jump courtesy of the second casualty thus far here at this final table. So then the beneficiary is. Oh, pardon me, Haspani was under the gun, not in the big blind this hand, has decided to put it in. Very much making sense, Ali. He's found a big one, King Queen. Shagralin thinking about it here. The nice. Wow, he is going for it. Thinking I'm, I'm a little in here. surprised, yeah. Yeah, he th I guess he thinks Hasbani is just putting it with any two. Well, looking to avoid two random cards the very next hand in the big blind right. with the big blind Annie. So, Jugralin pouncing with an ace five. But, I mean, he was Hasbani was going to get called here. Jugralin could have allowed it to happen behind. Right, because he's big stacks, sir. Yeah. Oh, my word, we could have a double elimination, Ali. Horshidian waking up with ace queen suited, and this is not. What you want to see when you're Jugralin, these are the risks. And obviously worth noting, Jugralin does have more chips than Hasbani. So when he does this, he would secure the ladder up if Horshidian wins the pot. But there are obviously scenarios where he goes out here and Hasbani doubles. <laughs> wow, I think this is a little optimistic. So a double elimination potentially on our hands. Note that Horshidian dominates both Hasbani yeah. and Shugralin in a three million chip pot. Yeah, Erjan sitting there going, this is quite nice. <laughs> Just ladder up two more me? spots here. The dream for him. Seven left, 56k, 57k, pardon me. With five left, it's 85k. Look at the rail. Shugralin needs to find a five. And oh. he's found not one, but two of them. <laughs> the injustice. Wow. Ace of hearts as well, just in case. Yeah, no route to victory for the other two here. Hasbani could make the running kings. Yeah, All right, are we? Now he draws dead, of course. <laughs> Four of hearts, no less. Hasbani's queen of hearts won't do the trick, and five's full. Look at the Kazakh boys celebrating. Wow. Not to be overlooked, of course. The lack of mercy being shown to Antoine Hasbani James, who GGs. took pocket nines and king queen in back to back spots and ends up a seventh place finisher. Certainly made the most of what he was given. But the Lebanese national with 144,000 in career tournament earnings coming into this one will haul in 57,000. $300 and leave us with six handed. It's always nice. Almost 300K. Obviously, hoping for better ROI when you put that much on the line, maybe, but not a bad day's I work. I think, if I remember rightly, Mike actually got in in a kind of a weird way. I think super high value. I might mean, have really high value VIP free roll satellite kind of thing to get in. The guy won it, managed to engineer it, so Mike played it for him. And Mike was playing on a free roll, I think, for 20% or something like that. That's even nicer. Oh, yeah. Cancer. I might be wrong with that. But meanwhile, on the topic of nicer, upgrading to Ace King here, you saw a pause out of the Jack 9. That Certainly feels Ooh. more like posturing than anything else. Jugralin, though, on the button, ace 10. And we've already observed the yeah. way in which he has been willing has. to react to Ketzer. And it's on display yet again here. 5.5 million, Ooh. ripping it in. Air John, ace jack suited might have been the one to do it. Cool. But Whoa. Jugralin, oh, wow. He's seen yeah. enough. Air John in there as well. Remember, he's the guy that limp jammed against Horshidian. And Ketzer, look at this. He's going to laugh, but...
Welcome back, one and all, to continuing coverage of this fourth and final day of the Merritt Western Series main event, the first of a whole host of events that are held here each and every year in North Cyprus. Alina Jha joined now by David Lappin as David had to be brought up to speed on some of the carnage <laughs> that has already taken place at this final table, but you had to guess that that's the case just simply based on the pace at which we've worked our way down to these final four. Yeah, it's been a relentless day, to be honest. 24 players came back. I think it took 90 minutes to get down to 13. We thought it might all calm down at that point, but actually it bashed along until it made final table. Yep. I then left the boots for, what, two hours? And you got rid of five players? You know, we didn't do it. It's the deck which continues <laughs> to choose violence out there. Some absolutely improbable collisions. Of course, Ace-King, Ace-10, Ace-Jack. Then we had Aces against Ace-King. And Demir Jugralin out in fifth place. We thought perhaps he was going to be spinning things up, but he leaves behind. Four to do battle, chief among them, Khorshidian. 113 bigs as it stands with the blinds moving up to 150 and 300. Well out in front of Ketzer, who had kept the pace for some time, David, but now sits mid-pack, which is not really where he wants to find himself. A bit of a war of attrition between Panetti and Mokrani in that order, rounding out the field. Mokrani on the button. King-Queen, though, ready to go. An ace-jack for Khorshidian. Is this just we dive right in. Be, be straight away? My goodness me. Uh, Khorshidian, obviously, well out in front. I did a little bit of research on this man at the break. He's a cash game player. He's somebody who doesn't really battle uh, in the tournament streets too often, but wanted to come here to Merritt this week to prove himself, to get a notch on his belt. Um, mix it up with these tournament guys. And wow, what a performance it has been so far. He has half the chips in play. As you mentioned there, Ketz are a little handcuffed with the two shorter stacks, but then he's not that short himself. He can still play poker. Yes, he can have pressure applied upon him, but not in the way that, say, he could if he had 30 bigs and these guys were sitting with 10. It's all a bit strange because it's all very deep still. Certainly, we expect that depth to continue. At least for some time, as the three bet to two million from Khorshidian is awaiting a response from Mokrani. Lapin is very much urging Muhammad to jam. Yeah, I just feel as though, given the dynamic, yes, you don't want to go out and forth. You want to at least get into the top three spots. You want to get on the podium. But King Queen is a massive hand on the button here. And Khorshidian, I'm assuming, doesn't always have Ace Jack here. I'm sure you've seen maybe examples over the past few hours where he's been much lighter than that. Wow, what a foul from McCranny. But maybe an overfold given how this guy is probably pilfering and pillaging. I'm a little bit surprised that he would release, uh, you know. We know Horshidian is going to be up to this sort of business, and it's not going to require hands better than King-Queen. But we defer to Mokrani. Yeah, you're not going to wake up with too many better holdings on the button. If you're willing to raise fold that one, I'm a little worried whether you have enough raise calls or indeed raise four bet shoves, as it would be in this instance, as Horshidian Gets his microphone adjusted. Well, he's been doing the adjusting for the most part to the landscape here at this final table. So Ketz are in a blindly blind battle here. 22 bigs deep. Interesting now for him whether he proceeds with a limp, with a raise, or just jamming maybe the ace five sometimes given how his opponent is desperate to outlast the man to his left. And that is what he does. Ace five asks for it all. Jack four is not Good prepared size. to comply. <laughs> 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 what did he say? Good size. Good sizing. <laughs> <laughs> Love that sense of humor. As you're forced to pass chips over to the gravitational field that surrounds Ketzer. I did actually meet Felipe Ketzer very briefly out in Rosvadov. He was playing the World Series of Poker Europe, as so many were. The freezing cold of the Czech-Germany border. 
my first visit over to that property. Morshidian paying a visit to the cutoff with 8-7 off suit. You see just this sort of snowball effect of being the big stack in a situation such as this one. Just really able to chisel. But Mokrani does respond. Let it go against the three bet this time. He's the three better and a dominant. A7, you see. Of course, he didn't ask him for a count. I'm not sure this is necessary. No, but I guess it gets him the count for future hands. Sometimes players will do this so as not to have to burn time banks if there actually is a decision. It's, you know, a nuanced sort of yeah. movement. Yeah, McCranny obviously feeling much better about being the three bet shover than having either the shove or leverage bet put upon him. How much are you with it? As you observe these chip stacks and as you invoke your knowledge of these four in this event to this point, David, what is it that you predict we'll see in terms of behavior? What do you anticipate out of this group as it stands in this climate? Yeah, it's an awkward one because our front runner, Korshidian, while maybe not playing the, the deftest poker, He's playing the kind of big ball bully boy poker. It's very hard when a guy with those skills has the chip lead and mm -hmm. can apply all the ICM pressure upon the other players. Obviously, they'd all love to get into a top two, top three situation here, and they've all got each other to worry about. So I think we'll probably see them Morning. play a tippy-tappy sort of game. No tippy-tappy. Out of pocket eights here, Panetti. Ripping, getting it right through. Yeah, position is an interesting factor on this table. Obviously, Ketzer, even though he's in the most miserable ICM spot, there are two caveats to that. The first is it's not actually that easy for him to be at risk in a hand against Korshidian. He actually has quite a deep <coughs> stack here, so he can proceed reasonably carefully. Probably has to worry about playing three bet pots against him. Probably has to worry about, you know, bloated pots maybe with flop and turn bets or any check raising. But, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be that he gets all in or gets his stack threatened by Korchidian too often. And he also has position on him, which is kind of nice. Um, I would expect to see Korchidian using the under the gun position which is of course the cutoff here into those blinds depriving Ketzer of spots as often as possible but once he folds if he folds his cutoff then the door opens for Ketzer to take advantage of the two short stacks and he becomes the boss so it's not all bad news for Ketzer Korshidian by the way has been around the block his earliest caches Dating back to April of 2013, EPT Berlin, his very first score. Then number of scores here at the Merit Complex. What Talking year was about that? About almost a decade ago. What year was that EPT Berlin? 2013. I think that was the robbery <coughs> year. <coughs> oh, yeah, that was Famous the robbery one. year. There's video of that, by the way. If you don't know what David and I are referring to, do yourself a favor and Google it. It is absolutely bonkers. And it was the product of wheeling out the <laughs> actual cash for the win <laughs> into the middle of the convention center and then expecting that uh, we weren't going to have something like that happen. Where armed, masked robbers stormed the hotel and then there was a man left behind. And uh, I mean, it is stranger <laughs> than fiction. You know, we can laugh about it now as there was nobody, you know, hurt. Nobody was hurt. Seriously, but. But it, it, was a, it was a strange move by the organizers uh, to put 
that much money in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> just, it really was. Just out there. Nothing strange about Horshidian putting 600,000 into his <coughs> lobby. <coughs> Nor of Ketzer choosing to play against these opens as a flat caller almost exclusively David, save for with very top of range. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And, and even very high up in range, still taking a passive line. Yeah. Like if this was an ace queen, I wouldn't be surprised if it was also just flat. Yeah, hoping to maybe find a squeeze behind him that he can then jam over the top of. Instead, Panetti accepts the invitation at the price, 2.1 million in a rare three-way pot, which comes queen nine tray. So the gutter for Panetti, but the pair of threes for Horshidian is actually in front. Backdoor clubs as well. Yeah, every reason to bet this one. I think he's got the backdoors, and while this should hit a reasonable amount of his opponent's range, he doesn't want to ever check call this hand, so firing a small bet himself isn't too bad. Oh, he does. he's going to check it. Um... We will have to see. Obviously has the best hand right now and Ketzer with the flush draw may take a stab. It's a pretty nice situation to semi-bluff. No one's shown any interest on the flop. And now facing a million. Panetti can't really be interested anymore but Horshidian facing exactly that kind of spot that he could have avoided if he'd made a 600k bet himself perhaps on flop. Well, I may have just taken the hand down. Now, obviously with Queen and Nine on board, he was worried <coughs> that it wouldn't take it down often enough, but he has allowed for one of these other players to take a stab now, and he's not really sure where he's at. He could be up against a, a King-10, a King-Jack. Could be up against a flush draw, as we see here. And Ketzer's taken some cool lines here at this final table. He is tremendously well-rounded and was James Dempsey's pick coming in obviously in part due to just the volume of chips that he brought forward but the resume as well and familiarity for Dempsey results for Ketzer dating back to July of 2016 out in his native Brazil and he's played some 25 K's 10 K's this is a man who's gotten around the block and he's gotten through with this turn lead against the threes which concede have yeah, he has a great table presence, it must be said. Yeah. And uh, just seems cool as a cucumber in every spot. Interesting there how Horshidian honing in on the fact that it was a half pot bet and not smaller than that, which deterred him from making a call there. Not sure if I love the line there by Horshidian. Obviously, the, the open is loose, but he's allowed open pretty loose here. Right. So that, that part is okay. But I do think maybe should have fired a small mm -hmm. bet of his own um, did sort of open the door maybe feels as though these guys aren't gonna bluff against him or semi bluff too often because of his reputation and big chip lead maybe feels like he's getting honest responses well there have been a number of responses that we've glanced over at on our Merit Poker YouTube channel from those of you who have been streaming us live, Conan in particular <laughs> mentioning that this tournament is on fire earlier, still with us, calling the competition quite fierce. We welcome him and all of you who are soaking up the final four and the final throws of this Western series. If you're enjoying it, click that thumbs up, the like button. Click subscribe and make sure that you don't miss a moment what we have on offer from North Cyprus is it truly is incredible poker. It's just the word for it. Yeah, it's a different breed and class of poker to what you oh. might be used to. Look at this class of hand. Pair and a flush draw. Delightful developments for Makrani as he and Panetti tiptoe against one another. Jacks and deuces, the turn development. Yeah, can't really have much more of it, McCranny, and can't really have much less of it, Panetti, here. So, 
I do like the choice, by the way, to check back the flop, obviously, with, you know, the ability to disguise and earn yourself even more, perhaps. Later streets. And barring a moment of madness here, this is handover. Well, moments of madness is what <laughs> we've paved the road to these final four with, to be fair. Yeah, the remaining pay jumps are very big. These guys playing for a lot of money now. And what I would say is, even though it's been swashbuckling all the way to four-handed play, the stacks are deep. Like, our short stacks have 20 bigs each. And then we have two guys sitting with, I don't know, 60 and 80 bigs or something of that nature. Maybe more again. So every reason to believe that even though we're down to four, it could <coughs> remain four for a long time. This could be a, a war of attrition from now on. And I think the operators in particular, maybe Bar Horshidian, but even he, you know, he understands. Not just out there as reckless as maybe some of the hand histories might make it look as though he may have been from time to time. You know, he was like a hot knife through butter for yeah. a time. But these guys are just sound, it must be said, and have impressed all the way through as Panetti, impressed by Ace-King suited and the button. Makes it 600. Queen-10 is playable for Horshidian. <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wonder if he ever considers this to be a raising spot. I, I think it's probably just almost too good for that. You want to play the queen 10 here for one more big blind. Call declared. Obviously, he is able to put people into some real situations, oh, wow. but this situation is one that rates to bring quite a few more chips forward. Top pair checking over to two overs and the nut flush draw. 300. Barley and hops as one brews. 500. I think he said 300, I but think there maybe I'm wrong. No, I won't. 300 now. Just getting clarification on that. I think that's what Korchidian heard as well. Either yes. way, he's in. It is 300, so ignore that five for a moment. And the raise is to 1K. Or sorry, 1 million. Oh, <laughs> we're way beyond 1K. It's 1 million. Just calls. <coughs> yeah, you know, getting check raised. You still just have ace high for the time being. Obviously, you can force the issue. Instead, the flat call brings the six of spades and brings another bet out of Horshidian, who asks for it all. Four million. This is precisely why I would have just stuck it in on this flop here. Bet, get raised, and then shove. With some fold equity against a player who might well have some raises that are just trying to leverage pressure on you. The problem is if we... Just call and get shoved on and don't hit. We end up in a pretty miserable spot here. That we do. Our opponent is capable of bluffing. Could have a worse flush draw, the remember. Which would be an absolute disaster if we were to release our hand. That it would. <coughs> and then even when he does have exactly the hand that he has, which is right up there with the best he can have, we have basically the right price. So I think when you add in all that stuff, you may have to make a very sad cry call here. But and it's not the manner in which you would have hoped to get all these chips in. Yes. I think the jam on the flop, you feel a lot better about things than you do Oh yeah. calling off here. But at the end of the day, one more. Oh, Panetti very irritated by the yeah. time bank. I, I don't like there. that from the other player there, I must be honest. Um, that's the an issue between the dealer and the player. The players shouldn't be getting involved there um, because it does disrupt your thought is. pattern. Um, actually, I think it might have been... Um, Mokrani? Mokrani, who pointed out that another time bank card was due. And you just wait till the end. It's not your business. And if you do disrupt the, the thinking pattern of the player, I think that's actually really... Oh. 
really Look wrong. At this, the wow. fold from the, the ace queen. king of diamonds. Improbably. I have the queen. I have ten. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. I'll tell you what, Horshidian's laughing, Panetti. <laughs> Panetti had heaps of equity and quite the price there. I really wanted a rabbit hunt at least. Oh, I just. He, he made that an awkward spot for himself. Mm -hmm. you, you get to jam it in there on the flop with some fold equity. Don't get me wrong, I think we'd be going to showdown. But, but you're favored before, against uh, Queen-10 there, or at least flipping. It was it's basically a flip. So no, but if you're getting it in with 50% uh, equity in a worst case million. scenario, and you have fold equity, it's always a good spot to get it okay. in. I think he said after as well. I'm confusing if... He said after. He said, he said after. after. Yeah, now, now it's gone, but... Uh, yeah, he said cool, but... Okay. Sevens for Mokrani. I, raise, I could have raised, no problem. For <laughs> no, I, I wanted to call, you know. I, my yeah. intention is call, not raise. Yeah. I'm, I'm not if, uh, you ra if you raise, it's uh, completely different. But, uh, yeah, but I, I'm not what they say. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> 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 <Horshidian> <laughs> yeah. saying I'm not, uh, and I think he was trying to say angle shooting just it's based on some discrepancies there pre-flop that were identified, but then yeah, ends up... You know, as we can see, Mokrani's going to open anyway, potentially being perceived to influence action by making it clear he's folding his small blind before Mokrani acted. So just a snowball effect of bad optics. And on the topic of things that are optically displeasing, how about <laughs> nine deuce off? Yeah, Ketzer's just in a, a nice spot here. Doesn't want to really get involved with this kind of silly hand, I think. No, he doesn't. Um, <laughs> Sometimes dead bottom of range ju does, you know, make a bit of noise <laughs> so as not to have to take a flop. But fold is the other way to avoid taking a flop. We sometimes overlook that, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite a nice situation for him to take occasional aggressive lines here. Obviously, with um, Panetti having whittled himself down to 4 million now. Maybe even sub four million after that last hand. I think Ketzer with devilish ideas of really putting Ukraini in the blender. And of course, we saw him fold the king queen earlier, so capable of being blended. <coughs> Speaking of blends, I've just discovered that we have a lactose free milk behind me barista bar here, which I've employed. Now, obviously, it begs the question that what was I working with on the other occasions in which I had the coffee and what sort of damage did I do to the local plumbing as a result, but i uh happy to report, as is my tummy, that <laughs> the lactose-free milk is being blended in to my nightly iced coffee to keep us going late through the night. I feel bad now because I, uh, since my very first visit here, I've been... Uh, deploying the soy milks and lactose free milks. Merrily. Here we go. Without so much as mentioning it. David. Without mentioning it on air. Ace queen for <laughs> Horshidian. And this is absolutely all the evidence you need that in this specific setup, even with all the chips that Ketzer has, Ace King is supposed to play like this and just note how nicely doing so is going to be as we can see Horshidian having binked top pair here improbably in front of Ketzer. Panetti with a little gutter. Not sure he's going to stay interested, but still, we note it. Yeah, this could have been a monstrous situation had Ketzer not had the presence of mind to find the flat here. He is going to take chips that perhaps sometimes psychologically we tell ourselves could have been deployed pre-flop to arrive here and use them as a call. Backdoor wheel, two overs, and just the equity of an ace-king against broad ranges from the button. But it is eyebrow raising <laughs> for me in particular, David, that he wants to go further streets out of position against and Panetti 
works his way in, able to close the action, getting three to one. And now hitting a six, which could wind up yeah. troublesome for him. Yeah, this is all very awkward. Um, I do think Ketzer has to be sticky with the no, no pair here. He's obviously under represented his hand pre-flop, so I'm totally behind that call. I'm not behind the 6-3 gutter ball call, and now making a pair that is often not good. He's made himself a very awkward situation with the stacked pot ratio of 0.7 here. Maybe he's considering just sticking it in and hoping Brilliant. that nobody has a queen. That is what he's decided to do, and that is going oh. to be a game over for Panetti unless he gets a little bit lucky on okay. this river. Korshidin obviously going nowhere. <coughs> Panetti with the ace-king suited didn't manage to get all of his chips in, but here he does, and I just, you know, we're too deep as Korshidian. This is too much hand. Maybe we feel as though the ace-queen isn't good with some frequency, but I don't think he's going to be stepping aside. Good luck. Yep. So, Korshidian does indeed make the call. Ketzer with the simple release, and now suddenly the hopes of Christoph Panetti here at this final table rest upon a three, five, or six river. Nine outs, one time to haul in nine million and keep going. Instead, it's an ace on the end, top two for Korshidian, upon whom the sun continues to shine. Handshake there between the two boys. Mokrani. Just extending his fist there, no eye contact whatsoever. Perfunctory salutations and Ketzer. A handshake of his own as the very accomplished Panetti gives way at long last to a final three, but not before hauling in fourth place money. 114,000 to add to an already very illustrious resume, which was... $412,000 <laughs> throughout the course of his career. Best live cash still, 173K, so wasn't able to vault that. But Porchidian, the beneficiary of all of those chips, David. Yeah, it's a monstrous chip lead now. 40 million of the 67 million in play. Mokrani, you're right, he was so composed and you know i think maybe offered a, a faint fist bump but not too much but actually he was the real winner there yeah you know yeah. Korchidian adding even more to his chip lead and that's a great spot for yeah. him but in real terms mccrani yes. getting that ladder jump is absolutely huge when there's a guy sticking around not much shallower than yourself for a couple of reasons one you've outlasted him <coughs> you've got that pay jump two well, the ICM handcuffs are kind of off, having been strapped to the bed, so to speak. You yeah. can uh, jiggle about. And that is obviously a relief, but still work to be done for Makrani, who has flopped fours and threes here against Horshidi and just doing what we would anticipate with Ketzer caught in that second place stack, looking over at 6.4, he rates to just spectate until Makrani's fate is brought into better focus. He does call this 400,000, picks up the bad end of a gut shot on the turn, but that spade could embolden Horshidian to add more pressure. Two overs and the flush draw. Do you favor another barrel here, David, or a check back? Yeah, I think we barrel again. I think... Um, the McCranny call with three deuce here in the big blind pre-flop is a it's not an ideal situation, but wow, feels kind of ideal now. Yeah, it sure does. Three's full of fours, and we know a four isn't a part of Korshidian's kit. Did come with the check back. So again, you know, showing some of the thoughtfulness, some of the responsibility. 
of having that big stack and not maybe letting it get to your head too much. We've seen some players really come apart with some fairly big chip leads at final tables over the years. But Rashidian, at least from what we've observed thus far, doesn't rate to be among that type as he faces the 1.5 million chip bet. Just ask Queen High, really. Not much to think about. No, I think there's a decent amount of aces actually here. Um, when Mukhrani defends big blind, it could be a hand like ace five. And any ace that he defended with, he would probably continue in this fashion. Maybe not fire out quite as big a bet as this on river, but maybe still would. Just feels quite strong to have an ace here. Corchidian now. Six, obviously interacting so much with the 3-4. We did have a hand like 5-7, 6-7, 5-6. And that's why he put the brakes on on the turn. Don't think he can really continue in this one. Is thinking about it. I'm trying to piece together what kind of hand would pull off here. All the time banks being dropped out there, and this is, of course, delightful for McRoney, who's thinking, I might get paid. Yeah, Korchidian probably just fixating on a 9-10 of diamonds here, and thinking, that's what I beat, and how heroic would this be if I found the call? Queen eye only. Queen eye. Like the boss. Was good, you know. We will see after. Uh, yeah, okay. So tell me from now. <laughs> 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 Trying to solicit intel without the delay, and Makrani giving nothing away. Interesting that Horshidian made it look like he was going to be willing to burn through time banks in that particular spot, and he now has the bank of left side bank of right side and then kind of the active chips in between them man spreading dare i say here at this <laughs> final table exploring the space as they call it I'm very worried about who they are in this example <laughs> <coughs> yeah the proverbial they i'm not sure i had anybody in mind the in particular is macron space explorers some of the uh well, we are in outer space at times here, that's for sure. King eight suited. Taking it upstairs, Horshidian has an eight in his hand. <coughs> did he three bet this? He did, 1.6. Annoying. From McGrani. Yeah, I like this from Korchidian. Obviously, taking it to his opponents here, <coughs> understanding the leverage points. It's possible he does have a, a pocket eight. A million. Maybe an ace eight suited here. That's sort of somewhat doing this for value. Could also be at it with the cheeky little eight six or ten eight. So hanging tough is Makrani and works his way into top pair. Not sure that King Eight of Hearts specifically would be lurking for Orchidian in the form of a three bet here. Obviously blocked by Less seconds. Makrani. Less ten seconds, you tell That's me, or five. What it would take for him to have Less ten seconds, right? Which one equal is king. Huh? What? What do you want to check? When do you announce my time? At 10 or at 5? <laughs> what you don't remember? Okay. These Just regular what you don't inquiries remember? into I'm the time situation uh -huh. is almost a way to buy time. Oh my god, okay, okay. Nine. Mid-pot getting into it with the dealer a little bit about the 
warning buffer. Is it coming at 10 seconds or 5 seconds? Not satisfied with any of the responses. Can't quite hear what the dealer is saying. Is not mic'd up. So having called the 3-bet and flopping best, he does just pounce on the Three bet check line from Cortidian. Mokrani, that is. Well, no, on the uh, the fact that he was three bet and then <laughs> been checked. To, he pounced on that. Mokrani did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of course you do. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know we were saying <laughs> the same thing. We were in violent agreement. <laughs> Not that violent. <laughs> Nice to see Horshidian laughing, by the way. I thought perhaps, you know, every now and again, both you and I have been at enough poker tables where some sort of trigger, something happens that just turns a corner for somebody emotionally, gets under their skin. And in a situation such as this, where there's a $342,000 first place payout and just two hurdles to clear to get there with the chip <coughs> lead, Horshidian would be well served to just keep all annoyances out of his mind, focus on the task at hand. I couldn't agree with you more, Ali. I think these are very petty little squabbles. Yeah. You know, sure, there's occasionally a time where you want to get some clarification or even get into some needle with your opponents, but fiddly little things about time and back and forth with the dealers, all they do is break your concentration. Absolutely right. It seems like self-evident observations on our part, but, you know, things to think about. Although, because I'm a contrarian, I do remember my time as a cricket captain. And yes, this is the first cricket anecdote of the week, and I've saved it to the last day. Okay, tell us. Um, he said, like, sometimes if things weren't happening for you. Now, in, in reality, things are very much happening for... For City Absolutely, here. they are. But I would sometimes start a fight with the umpire. Intentionally. Just to, yeah, just to get the team going, just to get everyone going, just have a little, just get a little. Show some spirit. Yeah, yeah. Just. I, I hear where you're coming from. If you, particularly if you could tell that your teammates were sort of ebbing because you know maybe it had been a passage of play that wasn't going so well. You just thought this will, you know. I, I, there's a famous Roy Keane phrase where he just says, you "Just smash into someone." You know, just, <laughs> just make yourself feel better. There's plenty of highlights of Roy Keane doing just that for anybody who follows football, by the way. Very famous. Yeah. So I wonder if he's that type of personality, Horshidian, where he just feels the need to always be entangling in some kind of dispute <laughs> yeah, or know, argument just to keep his maybe aggressive levels up. Henri kind of affect. I know some players like that that just never seem to ever have like a I'm happy, I'm yeah. comfortable, no matter win, lose, draw just a, an edginess about them. Yeah, bit of McEnroe or a bit of... Yeah, sure. Bit of suited connector on the button for Ketzer. Opens, gets flatted by McCrony. He's shown some willingness to tussle here. King 6-3. Preflop Razor with the best of it in the form of second pair versus what is bottom pair. For Korshidian, who took the price. Yeah, and boy, would he love to get the C bet through here. I feel as though Korshidian will not be compliant. You don't call with 3 4 with the intention to fold bottom pair. No, you do not. Especially on boards such as this, where absent a king, we expect that Ketzer will be falling to the pair of threes with great frequency. Neither player with a diamond as the extra 1.4 slides into the middle, bringing the pot to three and a half million. Okay, so one more try. Mm -hmm. Ketzer can't be loving that development. One presumes we will see a check. One thing might be swirling around his mind right now is if his opponent had a big diamond 
as in the biggest diamond. He would probably have a three betting hand pre, regardless. He now finds himself with fourth pair against fifth pair. And will fifth pair turn their hand into a bluff? That is the question. Indeed it is. As the turn failed to bring a bet. And there's our answer. Orshidian leads out, but just 300 into three and a half. And I don't think that Kets are getting a price such as this. I mean, we're talking almost 13 to one lap and you only need to be right seven, eight percent of the time. Yeah, we saw Ketzer make a sticky call of this nature a little earlier on, um, getting this sort of price. I don't think he can fold this. Obviously, he's thinking, how often is this a three? And if it is a six, it's probably a better six than his. I have this five. I think it's incredible if this gets through as a bluff. I think you just have to call with any value hand here on the off chance your opponent's taking a very cheap stab. Here we come. Huge, huge pick up there for Ketzer who really wanted that four million badly. <laughs> and Orshidian realizing that he, he did send an extra 300k away, but Wow, if that had worked yeah, as a bluff. I, bigger, I, think I, win. Uh -huh. I do like yeah, the idea of maybe turning your hand into a bluff there rather than blocking as such. I mean, the size was just always ambitious. Really, it's almost as though no hand that beats the three is ever finding the muck. No. So why bother? So Other than to avoid a showdown. Which is certainly not worth the 300k yeah and to dissuade being bluffed yeah that's fair well it's time for Horchidian to take one off uh, McCranny and Ketz are gonna tussle here most likely I'm not sure we're gonna see anything other than a call here be a little surprised if we did Cranny in a dominant position for now. <coughs> Jack 8-6, open ender for Ketzer, who was dominated but now has plenty of equity. Three to two dog. And from what we've seen of Ketzer, there is a half pot, if not larger than half pot, bet heading into this pot now after it goes check check. In fact, we're going over bet, Ali. Two Pouncing upon this perceived cap yeah, range. Yeah, 2.7 million. And Makrani's so thoughtful, you know, he recognizes that this isn't always the product of hands that have the ace-10 beat. And no. these are the sorts of spots that, by the way, pardon the interruption, we do end up placing ourselves in when we take the line that Makrani has, yeah, accepts the downside. As he does put a winner into the mock as it stood. Yeah, it's such a great outcome when the 10 high gets to win that one. Nice and of course, he does have the open ender um, if he was to get called. Most importantly, his opponent's check on the flop indicated a capped range. And he could, of course, on that board represent the 5 7, represent the two pair combos, represent some sets, maybe even as well. So. Nicely done. Nice execution of the overbit there by Ketzer. Very much so. And, oh. In the spirit of Western. <laughs> <laughs> the bandit look. Being employed by Jack Nine off. A 
He's too suited for Ketzer. Coming along. Oh, and another ace deuce for Mokrani. So they're blocking one another here in what becomes a 1.8 million chip pot. Yeah, it makes the likelihood of an ace coming far less likely. Advantage with the pre-flop aggressor. Middle pair on the king high two diamond board. Has the only diamond. With two quick checks in front of him, he will presumably draw a curtain. This is a new deck, guys. New deck. Uh, ha have it, a look in the jack It looks line. something uh, from there. It's shining. They say nothing. I always see it something. I, I can see something. Have a look. I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this one is marked. What's happening What's then? happening? I don't understand. Huh? Jack of Diamonds has a mark on it. Allegedly. According to two of the three players. Rudy just changed. But the dealer immediately countered with. You you just changed. It's this a new deck. deck. Well, the deck may be new, but the fate of mosquitoes that come within clapping range of yours truly that remains the same old story. As I am two for two thus far with you in the booth here, Lappin on winged insect eradication, which has become a little bit of a kind of back theme to our adventures here at Merit. It is so impressive to watch you at work. <laughs> 155,000. The secured payout with an almost 100k pay jump. If you can work your way to heads up play here. Uh, my king of diamond was like from the middle, you know, there's Ketzer, ace on the button. <sighs> Bottom two pair here for Horshidian, who defended on the monotone board where Ketzer has the only spade. Let's see how this one plays out. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Often monotone equals check or small bet. Decides on check here with sometimes the best hand and sometimes the only draw. Ace on the turn. And this is a problem for Ketzer, whose check back does bring what he thinks is a terrific development, but instead it's one that will prove costly as Korshidian activates now. Obviously incentivized to protect the eights and sevens, but only firing 800,000 uh, half pot, I suppose, well within reason. Do we size up at all on the monotone board? I think it's okay. I think we can fire this sizing with our bottom two, targeting the ace X that probably don't have a big spade because they might have bet. Certainly not the ace of spades that might have bet. Oh, oh my goodness me. Wow. Aces and sixes as Ketzer calls and so improbably ends up a winner with running two pair. Horchidian looking at the six and thinking it's innocent enough. Yeah, I'm getting flashbacks to the last hand of the high roller now between Shornikau and Wow Shuang when she flopped top two. And oh, yeah. was plowed down. Jack's up by turning river, yeah. Deft little check here from Korshidian. Obviously, not getting away. He's going to call a bet, but we've seen Ketzer go really big a few times. I, I wonder, wonder. I wonder. Yeah, Jinx, go on. If it if it comes in at over three point two. What was the declaration here? Two? No, one point two. So it's pursuing. 
Center value and will definitely get called at that sizing. He's guaranteed himself. Oh, ho, ho. hold on to your hats. No. <laughs> What's well, definitely part of the local nomenclature delivered past bitter lips for Horshidian. Bravo. <laughs> and not in that, you know, I paid good money for the opera sort of bravo. <laughs> He's not looking for an encore. This is just a deeply sarcastic bravo. Yeah. These are ironic flowers being tossed <laughs> on stage. <laughs> that they are. I have two pairs. Inferior pairs, to be specific. Regrettable pairs. But pairs that were supposed to perform better than they did there. Horshidian really not much to complain about on the day. I was about to say that exact same thing. Really, everything has gone so well for him. He's had the over pairs against the under pairs. He's won the flips. He decided to gamble a little bit with that A6. In fairness to him, putting his opponent on the kind of hand category he had. But he gets to win a flip there against the ace-queen too, against, of course, the dangerous Christoforo earlier on. It's been one-way traffic for chips into his stack. That 1.2 million really was a blip. Did he just fold Jack-10 to the Macrani Open here? Did I see that right? You did. Interesting. Sometimes... David, psychologically, when that's so much has gone our way. The, are you okay? <laughs> when so much has gone our way throughout the day, sometimes <coughs> when, when something doesn't go our way, it has a more profound impact because it, it stands in su such stark contrast. So we do need What's to remind wrong? ourselves, you know, just anything. all is okay. I'm sorry, Ali, I'm no longer willing to continue down this what road of conversation uh, because at the moment I started criticizing his temperament for <coughs> half a second. He started directly <coughs> talking to us what through his mic. I think he knows, <laughs> and I don't want to mess with this man. <laughs> he seems <laughs> plenty pleased with what's going on out there. So Deceptive, you know, it seems like maybe all of a sudden he's very irritated, but then he comes right back to laughter. So, you know, that throws us, he's balanced, let's call him, <laughs> when it comes to the... Emotions on display as Ketzer plays the dirty diaper as a limp and shares a deuce with Mokrani, who checks back the ace. <coughs> okay. Yeah, always nice to keep a couple of aces in your check back range in these types of spots. Ace six, ace two, ace three, that Ooh. kind of thing. How about a six high straight? You know, Ketzer, I'm reminded of that. Ace four, or no, ace three it was, that he chose to three bet against Barca earlier here at this final table. Barca's tens, the victim of a deuce four five board. And here, Ketzer again rewarded when playing the small stuff. Mokrani, ace of diamonds working and the gutter. I don't think he'll be stepping aside just yet as the barrel comes in. We got to the turn oversight on my part. It happened rather quickly. Board pairing four, but still Nine. facts remain. Full pot does feel ambitious. Mokrani suspecting that the ace high may be good from time to time. Now a bluffable one on this river in the form of the nine of diamonds. A paired board with three diamonds out there and you have the worst of all straights. If all of a sudden pressure is applied by Mokrani, there will have to be considerations. Yeah, I think what's interesting about this one is Ketzer will be pretty confident that a flush draw would have had something else. You know, flush draws on this board, the four, five, six is going to come with over cards. They like to put money in the pot. A flush draw with a straight draw going with, they like to put money in the pot. So actually, McCranny's ability to represent a flush is not as good as we think. And certainly versus this large sizing pot bet made doesn't leave a lot of room for a raise. Is that a call? It is a call. Wow. A non-believer. 
Mokrani, that 2.7 was a good chunk of the 6.9 that he had back there, David. And credit to Ketzer for finding those sizings that he understands are going to look suspect and is able to earn himself a call from Mokrani, who, by the way, you know, when you see a call like that, you're thinking, what is the guy doing sometimes, you know? But let's stop to think about the fact that it's actually emblematic of a very deeply thoughtful thinking player in Makrani. Absolutely. It's a polarizing one. That's the point mm -hmm. of it. And uh, yeah, beautifully executed. Um, clearly has some bluffs at that size. Well, and in exchanges such as that, David, we prefer to be the violinist and not the violin. <laughs> but <coughs> just a beautiful execution there by Ketzer and we could assign that to more than one of the spots that he's worked his way into here at this final table. McCrony now King Jack 4.1. Yeah, I think he's got to go with this. 14 bigs. Going to actually open it, is he? No, he's going to limp it. Actually, this is sort of a limp trap. I kind of like it. King Jack can be a nice little limp trap hand. And no course shooting and doesn't bite with bottom of range as sometimes boss stacks are apt to do. Second pair on a queen high board for Mokrani. Seeks to induce. Yeah. Of course cheating going to be casual about throwing out a min bet here. Yeah. No, no, bring the the no look the can. drink order <laughs> position bet. I mean, that's a... I don't know how strong a parlay that's going to be read as by <laughs> Mokrani, who does, of course, come along and on the turn. 8-3 drawing dead. Mokrani again checks. Of course, you a quick check back, was it? Did I see that correctly? No, I think no, action's no, still on. yet to act. Look at this. No equity bluff. Well, that makes life a lot easier for McCranny. Kings and Jacks. One million. Now one he will million. speak up. Into 2.6 comes one million. You check, I continue betting. For Shidian. I don't see a point. I have nothing. Nothing. Yeah, good analysis from well, Horshidian. I'm really surprised McCranny doesn't know. check it over there. Yeah. One more time, allow his opponent to keep bluffing. Horshidian basically saying... I would have done your bidding, sir. Yep. Yeah. And you know, you say things like that also to just try to get people to second guess themselves, maybe earn yourself checks down the line. Look at the body language on Horshidian, by the way. Arm back over the chair, slumped over, just shades on. Living the dream here. Even though he lost that last pot. Yeah, high stakes cash game player for Shidian. Doesn't normally tussle in the tournament streets, but wanted to prove a point this weekend. Come along down to the Merit Poker Room here in the Crystal Cove and battle it out with some tourney regulars. Show that his particular brand of Thank you. big ball, aggressive bully boy poker could make hay. You can buy a lot of hay for 342k. <laughs> yeah, you can. This time he squares off with Ketzer. 10.75 board top two. Wow, it's his world right now. Yeah, against the gutter. Hydrating. Before choosing how to proceed. Ketzer going nowhere. Was this not monotone? It's a lot tougher because it's monotone. You see something in the <laughs> top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know what to do, but... Uh, now ask them, they say nothing. Check the 10. Check the 10, please. Yeah. Yeah. We have another mark. Call Clark. the floor and uh, let's, uh, let's stop the clock and talk about this. Another, another deck. 
Okay, so all this visible from here. we do seem to have a bit of an issue here where I was a couple of cards in quick succession. I think this is the third time Bro, we've a card here? that's marked. Yeah, Don't know if it's the or if ID deck or if maybe one of the players is peeling a little roughly or I certainly haven't observed anything that would suggest that's what's going on. Obviously these RFID decks are a bit more sensitive maybe than your your average, but designed to endure even shuffle machines, which can be quite hard on the cards. I don't think there's any real sense with just three of you left at a final table that somebody's up to any sort of shenanigans. Nevertheless, though, deck will be looked over and replaced as the dealer is pushed and the blinds 200, 400,000 with an almost 100k pay jump if the two big stacks can finally be left alone. But Mohamed Mokrani is going to have something to say about that as he is out there battling, scrapping, fighting for every single chip. Because I was here. So another new deck. I was here. I These like guys. Yeah. yeah, okay. Hopefully won't have any further issues. I like how... Uh, or Shidian is just like, we'll get someone over and we'll just have a big chat about this. Yeah, yeah, that was that was interesting, <laughs> wasn't it? Stop the clock, bring some tea, bring some baklava, let's have a, a caucus. Ace nine for Korchidian. Kets are thinking it over with Queen eight suited before folding. Ronnie, a patron. Jack 9 5 board. Got you on straight draw, get a second pair. K, the C bet sizing. Ten of hearts in particular will be a part of Makrani's decision off of a dangerously shortening stack to hang in. This is between a fifth and a sixth of his stack back being delivered to the middle here and an ace being delivered as a result to this turn, which is not the card that he wanted to see. Korshidian, of course, welcoming it as it gives him two pair. Yeah, only a pot size bet left. I wonder if he chooses a sizing other than all. He does have a huge, huge hand. Yes, there are some draws, but a lot of those good draws would have gone with their hand on the flop. I feel like he can actually pick a very small sizing here. Massage this situation and that is what he's done very nice Horshidian really really nice in fact <laughs> Mokrani clearly frustrated <laughs> not the turn card he was hoping for So the check fold to be expected in the face of the 1.2, which also was to be expected there. And while we are down to the final three of the main event, we're also down to the final stages of the Mystery Bounty, which is in the room just off the stage here. And our producer, Vitaris Milbudas, is also master of ceremonies in that one. <coughs> Pulls the bounties with the players. You occasionally will hear a little cheer go up or his booming, <laughs> bombastic voice, yeah. letting the players know how much they've won. He's the man for the job. Yeah. Well, 
Well, I think this is it for McCranny. More than qualifying off 11 bigs. No other way to play the ace three here. I haven't checked. <laughs> <Hold in. laughs> of course, as he's being stared at there, just saying, no need to look. I, I haven't looked at my hand. And, of course, deuce three into the bin. <coughs> So credit to Mohrani, he is back in there and fighting, keeping his head above water. When you go back to Dubai? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? I do have this sneaking suspicion, given yeah. the stack depth, that <laughs> if so don't bet it's me, a yeah. big if. <laughs> Mokrani <laughs> could get a double up. Could get back over that 20 big blind mark. This war of attrition between these three, this true L if you like, this Mexican standoff could continue for some time. Finally. Ace five. Raising to 1.3, the size up from the small. Is it still a thing, sizing up three-handed like this from the small? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, at this depth. These guys playing <laughs> a different kind of poker <laughs> to when a shorter stack is involved and having a bit of fun here with it. <laughs> You can see Ketzer is wary of Korshidian. Obviously, but this, you know, doesn't want to tussle too much. We saw that with the ace-queen. Should I say ace-king flat against the ace-queen <coughs> earlier on. Easy, huh? Taking circumspect routes. A nice adjustment from Korshidian will be to credit his opponent with a stronger range than you would normally when he flats him. Well, there hasn't been a huge amount of that either. Another openable one here for the chip leader. Nice. <coughs> Putting a little extra on top because he's up against a shorter stack. Doesn't want to allow his opponent an easy situation where he can realize equity, flatten, you know, C3 and go with equity. He wants to charge him if he wants to do so. And I think 8-6 of clubs, still enough hand to call the larger open here. Nine hundred. Oh. Well, Granny thinking this one over suited one gapper in the big. Just 3.6 back. He does have 400 out there. It would cost... 500. I'm very surprised by yeah. that. <coughs> well, I mean, you know, it's allowed. In the end, I think he settles on the decision we would have expected. I think he's, I think he's supposed to call there and try and flop something. But obviously, yeah, I suppose you're right. Now that I, my Few of my now that I reflect Few upon it. Four and four already in there, 500 and 3.6. He does need to avoid getting hacked away at, eaten alive, if you will. I mean, every three hands are costing <coughs> a stack a million. Yep. So it's, it's getting somewhat dire here. And we've seen this from him. Much happier to get the chips in first. Doesn't like being... No. The caller no. prefers being the aggressor. Ten, two, I mean, ten, this is a uh, well-known phenomenon. And we feel so much ten better jamming than calling off. <laughs> <laughs> bad joke, eh? Bad I shouldn't. Be. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we appear to have missed a bad joke. <laughs> she put the button there. She put the button there. Sorry, sorry, everyone. <laughs> get out, get out. Oh, 
Cranny. I don't think we'll go with this for 11. Suited maybe, off suit certainly not. Does lay it down, Rashidian. Limping. Ketzer. 6-3. I, I think that joke may have got him. <laughs> he appears to be tearing up there. Out flopping King High. With bottom pair. Turn connects with Horshidian, who makes fives for the lead and given the check back from Ketzer, he will activate oh, here. You can hear Mokrani in the background there shuffling those time banks. Ketzer going to peel. Bit of a scary river for both parties. Suspect showdown is evident. <coughs> Look at Ketzer. Wants to fight for every pot. If you bet one big nine, I will call. Yeah, yeah. you can tell Ketzer just wants to get his man heads up here. I think we'll see a very different game from him when that happens. Uh -huh. But right now, a 100k pay jump. It's just so precarious for these big stacks not wanting to clash, particularly the shorter of the two. Yes, they're far clear. All my tournament life. Tournament life, I had ace. But the other one was A side. Tales from the Felt, apparently en route to the final table, being shared by Rashidian. Gets her with an easy jam here versus his short stacked opponent. Indeed, Horshidian's yeah. prior high watermark yeah, in terms good. of a score in a tournament was just shy of $33,000. Mokrani. I know, the, I know what I have to call, but I'm not getting them. Fold, fold, fold. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's good. Okay, it's no. Why not? Okay. Like I will call you, but I'm not getting them. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Just fold. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe you think I will fold the uh, King Ten. <laughs> no, maybe that's why you, you don't have it. the face that will fold King Ten. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, I don't think King Ten is one of those hands we can expect <laughs> to be binned by that man there. Six off suit as the carousel revolves, three handed. <coughs> sort of begrudgingly forced to play these, you know, little blind versus blind pots. Is Korshidian out of position against Ketzer? Checks back. Eight deuce, air in both camps. Mildly interesting turn, and in so far as Ketzer now picks up the wheel draw. Yeah, no, no for Ketzer now. I wonder if he 
thinking about well it doesn't have to now I was going to say thinking about taking a stab if it checks one more time probably can pursue value now I know it sort of sounds strange to say but his opponent certainly would have bet with better so can target some king high queen highs and even jack high might get suspicious of this one what goes for the over bet how much <laughs> he didn't even know how much before letting go. Clearly not interested in the end, but I did wonder in that spot if uh, what is, uh, the decision to polarise is kind of cool, to be honest. He knows he has the best hand and thinks to himself, if I go really big, my opponent with king or queen high might get really suspicious. Is he allowed? <laughs> Did you play any pot limit back in the day? It was very popular in Ireland when I started. Pot limit hold'em? Yeah. I didn't. They loved doing pot limit. You know, uh, it's Cash games as well. I, I played very little no limit hold'em cash, but early in my career, the one and only time I busted my bankroll, I actually was playing in the back room of a billiards hall, I think, in a single table. And I should have known. It was in kind of a seedy part of town. Myself and Prahlad Friedman used to pop over to this place, and aces would run into King's pre-flop <laughs> like eight times a night, every <laughs> night. And we never thought to ourselves how improbable that was. You know, being in our early 20s, new to poker. <laughs> and I ended up in a spot where I flopped queens full on a queen 10-10 ten, ten board and somehow ran into pocket tens. And we thought that was the game. Things like that just happened all the time. But in retrospect, obviously, we were being <laughs> cheated. And the few thousand that I had lifted off me left me cursing No Limit Hold'em Cash <laughs> forevermore. As Mokrani will not be cursing a thing here. Pocket Queens in the big. Ketzer tried to slip in. Oh, now this is a foot gone wrong for Ketzer. Limping and then thinking that with some frequency, Mokrani is going to take bottom of range and just try to end things here. Playing back, this is just theory. 1.3 million, the three bet. Mokrani will be ready to go. Yeah, I don't know if I... Uh, Mokrani has shown himself willing to make <coughs> a couple of quite big folds here. And I think maybe... With the time delay, Ketzer's probably already caught up to some of those and realized it. But in this example, it's a bit ambitious. It does feel that way, doesn't it? Uh, his opponent has only 3.5, only nine bigs. Ah, it's kind of cool, I guess. 2.5? He's just clicked it back. <laughs> Even a click is not something five <laughs> deuce can contend with. Well, we got a lot of bets in there for a nine big blind yeah. stack. You saw the grimace on Ketzer's face. Whoops. Yeah. It happens. You want to be careful, by the way, because keeping Mukrani under 20 bigs, I think, is very important for these two insofar as if the eventual collision comes and Mukrani is able to double, he won't be doubling into a stack that's going to be lurking much, much longer than it might otherwise. Queen Jack <coughs> suited. Ketzer will speak first here. Pocket threes now for Horshidian. Three, more, yeah. Cool. Set minds. 2.2. In the middle, ace nine seven with a couple of diamonds. Ketzer with the flush draw. This one should be over. <laughs> should Ketzer rattle his saber?
750K on the turn now after getting there. Cats are disappointed, of course, that Orshidian doesn't have anything to do battle with, but an underpair to that board in particular. It's all over. I hit set. I didn't hit set. It's impossible. The whole tournament, no set on the flat. <laughs> Is this man complaining? Poor me, poor me, poor me. Is it possible? I never make a set. I have half the chips in play, <laughs> but I never make a set. Oh my god. Depends if you win the other one. <laughs> but is it possible to not hit the hard, set? Hard, hard yeah? Hard. I'm thinking, did I hit set today? No. Morning. Ace five for Mokrani. Jamming, Ketzer wants a count here. You want? With the king deuce. Even if I don't call, I know the next time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think probably getting a count no for the sake of getting a count as much as anything else here. Yeah, not so much associated with the holding, we would imagine. Because you cannot get a count of a person's stack I in game I have unless they put their chips in. Okay. So unless you ask, Look. this is a way to verify 100%. Yeah. No aces? First card. <laughs> you can keep four on them. <coughs> well, not to say that there aren't things to sink our teeth into about this particular portion of the program, David, but it does feel like it's standing in very stark contrast to the absolutely explosive path yeah. that we took to get here. You know, I don't want to sound like Horshidi and, you know, woe is us, where's the action? <laughs> I mean, really, our cup runneth over. But yeah, it was inevitable, we, I know, think. We've settled in. Yeah, it was inevitable we were going to have a period like this at some point. Stacks were very, very deep overall. Eight, five, three. Ronnie took a twirl with this jack-10, comes up empty, two overs, jack of spades working, let's see, or Shidian's king nine. Check back, now a good shot, straight draw, developing for both players. Checking once more. Easy stuff. Yeah, still no post flop betting, I was going to say. All the Freewheeling exchanges have given way to a very grindy program. Testament, by the way, to these three as well, David. Credit where credit is due. They've done what really they've needed to and earned their way to this moment, a moment that Makrani doesn't want to say goodbye to. Well, he really has been chiseling away this ever dwindling stack of his. He's wondering whether or not to bluff this Jack-10 here. Maybe sensing that Horchidian will have made noise to this point if he had any of this flop, but instead he checks and you win. <coughs> Declared as king high. 
able to haul in that pot, which won't do much for Khorshidian, but obviously would have been so much more meaningful for Mokrani. Yeah, every pot just so crucial now. He's been hovering between 9 and 13 big blinds for a few orbits now. Yeah. And the pressure just doesn't ease. Is there a dinner break or no? Is there a dinner break? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Shidian asks us. Get that man of the tradition, a cup of the traditional Turkish soup that's on offer today at the poker buffet. Hey, for those that, by the way, don't know the setup over here, it's all inclusive, no, all I meals, all crazy, <laughs> all drinks. You see, this time he decided yeah. to the mini bar. <laughs> he was serving all the and time. even a 24-hour <laughs> spread off to the side of the poker room where. Fresh fruits, veggies, salads, sandwiches, soups, hot dishes during breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all delivered. Ask yourself, the last time you played poker somewhere, you could say that. I mean, really, rolling out the red carpet, so to speak, these good folks over at Merit catering to every last want, wish, and desire that a Both? poker player might have <laughs> when doing what they do, just <laughs> trying to take everything off your mind outside of playing poker. And even the way in which they kind of schedule everything, where you can play multiple events throughout the course of a day, even if you work your way into a day two. Yeah, they really think of everything here. And it is so plush. And so fancy. Yeah, even the spa, the gym, all the facilities accessible free of charge. Fees for the day beds out on the pier during the season. I mean, just come on down, grab a towel, hop in the sea. And Ketzer hops into aces and deuces with a king kicker. You see Hoshidian. Contemplating with the wheel gutty, but we'll shut down. I wonder if uh, equity denier is <coughs> part of what Katzer was thinking. Obviously not. And induces a bluff instead. I feel like this is getting snapped off every day of the week here. Clubs do get there, but we've got the king of clubs in hand. Not sure we turn our hand into a bluff ever here because of the possibility of boats. So I think we just call. Wow. Overfold. Overfold yeah. is right. Yeah, half a million, just a quarter pot sizing. He had the king of clubs, the flush blocker. He had king high. Giving Korshidian credit for maybe the 10 alone, not the ace or the deuce so much. Yeah, definitely the 10 dangler could have hit, <coughs> but also like he can make that bet with the king himself. <coughs> yeah, I suppose that's fair. Again, we do block the other king, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit surprising to see Ketzer put that into the muck. We don't know, of course, what's on his mind. Maybe he looks over and observes something. He could have what he perceives to be some baselines and then, you know, not tells so much, but vibes having had this front row seat to the left of Horshidian for all of this final table. Yeah, I think also maybe remembering the hand from earlier where the 10% bet, he made the call after thinking about folding and just thought, oh, my opponent won't do this small bet again without it. Yeah. And he did. <laughs> well, this could be an all-in confrontation. That will result in a chop as often as it results in um, a win for either player. Yeah, the all-in declared by Mokrani. Count will be requested. Horshidian looking over. <laughs> just <laughs> I love that, that pause there. You look up at the dealer, dealer looks back at you, and then it's just kind of, the, it, yeah, like, <laughs> give me a count. This is pretty close for 12 bigs, not even 12, 
seven bigs. I think you probably have to get sticky with ace five. He loves the ace six, we know. Now, Mokrani has been on the tight side, if you can say anybody has been tighter here in a pretty rambunctious three-way affair, but I, I think this is the correct <laughs> call. Yeah, an ace is an ace, and obviously Mokrani would do this with some of the other Broadway combos, paint. You won't chop without King's love? Maybe some. F? Okay, let's chop. We decide. It's our money. It's definitely a... Uh, a player at the table who does not What's want that outcome. That we cannot chop. There is no board. There is board like two, okay. three, and now what can I? Three. Or if someone hit. <laughs> Neither player with a diamond. Okay, put three. <laughs> put three now. First, finish. No, no? Oh. not finish. Never finish. <laughs> put a fair fight now. <laughs> no, we don't want river. Relax. <laughs> no river. Okay. There's the three. You should have put the three on turn so we won't eat others' cards. I still want four, he wants five, huh? So King would have been a dirty way to do it there, wouldn't it? If I had ace boost, I win. If I had ace king, I win. If I had aces, I win. If yeah. a king comes, you win. Yeah, oddly enough, that board texture, that's the <laughs> sneaky way to all of a sudden. And you know, if it happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guarantee you Mokrani would not have just been on his feet and incredulous. It just, even the best of us look at a spot like that and we don't think to ourselves, a king is a disaster. We just think, okay, chop it up. But wait a minute, mm -hmm. five kicker plays in that spot. That's a gross path. Yeah, the deuces get counterfeited. <laughs> Both cards play. <laughs> Another suited baby ace for Mokrani, and might he book a second date? No. <laughs> three off. Showing great resilience here, Mokrani. Credit to him. <laughs> this could have been a heads up confrontation an hour ago, but he's digging in deep. I talked Do about digging at the top of the day here. Maximiliano, very long. <laughs> I don't want to call him his very long name. Max, I call him. <coughs> Max. Mr. Max. Macroni will sit this one out. <coughs> to be expected are limp checkbacks the bulk of the time between these guys. Very much the product of the lurking Mokrani. King, queen, ten, top pair. Bad end of the gut shot. Checked over. I don't anticipate we see Ketzer get out of line here. Nor do I. Does check back. Kicker improvements for Korshidian. Five. You, you chopped this correct a while ago, you sure? You give me more. No, I'm just asking, because why you should have two greens? Two what? Always He's actively involved in the subsequent pot and is reflecting upon whether or not the chop with ace five versus ace four was properly conducted just based on the presence of two green chips in Mokrani's stack. Ketzer genuinely thinking his nine high can be good here. Not anymore, but was. It wasn't just about that possibility of a good shot to the bad end. It was about the possibility that nine high was good. Right. Yeah. And no, I refuse to say that half with catch rise. I'm n I don't know what you're talking about. The 
little Kasuf coin? Catchphrase? Yeah, if you could only see the look on Lappin's face. <coughs> A6 suited. Speaking of sticky fingers. Mokrani. King four. Does defend for the extra 500 here. Reluctantly. 910 Jack giving him a gutter. Horshidian with the nut flush draw. Yeah, sometimes you want to check this draw. Interested to know how this one goes. I thought he might go very big, maybe even shove 2.5x pot or check. He's actually found this small sizing, setting up a presumably a turn shove, whether he gets there or not. Which, I guess, if he's met with a check raise, we'll just call it off for the price there. Interesting. Uneventful in the end. Yeah. I see here we have about 15, maybe 20 minutes left on this frame. <coughs> These guys still playing a full clock right now. I think perhaps when it goes heads up, we will play a 30-minute clock. But for the moment, these guys playing full hours. Okrani going to shove this one for less than 11 bigs. Don't really see another way to play king eight here. Always takes these few moments. Oh no, look at this. A limp. I presume a limp trap. Is he He's trapping all the way down to King 8 here? Perhaps. Well, he maybe suspects that Horshidian is going to be inclined to put the raise in from the big eventually here with something that can't handle the heat. But, you know, we famously seen some people that go, you know what, I'm tired of you, and they just dig in, and I'm not sure you want to be spinning the wheel with something like King-8, although on the Ace-King-Deuce board, it'll work just fine. Two y quick checks. Yeah, and McCranny with something to target now. Obviously feels very nutty here when you have King-8, knowing your opponent would have shoved any ace and any better king. So hoping that Korshidian has a deuce or a seven here. Or maybe a, a very weak king from which to extract some value. Now, a devil on the shoulder of Korshidian here, maybe, thinking his opponent would have shoved the majority of King X and Ace X. And can he steal this one? Not going to try, but definitely thinking in that manner. Cranny just hanging on in there. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, <coughs> his spirit animal must be our booth mosquitoes because just <laughs> buzzing around, <laughs> refusing to just go away. Uh, uh, unless they're, <coughs> you know, rising from the dead, Ali. I, 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 I see two corpses here before me. Well, there's a couple stuck to the ceiling that I... Oh, yeah. You know, I, I've got a number of ways to eradicate these things, but uh, <laughs> I think it's a, a weight belt of some sort that I've, I've been hurling <laughs> toward the heavens. 6-4 suited here for Mokrani. Y you know, one thing I'll say about him, David, is that he has navigated his plight to virtual perfection, <coughs> I mean, I don't, I can't think of a moment where he's put a foot wrong, sure. let's call it, 
and he's just remained engaged and focused and up to the task as we see him sit this one out a very rare open raise from the small by Horshidian here Ketzer with 10-7 mulling yeah I don't think we're going to see him continue here to a almost 4x obviously he would love to start playing against Horshidian but there is a 14 million gap between their stacks and there is a 5 million chip player at the table. So until something gives, I think he's just got to roll over in all of those types of spots, particularly with not easy to play holding. So just 10 7 0. Well, yeah, what has surprised me a little is just how Mokhrani has been able to play this tippy tappy brand of poker that he likes, limping in. Players not pouncing on him, raise folding, finding the occasional reshove, finding the occasional shove, just able to navigate somehow without always the big moves, without having to go to showdown. Kets are now going to probably stick his man in here with a suited hand such as this. Plays quite well against the calling range. And gets a lot of folds. Why you don't say all in? I like the Brazilian move. The way it's Brazilian. Ronaldinho? Huh? Ronaldinho? I don't know. Football. Ronaldinho Gaúcho. Gaúcho. I don't know. You don't know? No. He plays football? No, no, no. What? Not anymore, not anymore. Okay, so what? He, do, he says 5.2 million? <laughs> what? I don't understand. <laughs> no, no, no. Dribble. And uh, happy play. Yeah, I don't know. There is Dato, you know Dato? The Italian guy? Uh -huh. He always mistake. Three point. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. He announces every bet, every number. Uh -huh. Again, King Ace off. Coming with a limp. We're about to find out, I think, whether it is a trap all the way down to King Eight. You, yeah. you know, Horshidian okay. all in. does jam here, but <laughs> no green, all in. <laughs> I get the sense that yeah, yeah Mokrani does lay it down. <laughs> you know I mean? He doesn't believe yeah, Horshidian is doing yeah. Yeah, yeah. He had green, now he doesn't have green. This with dusty holdings. I think he really is come to perceive any of the occasions on which aggression comes out of that seat in spots such as that to be credible. Yeah. He, and he was right on that occasion. But in the long run, I just think the King 8 is too much hand when you consider that there's a big blind ante, a full big blind ante in play here. His M of four, surely on the button, King eight is enough. Surely blind v blind, King eight is more than enough. You're not proposing that the King eight should be played as a shove, or are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm really surprised that every King isn't played as a shove. Yeah, but certainly the limp call, we don't need to. No, and, and like a hand like King Jack definitely is a nice limp call against an aggressive opponent because you get him in there with weaker jacks and weaker kings. King eight, I think, I start being the shover. Yeah. Meanwhile, another one of these several blind versus blind limp pots developing uneventfully between the two big stacks. Yeah, and they really haven't tried to go after each other it's mm. almost like a uh, yeah peace accord <laughs> has been signed on both sides you know those it's don't last <laughs> historically speaking so perhaps <laughs> the ceasefire will be off at some point the hardest working person at the table right now is the dealer yeah yeah very very small pots very few chips being committed playing some limp pots playing some one street pots no fireworks we had a lot of fireworks in the early going here today, but it has 
Slow down to a virtual crawl now. Yeah. No real movement of chips in any direction. Everyone just holding steady for about an hour now. Yeah. And you know what? Credit to both of the big stacks. They haven't shown any measure of irritability at the continued presence of Mokrani. Sometimes, you know, you get this deep into this three-handed affair with a guy who's kind of short-stacked, and you think to yourself, all right, whatever, man, let's go. Let me spin just, you know, any two. And we certainly here at Merritt in particular, we see occasions on which, you know, hands that we don't otherwise expect to behave in certain manners do so. Oh, here oh, we go. Yeah, this may oh. be certainly the moment as Ketzer finds Mokrani with an inferior ace. Yeah, I wondered if Ketzer might actually <coughs> limp trap this ace-queen suited. But obviously, he's the one under ICM pressure right now. Decided better of it. Wow, what a flop. Spades for Ketzer. Open-ender for Mokrani. Has some hope, a lot more than he did pre-flop, and then the three rolls right off to give him the seven high straight, but not out of the woods yet. No reaction whatsoever from Makrani, who is vulnerable, 7.8 million in the middle, needs to fade the spade, and does just that as the long-awaited double finally delivered to him. And Kets are the victim. Little thumbs down update to his rail. Yeah, that could have been it. That could have been heads up with stacks fairly close together. Maybe a 60-40 contest situation. Ketzer would have relished, I feel. Would back himself heads up, I believe, against Horshidian. Instead, 8 million now in the stack of Mokrani. Ketzer down to, what, 14 million, something in that region? Oh, no, he's 20. I'm sorry, he had chipped up a bit. So he had got yeah. to 24 and down to I mean, it's much easier. I go 20 now. Thank you. Thank you. Jack 10 from Akrani. Off of this now nearly 20 big blind stack. Limps in as Ketzer runs over to the rail, sitting this one out. Horchidian says, let's take a peek at what turns into middle pair for his 9-7. Oh, and now look at Mokrani. No sooner does he get the kind of stack that affords him some maneuverability than we see him exercising it. 800? That's 800 into 1.2. Yeah, interesting situation out for Rashidian. Obviously, not going anywhere. As of yes, Mohrani. It's an 8 9 queen. May continue this story. There is that queen that you just mentioned, giving him the open ender. That's certainly the best one. And. I wonder if he's considering going for the check jam here if his opponent does take a stab. Corchidian obviously would like to get this one to show down. Just look at his <laughs> body language, by the way, as we see the check back. Allowing Makrani to take a free pull at the open ender and instead the king on the river. Will he bluff? We saw him take the stab with air. Yeah, if Corsidium was more horizontal, he'd be lying down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Mokrani. I don't know that this one gets through. 1.6, though, into 2.8. Meaningful. But as played, especially where the kicker is as strong as a queen with this seven, you kind of discount the queen from being a part of the equation 
And if you do so, it's just, am I up against a king or not? I don't know. I think there might be some queen X there that just, you know, he took a stab with the queen X, picks up the queen, but is worried about the king. And then when the second king comes, feels like he can target the seven and three. I think that makes some sense. I also think he could go as light as maybe an A7 here. I think very much targeting seven or three now and therefore a very good seven could bet. Good call from Korchidian. The right amount is sticky, feeling good. He's put Mukhrani back in the box. Mm -hmm. Disappointing developments, obviously. Before, before he bet, I say, whatever he bet, I will double. Uh, one million, two million, you know? 1.8 million too much, I didn't double. Unsolicited <laughs> insights there for Ketzer. He's got his own problems. Yeah. <laughs> Just a touch of the cool story bros there from <laughs> Ketzer, yeah. it felt. Yeah. By the way, if you're Makrani, the post-mortem, I mean, you just lost that pot and you got to listen to the guy explain, you know, I mean, unflappable thus far. I cannot use here and there. Name? Boot. Yeah, I know. All right, thank you. What's his name? Tell him thank you. I, I do like this. I can like this. <laughs> thank you, Andre. Thank you, Amir. <laughs> he's the, uh, he's the, uh. So much personality in that seat, David. A little bit refreshing. Certainly something that we don't lack here in particular, but in general, a lot of these poker streams, the tacticians that work their way into the final two and three, oftentimes really not indulging us in any of the antics. Oh, he is a proper character. No doubt about that. <laughs> is he doing the butterfly press for the dealer here? I mean, come on. This guy's something else. Ketzer now might send this one. I can't recall the exact stack of Mokrani after he shipped away that 1.6 million right. in the last meaningful hand, but I presume he's down around the 5 million mark. No, he's down in fact around the 4.5 million mark. So exactly where he found himself before that double up. Looks like we've got about four minutes left before the break. These guys have earned their break. Sort of a glacial affair in this particular frame. Bit of a melt-off for Ketzer as the man who doubled Mokrani. And of course, there was a balanced transfer of the bulk of those chips over to Horshidian, who is now up in over 40 million. Defending with a dominated 10 to the Jack-5-5 five five board. King of Diamonds working for Ketzer. Diamonds on the turn, giving Ketzer the nut flush draw, and yet no post flop chips have been committed, and he just plays it to show down as Horshidian bink the deuce. Look at the reaction there, tongue out, sun, sun shining down. You see Ketzer oh, wow. <laughs> showing way the better of it there, but 
Another thing he could do once he took the line he did. This is for you, Doyle. Doyle, the, the Brunson 10 deuce. <laughs> this is original Doyle. 10 deuce. Oh, and a real one now for McCranny just before the break. Can he find a double up? Yeah, he'd love to get to that break. With that double is obviously the impending blind jump. It's going to leave him even shorter. There's the jam. Any customers? I've spoken too soon, who knows? Just let it go. Curious pause there, maybe. Look, Ronnie flashing. A look at the boys there. I wonder if that was actually a pause designed to get himself the button for the level jump, tiny edges Ooh, that yeah. could be earned. Just wait for it to get to about 50 seconds. Know that we won't get two hands in yeah. in that time. Wouldn't be surprised if it had been. Here we go. Just like that. Blind versus blind. Ketzer sticks it in. And McCranny says, actually, you've been shoving quite a lot of my big blind. I think I'm going to call this one with King. Suited and, well, he is ahead, but it's not Oof. over yet. <laughs> but he's even further ahead now on the two club board where he did dig in. Ketzer perhaps going to gift wrap one. And now draws dead as Makrani makes the flush, and that's absolutely what he needed heading to a break was a double just to try to continue to keep his head above water and maybe, just maybe, at some point, I know it was short-lived, but give himself enough chips to where we can see him play a bit more poker. David, we know he has it in him. Oh, he certainly does. Immediately got pegged back sending the chips earned from Ketzer in the direction of Korchidian last time round, but the double up this time round may be the beginning of the comeback, and it has been a festival of comebacks. Just hearing in my ear, we have one more hand. Okay. Just enough time, literally by the second. Cranny now 23 and a half, 24 bigs. He's going to yeah. put another yeah, half yeah, big yeah, to yeah, use yeah, here. Please. Limping in with the King 7. No. Corchidian, happy to knuckle no, back, really see a free one. Check. Jack Deuce. Well, doesn't connect with either player as McCrani on the turn fires half a million with the open ender. And now. They will officially find their way to the break. 
There's a look at how things will stand en route to that break. An over 20 big blind stack with the blinds going to 250, 500 for Mohamed Mokrani. Threatening and just look, only nine bigs now separating him and Felipe Ketzer. Very improbable developments as Felipe failed to keep pace with the man of the moment, obviously, Horshidian, as we bring you back into the booth for a little debrief here by Mr. Lappin about what we just saw. Fever, she's scribbling away. Well, as I like to do, Ali, uh, I, I have been scribbling away here. At the top of the broadcast, I quoted Clint Eastwood, who said there are two kinds of people in this world, those with loaded guns and those who dig. Well, this tournament, this battle royale, if you will, has boiled down to a Mexican standoff of sorts, precisely like the one we all remember in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. The question remains, though, which of our players will be Blondie, which will be Tuco, and which will be Angel Eyes shot into that grave at the yeah. end? Three-handed. I mean... Time will tell, although I got to say, Mokrani, who we all thought would just kind of give way to what were the two massive stacks lingering. And if on the back end of this break, he can spin his way up forward, it could very well be either he or Ketzer who book what would rate to be the eventual date heads up with Korshidian. So then don't go anywhere. When we return, I will bring James Dempsey in alongside Mr. Lappin to take you home here at the Merit Poker Western Series main event final day. See you in a few. his desire to get it in and the hand that he snapped off a moment ago is the one that is dominated and in his possession on Are this occasion one? no much better <laughs> <laughs> much better it is it's a much much better hand but oh. no use against this hand Ali no maybe queen calm 3.1 million chip pot again Horbin looking to stave off elimination and again behind <laughs> Yeah, the rest rooting for him, except perhaps the chip leaders. <laughs> well, even they don't like having a 15 big blind stack in here. Comes You're right about that. A king in the window was bad news, at least a queen behind it, along with the ace of spades working for the time being. Now paths to a chop if a 10 rolls off. Queen, the only direct winner. Horfin will take the chop. Absolutely he would. Can he hit it? No. Mm -hmm. Five of clubs, so not even an orbit in. And Hadi Hordbin of Iran <laughs> dispatched 
James in ninth place. Yeah, they gave him a little sweat. Let him get there where they do. They will yeah. deal him Ace-Queen next hand and yeah. start anyway. 34,000 and change. Going to Hadi, who's made some deep runs here. Plays the cash games as well. Will add to his career live tournament earnings of 123,000, but just a modest tick up from his all-time best live cash, which prior to this was 29,500, obviously. Oh yeah, too smart. Or just fleet-footed. <laughs> yeah, I well, know oh that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not today. Barco with just five blinds and an ace. It's under the gun, it's eight-handed, <laughs> oh, it's no. grim. But you may just decide to run it. Going to be in the big buy next hand, of course. Going to be posting one, having four back, one in. It's not even a spot where you could kind of do the half a stack thing, because half a stack is barely a raise anyway. <laughs> Just to maximize the old forward look critique. You know, as, the as the stats go around, uh, I like that Shugral and Jam even more because he's a little bit adrift of the rest. Only the one super short. Recognizing that. Light opening range. Cats up. Ooh, Panetti. All right. This is oh, definitely one we want to play. How do we want to play it, though, That's in the cutoff with... Ace Jack as a flat, it looks strong like enough as is. Panetti's looking inquiring into the big blind <laughs> stack. Yeah, you don't really want to get no. squeezed, but you don't necessarily expect a lot of that to go down either, but just because of the laws of the implicit collusion, wanting to have multiple right. stacks up against the all-in player to but eliminate them. Yeah, exactly that. We have to play it. I'm not sure if I'm all in. Oh, he oh, plays just, it as a jam. Yeah, I'm just see what the James. stacks are behind because that might be just fine. Yeah, four million, four million, four million. So yeah, the twenty blinds. It it just makes it like a ha what's a hand like ten is going to do now? Right. I have to fold. Especially when you're guaranteed <laughs> a, a visit to the roulette wheel for Barca <laughs> yeah. and that possible pay jump realization. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, for Barca here, who ran tens into Ace three unsuccessfully, <laughs> is dominated <laughs> on his feet. In a 2.6 million chip pot, hoping. Oh, perhaps some prayers <laughs> may be answered if a four or a five trickle off the deck. <laughs> Anxious moments for the Frenchman. Seven. Doesn't help, so it's going to be the seven outs. And that's not one of them. That'll do it for Sammy Barca of France. 235,000 in career live tournament earnings. 131K, <coughs> his high water mark. Not going to be bettering that here today. <laughs> as GG's the eighth place finish here in the Western Series main event. We'll award him a tidy 45,600, but nothing more as the field realizes a roughly $12,000 pay jump courtesy of the second casualty thus far here at this final table. So then, the beneficiary is... Oh, pardon me, House Banning was under the gun, not in the big blind this hand. Has decided to put it in. Very much making sense, Ali. He's found a big one, King-Queen. Shagralin thinking about it here. The nice. Wow, he is going for it. Thinking I'm, I'm a little in here. surprised, yeah. Yeah, he th I guess he thinks Hasbani's just putting it in with any two. Well, looking to avoid two random oh. cards the very next hand in the big blind right. with the big blind Annie. So, Jugralin pouncing with an ace five. But, I mean, he was Hasbani was going to get called here. Jugralin could have allowed it to happen behind. Right, because he's big stack, sir. Yeah. Oh, my word, we could have a double elimination, Ali. Horshidian waking up with ace queen suited, and this is not what you want to see when you're Jugralin. These are the risks. And obviously worth noting, Jugralin does have more chips than Hasbani. So when he does this, he would secure the ladder up if Horshidian wins the pot. But there are obviously scenarios where he goes out here 
And now Spanier doubles. <laughs> wow. I think this is a little optimistic. So, a double elimination potentially on our hands. Note that Khorchidian dominates both Haspani yeah. and Jugralin in a three million chip pot. Yeah, Erjan sitting there going, this is quite nice. <laughs> I just let her up two more me? spots here. The dream for him. Seven left, 56k. 57k, pardon me. Five left, it's 85k. Look at the rail. Jugralin needs to find a five. And oh. he's found not one, but two of them. The injustice. Wow. Ace of hearts as well, just in case. Yeah, no route to victory for the other two here. Hasbani could make the running kings. Yeah, all right, are we? Now he draws dead, of course. <laughs> Four of hearts, no less. Hasbani's queen of hearts won't do the trick. And five's full. Look at the Kazakh boys celebrating. Wow. Not to be overlooked, of course. The lack of mercy being shown to Antoine Hasbani James, who GGs. took pocket nines and king queen in back to back spots and ends up a seventh place finisher. Certainly made the most of what he was given. But the Lebanese national with 144,000 in career tournament earnings coming into this one will haul in 57,000. $300 and leave us with six handed. It's always nice. Full 300K. Obviously, hoping for better ROI when you put that much on the line, maybe, but not a bad day's I work. I think, if I remember rightly, Mike actually got in in a kind of a weird way. I think super high value. Might be in a really high value vip free roll satellite kind of thing to get in the guy won it managed to engineer it so mike played it for him and mike was playing on a free roll i think for 20 percent or something like that that's even nicer oh yeah Can't might be wrong with that but meanwhile on the topic of nicer upgrading to ace king here you saw a pause out of the jack nine that Certainly feels Ooh. more like posturing than anything else. Jugralin, though, on the button, ace 10. And we've already observed the yeah. way in which he has been willing has. to react to Ketzer. And it's on display yet again here. 5.5 million, Ooh. ripping it in. Air John, ace jack suited might have been the one to do it. But oh, wow. He's seen enough. Air John in there as well. Remember, he's the guy that limp jammed against Horshidian. And Ketzer, look at this. He's going to laugh, but let's see how he figures this out. That looks super strong from Erjan. Just casually flicked it in. Asking for a count, I mean, listen. Double problem. Even if you have some concerns about what. And perhaps, perhaps for the final time, Welcome back to the Merit Crystal Cove here in the Merit Resort Spa. Final time this evening. Buffet. Let's let's put it there. I'm going to be coming back to this buffet for decades to come. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Look, we have got an interesting dynamic here. It went bish bash bosh early on in this final table. Any hopes of an early night may be dashed now with the double up from Makrani. He's back in the mix in a three-way affair that I predict could go for quite some time. They're still very deep, James Dempsey. Yeah, this was kind of how I saw things going when I was last in here. We got down to four. We've obviously played two hours, got down to three. It went so fast at the top of the final, it has to slow down. We'll see the average stacks now slightly decreasing. His blinds going up again, but this is still anyone's game, really. It is anyone's game. Corchidian sort of undamaged over the last period. Ketzer's actually taken a couple of body blows. Ketzer took his shot at Mokrani, lost. Then Mokrani quickly sent those chips over to Corchidian. <laughs> and then Ketzer took a second stab at Mokrani and lost again just before we went on this break. So as you can see, at the bottom of the table, the two lower stacks, Ketzer and Mokrani, much close to each other now. And with that blind increase, just 30 bigs and 21 bigs. Meanwhile, Corchidian, 41.7 million, way, way out in front. Yeah, this is set up so nicely for him. 
But we're far from done yet. Still very deep. I predicted this would finish at the sort of 300, 600, 400, 800 level. Still what, two hours from the 400, 800. Cool. Yeah, at the beginning of the day, that certainly seemed like what would happen. Oh, look at this. Trappy, trappy here from Korshidian looking to deal a body blow to Ketzer. I actually prefer an open from him here. Um, Ketzer has played small ball mm. both in and out of position, mostly in position against Korshidian here. Do you think he might change attack with that now, just given how things have gone? And well, here we go. Well, I really didn't expect it in this hand but, but this hand makes sense right yeah I, like sometimes i i kind of like the uh, the trashy stuff as a light open and i guess that's what he's doing here as well i don't love it with all the icm pressure that right. can be applied upon me though that's the one factor pushing back against this move Cortidian now every reason to believe ketzer has a real hand he hasn't done this before he hasn't attacked the limps of Cortidian at all so <laughs> and the limp raise Limp raise and leave room, perhaps, for Ketzer to rip it. Yeah, if Ketzer had a hand like ace-jack, ace-queen here, he would go with it. If he had a hand like pocket eights, pocket nines, he'd probably go with it. So, yeah, Corsidian definitely... <laughs> <laughs> he looks business, doesn't he? Has he, has he been as, as lively and as chatty as he was throughout the final table up until now, or is it, is it game face time? No, I would say more so. Loads of chat Ooh. out of him. Um, he, he does this interesting psychological thing where when he wins a pot, he immediately talks to his opponents about how unlucky he was something happened in the hand that he just won. <laughs> it's almost like an extra needle. <laughs> this is like Helmuth to a new level, is yeah. it? <laughs> but he's uh, quite the character, loads of fun, talking to us deeply into his mic on occasion. Just pulls the mic up from his lapel and I like that. speaks directly to the commentators and broadcasting team. Full of character, must be said. Ketzer, now virtually level pegging. With yeah. Cranny. Who would have guessed? Incredible how this final table has progressed. And when I left, I thought that I'd come back to find this man perhaps with the lead. I thought he would jab his way through this final table. Look, if ace-queen could have held against ace-four... James, right. ace-queen suited against ace-4 Flopped off. the flush draw as well. Flopped the flush draw, even when his opponent made the straight draw. And, uh, yeah, if that, if that one could have held, we would be heads up. He would have about 40% of the chips in play versus 60. And given maybe a, a small <laughs> skill edge that I feel Ketzer might have, that's kind of close. That yeah. might have been an almost 50-50 contest. But he lost that one. He's lost another one since, in fairness, a very good call from Mokrani with the King-5 suited blind v blind when the Queen-3 shoved, and that's put us in the situation we now find ourselves. Interesting now, Korchidian. How does he proceed here with a small pair? Just calls. Could have gone the other way, couldn't he? Yeah. Could have jammed that one, I think, for yeah. sub-30. I know that seems like a big, big shove, but it is allowed. It certainly is. Put all the pressure back. As played now, one of those boards where it's very hard to miss altogether. Lots of good shots, lots of draws possible. Ketzer with one of those good shots is going to fire the C bet, absolutely as he should. And it's hard for Korshidian here with an under pair. Maybe wants to be sticky once, but also could just give this one up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that. But yeah, I, a little surprise. To see him not just yeah, shove that in. He's shown great understanding, at least in the early stage of this final, of ICM. How he can bully these guys. And that certainly seems like a reasonable one to bully with, given, you know, pair's a pair. Sometimes you get called, you're flipping anyway. PEDs. Tiger palm is from Thailand. Tiger palm. Tiger palm. It's very good. Not sure I'd be sniffing the <laughs> container passed over to me Sniff by the this. chip leader <laughs> in a three-handed contest. Yeah. <laughs> I jest, of course. 
I don't. <laughs> I'm going to fall for that. We're playing for hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Just 155 locked up. 252 per second. And then 342. Sorry, did the dealer just pull the same flop? Yeah. Out of the muck? King 9 6. Ketzer, this time with the best of it, in position once more. And Horshidian is going to start firing chips at him. And there are lots of draws on this board, so Ketzer might be just willing to go with this hand, might just raise it up here. He caught it right. He has decided to raise it up. Can look pretty bluffy as well, can't it, here? Raising these dry boards. I say dry, dry in terms of suits rather than pure dryness. Of course, plenty of draws around. Little hand funeral here from Cortidian. <coughs> So I was standing just behind the camera when you were on the last break and you went back to your Clint Eastwood quote. Well, we're three-handed. You just, you're just really getting money's worth for it, aren't you? Just <laughs> I apologize to anyone who's been watching from the start and has had to hear the same thing four times. It's called a callback, James. <laughs> That's what good commentators do. <laughs> you saying I'm... Yeah, I, okay. It's fair. <laughs> One final time, I'm going to repeat myself now. One final time, guys. If you haven't smashed that like button, that oh, subscribe button, oh. please do that for us. Hang on, I haven't liked today yet. No, get in there, there James. Are we up I'm to in the top. I'm in the top hundred. We're very close to hundred, are we? If you want, we can three or nice to see the subscribers ticking up as well. Throughout the series, be nicer. <laughs> These words got out a little bit further. These are the best <laughs> streams, in my opinion, in terms of the poker. You might not like myself and David and Ali. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. But despite us, it's put it very on mute. good. Yeah. Just put it on mute and watch the streams. <laughs> Crazy action. <laughs> Speaking of, that's a... First one was uh, nine. Just sending it here. One yeah. was queen. I raise, I fold. 30 bigs. I look this first. Big shove. I look this really is. Very Maybe big shove. I Didn't expect I that. Just, <laughs> they're just looking over it. Eight, eight, eight of them. But I'm going to ask you one uh, more question, audience. <laughs> Please... <laughs> Go to the GPI Global Poker Awards website and go to the fans voting section. There are four categories. One of them is live stream. Give us a vote. Are we on there, are we? Wasn't even aware. I think so. I think it's a, it's a democratic sort of situation. Wow. Heading over there now. Okrani with sixes here. Sub 20. Might just send us. Does. Oh. Snap call. <laughs> what I do. I, what I do. <coughs> oh, wow. Korchidian right? has an ace. Oh. Felipe, you pulled an ace. <laughs> here we go. This could be it. <coughs> could be the end of Mokrani. Or it could be a very, very timely double up ace in the window. Well, a cruel blow from oh! all my goodness me! Oh. Not again. Another six on the turn. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Ketzer feeling sick watching that. Oh. Of it was one card of, or two cards away from having the monstrous lead going into heads up play now. Equalizing somewhat. 30 to 20 to 13. Uh, nine, yeah. sorry. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Nine, I don't call. And he's pulled Korchidian <laughs> back down to 30 yeah, million with that yeah. as well. This is One a remarkable nine, turn of events call. here. Mokrani, then he's I been go. patient. And let's be honest, he had the best hand. It was a, a run out where he was immediately dealt a dagger to the heart. But right. then swiftly that dagger was removed. And plays firmly in the belly of his opponent. 
The dealers do not disappoint here. Oh my goodness. With the final ridiculous. table drama. No, no, no. I said East could never work. Oh, okay. I know you <laughs> and you're right. Kets are really the victim no. here. No, I'm the short set. 100k? It's 100k and three times Ketzer has had his man all in in some form or another. And three times McCranny. Yeah. Well, I don't know, James. This has been the fortnight of the comebacks. I was about to say, it's been the theme here at Merritt. Yeah. He's persevered. <coughs> I heard some of the production team referring to it as cockroach-like abilities. <laughs> Just sticking around surviving. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, has almost average chips. Yeah, and this now a much more competitive three-way. Yeah, 30 bigs, plays 60 bigs, plays 40 bigs. Put the kettle on. Yeah. We're going to be here a while. Ketzer with the best of it. Checking back that flop a little deceptively there with a nine. Will he go for a mergey sort of bet here? I think he will. And will Korshidian get sticky with the queen <laughs> high? <laughs> He's busy counting the stats. Is that, has he got the 30 million on the left and is this extras or something? Or is it tw has he got 25 million on the left and then he's got his gamble stack? 19. So 30, 19, 49, how much you have? Wow. 18. Incredible turn card there, David. I can't quite believe that happened. No. Hmm. I was just I beginning my eulogy. He's <laughs> <laughs> going to talk sure about how he'd battled, how he'd, you know, hung on in there for so many hours. He'd made these guys work to... Send them packing. I was just, I was ready to go. I'm sure it would have been beautiful. Four hours of 300. I have no doubt. <laughs> I play heads up six, seven hours. <coughs> yeah, the period Chris of 40, <laughs> 400 and 300 <laughs> is now longer six than the rest of the final <laughs> table. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It took us. Two levels in about 15 minutes to get down from nine to four. Well, nine till the break with four left. It might have been, I don't know how we played four-handed before that. Yeah, we didn't even play the full frame to get to the final table there. Like about 10 or 15 minutes shy. Yeah. Well, here we that's, go, McCranny. That's been Look at this. He gets to have some fun now. He's been waiting for this whole final table to get in the mix, start pressurizing these players, having his go at it. Oh, hello. Ketzer, take a bow. Coming out with the limp raise, recognizing perhaps that Mokrani would be frisky when he finally gets the opportunity and setting a benchmark here. You won't do this stuff to me. You're going to have to go for all of it a lot of the time. Yeah, and sort of protecting maybe his overall desire to play small ball, in a sense. What he'd like to do is limp in and see some pots, mm -hmm. see some flops, see some turns, banking on his ability to outplay these guys. But then just throwing a, a warning shot across the bow there. If you do raise, be prepared for a cheeky little limp raise. Still my moves. <laughs> Learn with you. Huh? <coughs> you steal my moves. I don't think he owns the moves. Maybe he does. I quite fun to own the moves. Trademark. Yeah. Moves. Limp race and the small. Trademark. Do you have to pay a license fee to do it, do you think? Oh, 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 oh. what have we here? We have a dynamic between these two guys. Does Mokrani ever just flat that? Or what's just gone on here mean he has to raise? I think so. 
And Ketzer's got a pretty pure call, to be honest. So I think this pot far from over now. It does, it, it does look like these two are just swinging at each other. You told me the last frame was on the dry side. I've come in and it's just <laughs> punch off the punch. Maybe it's you, James. I think it is. They're just trying to impress me. As you say, Ketz are surely three-handed. Big by Nancy in play. Isn't raising this to fold. Queen 10 suited. Beautiful looking hand. Yeah, and if he catches a good piece of this one. Look at even these two iron chips as well. Just three million separates them. 7.2 in the pot. We're playing an SPR of two. Oh and dear. a queen and a diamond on the board. Oh, dear. Oh Mokrani dear. cannot believe his fortune on this flop. He thinks this is quite a bad flop in the sense that it's very hard to get action here on the queen deuce tray, isn't it? Unless someone has a queen. Oh. Is there an escape route? Still 17 million... Now 14 million effective in this pot. It's not very deep. Right. For now, Katza will elect to call, keeping, of course, the bluffs. And proceed with some level of caution, of course. You never do know. Oh, wow. If there are any thoughts of worry, they dissipate as he picks up a diamond draw. Mokrani with the ace of diamonds. Is there ever a move other than bet here? Or with an SPR of one, do we just want to bet small again here to set up a river jam? Yeah, I think we just want to go fairly diametric here. Maybe th three million to an ace. That's kind of nice. Yeah, three million will leave half pop. Yeah, maybe 3.5, 8.5, something like that. It's so dry as well. Like it's just you're targeting that queen. Obviously, he might be in there with pocket sevens, pocket nines. He's gone slightly larger than you suggested, but obviously in this instance, it's going to make no difference what he bet. Always going to get matched. Yeah, Ketzer can be good, and he's got a nice draw to go with. Does he? Is there any argument for shoving, or do we just all, all just always call here? I think we just always call because we only get called by better hands, I think. Still possible our opponent will triple off here with the ace five, mm -hmm. ace four. Perhaps some suited king X and diamonds as well. Always a contender as a brick rolls off on the end. Mokrani wastes no time in the very quick jam. So hard. Now, for Ketzer, David, getting four to one with top pair. Yeah, that big turn bet has made this a situation now where Ketzer only needs to be good 20% of the time. He'll be thinking about exactly those type of hands, the, the diamond draws, the I ace fours and ace fives. Seven minutes. I think he's going to fall upon a call. Obviously, he does block those, but the queen... Not a card he's worried about diamond draw wise. So it's just the 10 is the only diamond that he is worried about holding. Hard fold, he said. Maybe he's going to find that fold though. Very tough situation now against Mokrani, who hasn't really been seen to get out of line, but he's never had a stack with which to get out of line. Calling it, David. Oh. He wants to see the ace four, wants to see the ace five. Perhaps curious why he went such a size on the turn, five million shallowing it out. If he was bluffing, would he not bet smaller to leverage more equity on the river? It does look a bit stronger when you take this line and leave yourself just the third pot. Really wants to find the fold here. Mokrani giving nothing away. That man looks like he's about to fall asleep. Not one who's playing for six figures. 
Has he had a time card? Ace five on time. Please. He makes the call. He will not see ace five. He sees aces. Ketza down to just three million in chips. Mock Rani, what an incredible turnaround. He's now the chip leader. How? It's the fortnight of the comeback. This is insane. This man's been surviving and surviving. Now he is thriving. Simone, Andrian, eat your heart out. Yeah. We maybe have an even bigger story at this festival. Look at Ketza left with just three million chips. And should he begin his comeback? Has to navigate the rest of the farm table. We'll add a time bank. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Well, tip your cap here to Mokrani, who has been incredibly composed. Yeah. You know, at the top of the final table, I suggested that I thought he was getting slightly over-involved in a couple of pots. They didn't need to with the item considerations. But I backed that up with maybe he's the kind of guy who's not worried about the first couple of levels. He's looking to add a title yeah, to the resume. Five. Two point five. I love this. Just 5xing. Keeping five. this man out of the pot. Taking on the short stack. That's the goal here. <coughs> and the 8-3 off suit. Going to get it through. <coughs> but yeah, it, he, it seemed to me that he was setting out his stall on the funnel. Not by playing aggressively, but just by getting involved in the hands. He didn't have to True. with short sticks around. But he was looking towards the top end of the payouts rather than the bottom end. Now, perhaps getting his just deserves here. Chip leader. That is insane. Yeah. I just can't kind of believe what's happened in the last half hour. We were talking as the last orbit ran round of the last frame how McCranny so badly needed a double before taking that break just to pump himself up a little bit. Just <laughs> It had been a really tough period. He'd gone from... Six million to four million to eight million to four million to right. eight million to six million and was back to oh, four no. million again. Wow. Oh no. Oh no. How has this happened to Ketzer? Jamming <laughs> <laughs> his four blinds. All he can do is laugh and smile when he sees Mokrani turn over the Cowboys. Incredible. Well, how fitting it is to see these Cowboys now as we reach the final act. Oh, hold on a second. Or do we, of this Western series? We do. <laughs> Not to be for Ketzer. Handshakes around. That is disgusting, the run he's gone on on this <laughs> final table, particularly this final four. Came in, of course, with the second most chips on the final. Brought that into a third place finish for 155k. Nothing to be disappointed with there, David. No, Philippe Kessler, I know, was your favourite coming into this final table. He was mine as well. We saw some audacious stuff on day three, some four bets, some really well-timed three bets. Just generally being a very, very tough opponent to play against. He built up a big stack in the early going today. He was actually a little bit unlucky against Soika, but then got those chips back, remember, just before the final table. Brought a big stack here, and yeah, I thought he was going to close at a few points there, but... That ace queen ace forehand was huge. Obviously, yep. Mokrani, it was everything to somehow claw back into this. But that was the moment. That was the sliding doors moment. Yeah, if he just held or hit the spade on the river, it would all be so different. Such is always the way in poker, and especially in our merit final tables. Well, guys, we are down to just two. We are going to set the stage for this Western series a heads up duel. So please don't go far. We'll be back in 10 minutes.
paths to a chop if a 10 rolls off. Queen, the only direct winner. Wolfie would take the chop. Absolutely he would. Can he hit it? No. GG. Five of clubs, so not even an orbit in. And Hadi Hordbin of Iran <laughs> dispatched James in ninth place. Yeah, they gave him a little sweat. Let him get there where they do. They'll yeah. do the Mace Queen next hand. And start anyway. 34,000 and change. Going to Hadi, who's made some deep runs here. Plays the cash games as well. Will add to his career live tournament earnings of 123,000, but just a modest tick up from his all time best live cash, which prior to this was 29,500, obviously. Oh, yeah, too smart. Or just fleet footed. <laughs> yeah, I well, know oh, that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not today. Barco with just five blinds and an ace. It's under the gun, it's eight handed, <laughs> oh, it's no. grim. He may just decide to run it. Going to be in the big blind next hand, of course. Going to be posting one, having four back, one in. It's not even a spot where he could kind of do the half a stack thing. Because half a stack is barely a raise anyway. <laughs> Just to maximize the old forward look for T. You know, as, the st as the stats go around, uh, I like that Sugar Island jam even more because he's a little bit adrift of the rest. Only the one super short. Recognizing that light opening range. Cats up. Oh, Panetti. All right. This is. Oh, they definitely one we want to play. How do we want to play it, though, That's in the cutoff with ace-jack? As a flat, it looks strong like enough as is. Panetti's looking, inquiring into the big blind stack. <laughs> yeah, you don't really want to get no. squeezed, but you don't necessarily expect a lot of that to go down either, but just because of the laws of the implicit collusion, wanting to have multiple right. stacks up against the all-in player to but eliminate them. Yeah, exactly that. We have to play it. Oh, he oh, plays he just, it as a jam. Yeah, I'm just seeing what the James. stacks are behind, because that might be just fine. Yeah, 4 million, 4 million, 4 million, I think. So, yeah, the 20 blinds. It, it just makes it, like, a, what's a hand like 10 is going to do now? Right. I have to fold. Especially probably. when you're guaranteed a visit to the roulette wheel for Barca <laughs> yeah. and that possible pay jump realization. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, for Barca here, who ran 10s into ace 3 unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> is dominated on his feet in a 2.6 million chip pot, hoping. Oh, perhaps some prayers <laughs> may be answered if a four or a five trickle off the deck. <laughs> Anxious moments for the Frenchman. Seven. Doesn't help, so it's going to be the seven outs. And that's not one of them. That'll do it for Sammy Barca of France. 235,000 in career live tournament earnings, 131K, <coughs> his high water mark. Not going to be bettering that here today. As GG's the eighth place finish here in the Western Series main event. We'll award him a tidy 45600 but nothing more as the field realizes a roughly $12,000 pay jump courtesy of the second casualty thus far here at this final table. So then, the beneficiary is... Oh, pardon me. Haspani was under the gun, not in the big blind this hand. Has decided to put it in. Very much making sense, Ali. He's found a big one. King-Queen. Shukralin thinking about it here with an ace. Wow, he is going for it. Thinking I'm, I'm a little in here. surprised, yeah. Yeah, he, I guess he thinks Hasbani's just putting it in with any two. Well, looking to avoid two random oh. cards the very next hand in the big blind right. with the big blind Annie. So Shukralin pouncing with an ace five. But, I mean, he was Hasbani was going to get called here. Shukralin could have allowed it to happen behind. Right, because he's big stacks. Or yeah. 
Oh, my word. We could have a double elimination, Ali. Horshidian waking up with Ace Queen suited, and this is not what you want to see when you're Jugralin. These are the risks. And obviously worth noting, Jugralin does have more chips than Hasbani. So when he does this, he would secure the ladder up if Horshidian wins the pot. But there are obviously scenarios where he goes out here and Hasbani doubles. <laughs> wow. I think this is a little optimistic. So a double elimination potentially on our hands. Note that Horshidian dominates both Hasbani yeah. and Jugralin in a three million chip pot. Yeah, Erjan sitting there going, this is quite nice. <laughs> Just let her up two more spots here. The dream for him. Seven left, 56k. 57k, pardon me. Five left, it's 85k. Look at the rail. Jugralin needs to find a five. And oh. he's found not one, but two oh. of them. <laughs> the injustice. Wow. Ace of hearts as well, just in case. Yeah, no route to victory for the other two here. Hasbani could make the running kings. Yeah, all right, Ali. Now he draws dead, of course. <laughs> Four of hearts, no less. Hasbani's queen of hearts won't do the trick. And five's full. Look at the Kazakh boys. Celebrating. <laughs> wow. Not to be overlooked, of course. The lack of mercy being shown to Antoine Hasbani James, who GGs. took pocket nines and king queen in back to back spots and ends up a seventh place finisher. Certainly made the most of what he was given. But the Lebanese national with 144,000 in career tournament earnings. Coming into this one, will haul in $57,300 and leave us with six handed. It's always nice. Pull 300K. Obviously, hoping for better ROI when you put that much on the line, maybe, but not a bad day's I work. I think, if I remember rightly, Mike actually got in in a kind of a weird way, I think. Super high value. I mean, that really high value VIP free roll satellite kind of thing to get in. The guy who won it managed to engineer it, so Mike played it for him. And Mike was playing on a free roll, I think, for 20% or something like that. That's even nicer. Oh, yeah. Can't Might be wrong with that. But meanwhile, on the topic of nicer, upgrading to ace king here, you saw a pause out of the jack nine. That Certainly feels Ooh. more like posturing than anything else. Jugralin, though, on the button, ace 10. And we've already observed the yeah. way in which he has been willing has. to react to Ketzer. And it's on display yet again here. 5.5 million, Ooh. ripping it in. Air John, ace jack suited might have been the one to do it. But Whoa. Oh, wow. He's seen yeah. enough. Air John in there as well. Remember, he's the guy that limp jammed against Horshidian. And Ketzer, look at this. He's going to laugh, but let's see how he figures this out. That looks super strong from Erjan, just casually flicked it in. Asking for a count, I mean, listen. Double problem. Even if you have some concerns about <sighs> what Erjan has, look at the upside here with Jugralin's I, money in. I, it, uh, you block aces and kings. I can't believe I'm saying this. Don't say he should fold. But this might be a spot where we can fold. Just because Erjan snapped that off. He's never got ace queen. He's never got tens. He's well, he's not supposed to have ace jack either. No, you're right. You're right. MPO adjustments, but I, I, I can see a world where Ketzer folds it. Uh, we can't discount Jugralin as well, jamming 21, 22 blinds. But look, you've already got a little bit invested. You've got yeah. 21.6 million back, and you've got a shot at an almost triple up here. Yeah, and this could be like a two-pocket pair situation where you're a great shape. Obviously. I say triple up in relation to your investment, so not oh, the entire stack. He's going to fold it. Me. I'm wow! Wow! Oh, Incredible! Look at the situation for Urjan. He's got Ace King to fold, and he's up against Ace Ten. Why? Incredible! And note that Jugralin said Ace Queen because he never imagined Ace King would have got out of there. Right. So Erjan earns himself domination of Jugralin by flicking the call in the way that he it, did super. with a hand that really should not be involved. If he tanked, the Ace King calls. It's the fact that he called so fast. Getsa just thought. It had to be super strong. And a King King 10 flop. Jugralin finds the 10. This is unbelievable. Would have had them 
basically dead. Erjan would have been drawn to a gut shot. What on earth is going on? <laughs> Heart on the turn. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Handshakes, perhaps a little but bit friendly. No, just Not a friendly draw, development. Gutter to Broadway. A Jack would do the trick. Instead, it's a black seven. Wow. What an incredible turn of events. This should be two players out. The second time we should have had a double elimination here at this final table. And instead, once more, Jugralin improbably with a dominated ace ends up. I, but I, the beneficiary. I'm on board with the fold of the Ace King. Mm -hmm. I understand why he's done it, Ali. It's not as mad as it looks for 20 blinds. The pace that Urjan put that Ace Jack in with created a scenario. He got Ace King to fold. He was up against Ace 10. Got out drawn the flop, but actually had decent equity going to the river. Jack, Queen, or Hart would have done the job. Whew. Had <laughs> Ketzer taken that pot. He hauls in another 10 million. He becomes the chip leader. And he's playing forehand. Oh, wow. This is what an incredible run Jagrana now finds himself on. Just got lucky twice. Now gets dealt this. Ali, there's just no way this doesn't go in. He took down ace queen with ace five. He took down ace jack with ace 10. And it certainly feels as though he's about to be taking down ace king suited with aces and he'll be basically chip leader three bet from horseshitty and absolutely a dream here yeah just trying to work out shugrada wants to play this as a trap or whether he just kind of clicks it i think i like click this is an insane spin up horseshitty's just been hyper aggressive in these spots earlier on the final table. We saw them. He hasn't had any of them since because the stack depths have been the way they are. But now, finally, going after a 40 big blind stack. Three betting the first opportunity. Might blast off. Clicky sizing here may keep a lot of hands in as well. He has gone for the clicky sizing, Ali. 2.9 million. Hoshidin's just going to jam this on yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to play a 20 million chip pot. Hey, sir. Yeah, he's nice the crowd. I've got aces all in, boys. Don't get cocky, by the way. He has no idea what he's going to get shown, obviously. Hey, he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he sees the ace-king. It's the dream scenario. Sometimes aces lose. Ace-king, obviously, is a dream scenario, but... 22 The range million. is always super narrow to be playing this 22 million chip pot, as you pointed out, Dempsey. So improbable, and somehow Jugralin has spun his stack into a position to... Oh, my away. word! Ten jack queen No! No way! The nuts on the flop for Korshidian! Uh, I shoot, I shoot out uh, two left uh, players to go. Wow, well, Zugrown very, very much zen about the matter. Recognizing that he was always wow. on borrowed time. <laughs> that is insane, Ali! I told you. So early, like, I've lost the stand a lot, so he still can lose, There right? you go. Horshidian zeroing right in on the superstitious side of the equation there. Exactly what you said. So just like that. And for one last time, we bring you back to the Merrick Crystal Cove Hotel Casino and glorious poker room as we are down to just two. The duel begins, David. We are heads up in this main event and perhaps not the lineup we expected. Certainly not, no. McCranny pulling off an implausible comeback here so far. Korchidian, well, it's looked like him all day, to be honest. He's been just in the ascendancy. He had that ace-king cracking the aces of Zugralin. It just felt like destiny that he would get yeah. to this spot, but it also felt a little bit like destiny that Ketzer would too. He ran kind of poorly there toward the end. Yeah, and it's just funny re-watching some of those highlights as we were on that break. We're seeing that kind of Ketzer folding the ace-king early on. Yes, I can understand it, but... Obviously, change the dynamic, and then we just saw, of course, the Ace King running down. Ace is perhaps the hand of the final thus far, but now these two going to heads up and going to heads up 
very deep stacked. Yeah, and I'm not quite sure what we can expect from Corchidian. He hasn't maybe been the bully boy I expected him to be for the last half hour or so. I don't know if he's going to play a big ball style of poker or if he's going to try and you know, grind this one out. He, he does have a nice chip lead, but not an unassailable one by any <laughs> means. Corchidian, 58 big blinds right now, very much in the mix. Plan a 58 big blind deep heads up match. Yeah. This is insane. This is deep. Like we normally get there. Okay, yes, sometimes there's a prohibitive chip leader, but we normally get there with, you know, maybe 100 bigs in play, maybe 80 bigs 80, in play. yeah, like somewhere around there. And yeah, you're right. Sometimes maybe one of those players only has 20 bigs versus 60 or something, but this is 58 versus 77. Well, there you see it. A very clean equation here. <laughs> they got the 100K ladder jump, 90K now on the line. That little wrinkle of in the merit poker just room. The, just a little merit wrinkle. A little merit wrinkle. It's got to stand never, out. That we've pointed out from day one and they've never changed. So clearly <laughs> they like it. Yeah. Adding an extra ICM dimension to three-handed play. It really Maybe does. Part of the reason why we had such a <laughs> prolonged extracted, prolonged extract, pro protracted. That's right, the David. word I was looking for. You struggle with words. It's not been, like you're a writer a long or anything. Day. No, well, you can write them down. Can't say them. <laughs> Mokrani. Kicking off this match with a limp. I was about to ask you, kind of, how do you imagine this going? Are we going to see a little limp? Or this deep, do we just come in with pure raises? Is I it a mix? I think we're meant to probably play a raising game at this stack depth. Remember, big blind anti still in play. Mm -hmm. That's change. The dynamic of heads of play in pretty much every tournament for the past few years. I'm also trying to look here because this is a very deep match. And I see Mokrani has maybe two time bank chips left. That's all. <coughs> yeah. I'm actually kind of a fan of getting rid of the time bank issue heads up. Mm. Of course, Machidian, I think, has far more. We last scanned over to him. We'll have a look in a second. But it could certainly become a factor. We've seen it before in heads-up matches at Merit where players have run out of time and suddenly they can get put in very difficult situations. Yeah, I can see it. Um, I can't see exactly how many, but he has a little stack behind his chips there of those time card chips. He certainly has the edge on that front. And maybe he incentivize therefore to take some really kind of funky, unorthodox lines to confuse Mokrani. now. I mean, pretty normal checking back to King Deuce. Picking up a gut shot. Mokrani and flop bottom pair. Happy to check once more. A delayed C-bet. A swift call for Mokrani. Ten rolling up. Yeah, displaying just the right amount of stickiness so far. Who knows, though? Corchidian might just try and rep this 7-8 or a good queen. Oh, lovely little bet size as well. Just 2 million, one third pot. Looks so milky. Opens up the value range so much with that size, doesn't he? He does, but also worth noting how often he's gone for small wow. bluffs as well. This has been a feature of his game. He was caught once and not caught the other time. A snap cool. Near enough. With the bottom pair. Yeah, that's an interesting hand in terms of just how Mokrani may have Orchidian's number here. Yeah, the speed of the call. You're right, it's kind of like, I've got you. Hmm. I know what you're up to. Don't have to even think against you. It's kind of intimidating when someone snap calls you a bottom pair. Ends up winning. You want to at least get the sweat for your money. What a final day it has been for both of these players, but in very different ways, different journeys to these big stacks. Yeah. One being a, a sort of a monstrous, consistent <coughs> climb yes, to this number, and one being a sort of holding pattern for so, so long, just and then a spin at the end. Krokodian just, he just started the day so pure, didn't he? It was all going right for him. 
Bray's crawl off that a6 for 18 blinds against King Queen. Just said, I, I know what kind of hand you got. I'm going to gamble with you. Set out his stall early doors. Yeah, he had the jacks against the ace 10. Mm -hmm. Mokrani peeling this one. We are going for. 800k raise over this 500k big blind and 10 5 6. Makrani finding a monster. All Heads in. up. Just check jams. David. All in. All in. Wow. Oh, don't level yourself here. No, surely not. L like it does feel like a flush draw kind of bad, like a combo draw maybe. Making the most sense here. It's a very strange bet why aren't you just raising a normal amount it's such a strong hand yeah okay maybe just thinking hey look if he's got a hand he just won't fold yeah just figures like if he's got a 10 i get him i got him yeah yeah it obviously becomes very hard to be balanced in that situation though later on if you just check cool when you've got weak hands and check jam if you've got two pair but maybe specifically taking that line with bottom two pair unblocking the top card yeah, and I wonder if there's a sense here from Mokhrani that his opponent is a little off balance just right now. Just a little now. over just it. Over it slash just things starting to not go his way and he isn't the kind of guy who, who enjoys when things aren't going his way. He might get a little impatient. Well, well he doesn't need to be impatient. These, these hands could get in for 40 bigs. Yeah, I say, if that's the case, then this is certainly one that could happen. Look at this. Cutting out the three bet. As you say, has Shallow down to 40 bigs, losing the early... Skirmish is here, and does Mokrani do anything but jam? No. And then does Korkaidian do anything but call? He snap calls. This is it. This is... Facing an all-in for all of it. Two to one deficit. The stacks will switch, or we will have a winner wow. already. In the very early stages of this heads-up match, Mokrani looking to complete the most unlikely comeback. Roshidian. <coughs> well, as I say, they effectively swap stacks. If he can spike an ace or jack. 884. Board is clean. Mokrani. Kill it with a nine. Hoping perhaps for a diamond to reduce those outs. Mokrani down to just one card, David. We're on the edge here. As I'm sure you guys are at home. There King is. on the river, Mohammed Mokrani somehow has turned this around and in record time wins the Western main event. How has this happened, David? This is an astonishing, astonishing hour of poker. It has just been an hour. It's maybe not even an hour, this spin up. Insane. Wow, I really am breathless right now. I build this as a marathon. It was but four hands, all of which Mokrani won. Called off the bluff against bottom pair, then wins that huge flip there. Wow, doesn't he look happy with himself? And why wouldn't he be? $342,500 heading his way, as well as, of course, the title of the Western Series main event champion. Shout out, of course, to Nishan Gordian, who was leading the way most of the way. Won't be upset picking up 252,000. Just because you bring in the big stack to the final table, just because you lead most of the way, it's always nice to have at least secured that second place finish. You can't always win. Yeah, tremendous performance by him as well. We saw there it all came down to a flip at the end. It goes the other way. He's in a really good spot to take this one down as well. Just an incredible day of poker. James Dempsey, I know you're not happy with my incessant <laughs> allusions to Western movies. but I'm going to enjoy this one. Do you think so? I'm just going to, because it's the last one. Don't prejudge it. <laughs> I can't resist just a couple more here. 2024 here in the Maripo Room is starting to look a little bit like the year of the dog. Simone Andrian, Maxime Shornikau, and of course now Makrani pulling off the most implausible of comebacks to show us that this is really how the West is won. <laughs> And in the end, Korchidian has walked away with a fistful of dollars, but Mokrani leaves North Cyprus tomorrow with just a few dollars more. Oh, wow. He really has now. Look how happy he is 
enjoyed himself. Beautiful. Done. That's it. Beautiful as Finished. always, David. And I'm going to take our time just before we sign off here to think, thank you, David. Thank of course, you. Ali, Andrew, who were with us. Well, Andrew, a few days ago. Ali stepping out just a moment ago. And then, of course, all the Merit team, the staff, the floormen, the dealers, everyone involved with putting this together. Of course, we couldn't do any of this streaming without our great crew at Sharehands. They really are the best in the business. We love having them with us. And that's it. We've got to congratulate Andrew, Sean Nicole, Mokrani, the three winners, the three comeback wizards. So with that, we will say goodbye and we'll see you next time here at the Merit Crystal Cove.